right, everybody. My lovely, lovely imps. Uh, all, all current, live, and future viewers on YouTube. Welcome to uh, uh, my wonderful little show. Say hello to my lovely imps. Today, we are going to be, this isn't gonna be our usual drama mama. This is more of like a react. Um, and uh, today we're gonna be talking about a video uh, that is targeted at a, a streamer uh, that I've known for a long time. Uh, and uh, also, full disclosure, who I have made content with many times, a, a, a younger streamer by the name of Xander Hall. Some of you may know him, some of you may not. Now, Xander Hall is a bit of a spicy boy sometimes. He's a bit of a debatey guy. He likes to argue with people. He likes to, you know, he likes to test metal and bump heads and stuff like that. Um, but I quite like Xander Hall. So I want to have all my cards on the table here. Uh, I have... Uh, I want my bias to be laid out, all cards out on the table, so that you can decide whether my arguments um, in response to this video, or if I agree with the video, where they're coming from. So you can understand and you can decide for yourself whether I'm whether my arguments are coming from bias or whether they're coming from a place of legitimacy. Um, I am I am making a a podcast with Xander. Xander and I are pretty close, all things considered. I mean, like we don't talk all the time. We work together on stuff. Um, but I have a lot of respect for Xander Hall, even though I don't agree with him on a lot of things. There's a lot of different things that we have disagreements on. For example, one great example is he's a social democrat, and I am a dyed-in-the-wool leftist. Okay, so that's one of the areas that we are very very different. He believes in a more of like an electoral system. I do not. Um, but uh, something that I have talked about in the past is that uh, there's this really toxic thing that I've noticed about Xander Hall, which is that uh, uh, that people tend to just think that Xander Hall is like a free punching bag because he's a younger guy in the space. And I think that's really unfair. Um, and and I've tried many times to try and like see if I'm if I'm being unfair and say, is this is it really that people are being cruel and picking on Xander Hall because he's a younger guy that they think they can kind of like dunk on for free or am I just being sensitive to it you know is that for real and every single time I go and engage with these big Xander Hall critiques I get more and more of the same thing I it feels more and more like there's some older guys usually it's guys specifically in the space uh, usually it's masculine leaning folks who basically go really really hard on Xander Hall for incomprehensible reasons that are way out of step with anything that he's said or done and um and it, it's really it really weirds me out and it makes me a little uncomfortable so I wanted to react to this video because it's very critical of Xander Hall it's very long and uh and I want to see what's what's in it I want to see if maybe my hypothesis uh, is a little bit correct here so before we get into it, now that you're here, now that you know what we're talking about, consider pressing the like button and the subscribe button down below. It's 100% free. My show is always free to the public. We're viewer supported, so the likes, subscribes, and the comments, even if you just say nice video, anything, all of that helps a lot. We're trying to get our name out there a little more, so join in. Join in with the imps. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Have a good time with us, all right? Now, let me show you this video. Let me get this little video up for us, okay? Uh, here we go. All right, so this is an interesting thing. All right, so this is the video right here. I'm gonna show you guys on here real quick, okay? Oh wait, I gotta take this, uh, I gotta change this, okay? Uh, live chat, reacting. Xander Hall, cancellation. Oops. Now, this video, as you can see, right over here, is called Xander Hall is Not Your Ally, which, if you ask me, that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty, like, that's firing pretty big out of the cannon, you know what I mean? Like, claiming, like, hey, Xander Hall is not your ally, and then, of course, the thumbnail says, did he really escape the alt-right? Now, what I'm hoping, of course, I'm hoping that this video, that that's just a little bit of clickbait, and that this video will be uh, more fair. Um, but there are some things that make me think that that might not be the case, okay? And one of the reasons that makes me think that this might not be the case is this right here. 
okay? Here's a video called Vosh is not your ally. This was made five months ago, and it is 18 minutes and 21 seconds. Then, three days ago, Xander Hall is not your ally. One hour and 29 minutes. 18 minutes for Vosh. An hour and 29 minutes for Xander Hall. Now, it is possible that maybe this guy just did not have that much to say about Vosh. That maybe, you know, uh, maybe... Maybe he just went really long in the Xander Hall video and maybe he was less organized. We're going to find that out for ourselves. But when I see somebody devote 18 minutes to a figure that is way, way, way bigger than Xander Hall and also way spicier than Xander Hall. Vosh has gotten in a, like, I've criticized Vosh in the past for some of, for a lot of the things that he said at times, usually in anger. Uh, and... But Xander Hall, like, does not react, he doesn't have that same history with, like, you know, Xan is not as much, he's not as, uh, he's not as, you know, he doesn't like to fight quite as much. Not that he doesn't like to, he certainly does, he's a bit of a debater. But he doesn't, he doesn't go quite as hard as Vosh does. So it makes me a little weird. It makes me go, wait, this, this kind of reminds me of what I was talking about. This is what made my alarm bells ring off with this, you know? It, it's uh, it, it's kind of strange. Now, uh, I have made content with this content creator, a content creator by the name of DJ Mule, once in the past. I believe we collaborated on a uh, on a live stream fundraiser for a bunch of trans people. That was a really really good event, and I had no real beef with him in that regard. I believe I am now blocked by this guy. Let me double check, and I do not know why. Not that anybody has to, like, no one has any obligation um, to, like, unblock me or whatever. Like, I, I don't think that's the case. Uh, but but I do think it's a little weird um, because I've never really conflicted with them, so I don't really know. I don't really know. Um, actually, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, he's not even showing up. Oh, here he is, yeah. Yeah, I'm blocked. Here, look at this. Bada boom, blockied. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I'm blocked. I don't really get it. So I have a feeling. Now, if I somebody pointed this out, and I, I do notice that this is the uh that this is the case, but the suggested the suggested bar here is a lot of people who don't like me and who don't like people, some people who I still associate with. Um, you know, there's some we got Thought Slime, who of course uh, does not like me. Thought Slime is also the one who made up and and to my knowledge to this day still holds by complete lies uh, about the Xander Hall uh, sex cult. Um, yeah, Thought Slime, not a big fan. Uh, also not a big fan of me, so the feeling is mutual. Uh, Professor Flowers, Professor Flowers, I have nothing personal against Professor Flowers, however, um, I recognize that uh, Professor Flowers has um, a lot of bad blood with basically everyone associated with the Vosh community. Um, and I have reviewed that. I did a video where I reviewed it. I tried to be very fair. As you guys know, I try not to like, uh, I try to keep give things a pretty fair shake. Uh, Luna Oi, Luna Oi is somebody who um, declared me as an enemy of the revolution and actively tried to get my channel false flagged and taken down. Um, so I really don't like Luna Oi. Um, Sophie from Mars, I have nothing personal against Sophie from Mars, but Sophie from Mars is another person who has propagated explicitly false information about Xander Hall having a sex cult, which I think is pretty irresponsible. And of course, Bad Bunny. Now I know some people in my chat don't like Bad Bunny. I personally quite like Bad Bunny. I get along well with Bad Bunny. I understand if some of you don't, but, uh, yeah. So, I was a little bit worried about, I, I, I'm a little worried. I have not seen this video, I do not know what is in it, and so I'm gonna try and be as fair as possible, but like I said, I wanted all my cards on the table, so that you guys can decide whether or not I'm being fair or not in this reaction, okay? Yeah, maybe, maybe the next video will be Demon Mama is Not Your Ally, I hope that's not the case. Uh, 
I certainly hope that's not the case, but it, it might be possible. As you guys know, I tend to be pretty fucking blunt with my critiques, and if I think this video is bullshit, I'm gonna call it bullshit, and I'm not gonna be, like, super... I'm not gonna put on the mittens on it, okay? Um... I know, I know some people here have, I know Zan, Zan and Bad Bunny, like, really don't get along. And, okay, whatever. I get it, people don't get along. I'm not trying to sit here and say that everybody's got to get along with each other all the time or anything like that. However, again, I find it weird how, um, and this is something I've encountered many times, not just publicly, uh, but in private. There is a lot of, there was a lot of people who have what I would consider to be a very unhealthy relationship, a parasocial relationship, no less, with Xander Hall. And I find it gross. It's a lot of dudes. It is a lot of masculine, older masculine guys. Um, usually not super old, but like usually we're talking like, you know, late 20s, early 30s. Uh, there is a lot who have a serious ax to grind with Xander Hall. And I only can wonder, did Xander Hall fuck their wives? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I don't know. Um, no, I just don't get it. I've seen so much Xander Hall hate, and I really don't think it's fair. And um, I like Xander Hall. So, you know, yeah. Um, uh, I, you know, like I said, cards on the table, I like Xander Hall. And I want to see, I want to, I want to, I want to see what this is all about. I assume he blocked you because he's anti-debate bro. He calls it anti-debate bro action. Oh, maybe. That could probably be it. That might have done it. Phenomenal comment here. Oh. Anti-debate bro action needs to be multi-pronged by different people, especially by white cis men, as these men being so popular on the online left is because there aren't enough of us setting a good... This is the type of stuff that makes me wonder what the fuck people are talking about. If you're a leftist and your primary concern is like... Is like taking out the debate bro faction like your your like main focus is like bro like we have to take down the debate bros i can't help but think you've you've committed some pretty significant um tactical like tactical errors some pretty fucking serious uh uh, uh lapses in your strategic judgment um i get it we've talked about on this channel like the debate bro thing but um Really? Also, the term debate bro is always uh, uh, very questionably applied. Um, so, all right, without any further ado, we're gonna watch this video and we're gonna react to it. Are you guys all, are you guys all fucking ready? I'm fucking ready. Let's do this. We're gonna react. Let's fucking do it. Well, internet, looks like I'm back again doing another one of these videos. I could be making content about how leftists can start organizing, or I could be doing more stuff about unions, or, you know, how to get involved with direct action, but of course, the algorithm doesn't like that stuff. There's a little bit of truth in that. There's a little bit of truth in that, but at the same time, we all know there are plenty of shows that talk about union organizing and do just fine in the algorithm. Mm. It loves stuff like this. Drama. Nonsense. And it's all because of a group of guys that monopolize the online left-wing politics space are increasingly in a- It loves stuff like this. Drama. Nonsense. And it's all because of a group of guys that monopolize the online left-wing politics space. That's a hell of a, uh, that's a hell of a... This is like, this is like the bread tube thing. What we're seeing here, this is the bread tube shit, right? It's like where you associate these people together, even though, like, Xander Hall and Vosh hate infrared haws. Dylan literally had a in-person shouting match with Infrared Haas. Destiny hates Vosh. Destiny fucking hates Xander Hall. Like these are these guys exist in in like they talk about similar things and they have some stylistic ties and some of them have some past.
but I just find it a very, very weird thing. It's very weird to put them all together, right? I don't know. I find that weird. ...are increasingly ineffectual, perpetuate harmful behaviors, and haven't actually done that much to change that scene since Gamergate. That's right, gang. We're doing another video about Debate Bros. This time, we're talking about Xander Hall and how he is not your ally. Mentions of racism, transphobia, general bigotry, discussion of relationship abuse, homelessness, eviction, addiction, drug use, misogyny, fascism, san sanism, ableism, biphobia, conversion therapy, footage of vomiting and needles. Alrighty. Oh boy. Here we go. Xander Hall. Most people know him as the cheeky young debate bro regular guy who likes to smonk. And Absolutely. going along sure. with what they're saying, yeah. but not actually. Or from his alt right pipeline video. Aww. Alright. Yeah, where he can grab. Okay. Vomiting on stream. I hope that never happens to me. I truly hope that never happens to me. But I also acknowledge there's a possibility that a uh, that a paneling of foam falls on my head at any moment. I think that I think that Fawn secured it correctly. But if it falls, you guys are going to have a clip just like that of me. Congratulates himself on not being a fascist anymore. What a cool and normal thing to be proud of. Well done. For Wait a minute. Hold on a second. That is okay. Right away. This is this is the same this is the same thing that always gets me about these takedown videos, right? Uh 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 the the fucking takedown videos where where you do an introduction but you're totally unfair to that person without ever like declaring like without ever clearing your biases or or anything or even making an attempt to do so. Like I think that I think that framing his video about getting out of the alt right pipeline as congratulating yourself for not being a Nazi anymore is really disingenuous and unfair. Like really unfair and disingenuous. Do you see do you see why I get so fucking annoyed by this type of shit? This is not a video. Like I've seen this video. I've watched this exact this video. The how I fell down the alt right pipeline is a very straightforward a uh, very humble uh, discussion about leaving the alt about how the alt right pipeline works and how uh, Zan felt himself pulled into it because of his social groups. So stupid. Congratulates himself on not being a fascist anymore. What a cool and normal thing to be proud of. Well done for doing the bare minimum, bro. It oh yes. Also, by the way, Zan was never a fascist. Zan claimed. Explicitly, he was never a fascist. He never got that far. He got out before he got that far. He got into like edgy humor and some edgy areas, but he was never a fucking fascist. So again, we're we're opening this. This is one minute and twenty seconds in, and we already have extremely dishonest claims being made. N needless to say, I don't have a lot of faith uh, uh, in what is going to come in the next hour and a half. If you're on the left that doesn't really follow the debate scene, you're probably wondering what all the fuss is about. But if you're into the debate scene, you'll probably know him as Wannabe Vosh, as this is what most debate fans have been calling him for the last few years. People call him things like the Zuma version of Vosh. Some people, people say... Weasel, just the weasel words! This is in the intro. This is in the first one minute and 30 seconds. This is the part of the video where you should be establishing that you're going to be making a case. But so far, all this sounds like is extremely petty, extremely personal, and co completely insubstantial. Why does it, what, what does it contribute to Xander not being your ally that he is similar to Vosh? How does that like, what does that do? Well, is it a dunk? Sure, if you think Vosh is bad, then that's a dunk. But it doesn't really add anything. Yeah, and also, it's really funny, but this is supposed to be evidence of lots of people calling him this, and this comment is a year old and has five upvotes. Not exactly a very good uh, sample size for the opinions. Or that he's copying Vosh's style, which is hilarious, to be honest, because Vosh copied Destiny's style, and Destiny copied the modern debate format, and they copied the Greco-Roman debate format. 
I digress a little bit, but you see what I'm saying here. This is a bit of an obtuse thing to criticize him for. Xanahol is also seemingly surrounded by a All right, at least he at least he admits it. At least he admits it, even though he did do the critique. Fair enough. Bunch of controversial drama. That is more often than not true for every debate bro on the internet. And a lot of it is concerning and makes you wonder at all why people think he's even a based dude. So with all that in mind, why do people actually like him? Now, I know some of you are not going to want to hear this, but we have to address the facts here. And that is that when you scroll through Xander Hall's YouTube page, there is actually a lot of cool leftist stuff on there. See, he's making videos here about how Trump is bad, he's sticking up for trans people a lot, and that's all good. People around his age or even a bit older are probably going to see themselves in him a little bit and maybe even see him as a bit of a role model for getting into politics, especially if they're already kind of skewed to the left. He's got a good stream personality, he interacts with chat a lot, and he's generally entertaining in an above average way. He's gained a big following since making content like this, and yes, I know you are going to get more views and subscribers based on bigger content creators that you associate with. I know that from my own experience, however, you can't deny that Xanderhal, well, he knows how to content create. He is an influencer who has a brand and whatnot. However, true, Xander Hall's a really, really good streamer. He's really talented and he really knows how to talk and he really knows how to keep his stream entertained. Zan has, not only does Zan have like a, a pretty large following, he has a very loyal following. His viewers really like him. His viewers really like to hang out with him. They like what he has to say and they like what he'll do with them. Yeah. I'm glad he's willing to, uh, uh, credit to DJ Mule here. But you'd be right in thinking that amongst these thumbnails, something just doesn't feel quite right. The more and more you scroll, the more and more you start to see things like this. Uh, yeah, like, Twitter discourse could be a bit myopic and wrong, but why are you focusing on this? Okay, that one's a little bit extra. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, oh, okay, he's just made a video in bad faith about one of my friends. Oh, and... There's another one. Okay, it's just, just like obsessed with drama and... Okay. This is fucked up. What is this guy's purpose on this platform? Is he a le- So you found three thumbnails that you felt were kind of like, eh? Alright. Okay. Leftist? Or is he just a left- I, I, Yeah, I don't, I don't get what the point is. This but okay. Some of the time and a piece of shit whenever it suits him. Xanderhal prides himself on debating people who disagree with him on anything in the mo- Okay, oh, oh, yeah, hold on. I wanna say something real quick before I get any further. Because, um, okay, so, so DJ Mule says, you know, he's like, oh, he's going after one of my friends. Okay, so this sort of shit happens a lot. There are, uh, and it's natural, actually. Um, people have friends groups and they tend to take it personally when someone else hurts someone in their friend group. Whether perceived or real doesn't matter. We're not even gonna, let's just say it's all real. Uh, it's natural for people to defend their friends. That is like how socializing works. However, if you're making a video essay, a like hour and a half long video essay about a streamer, I would argue that unless like that person has like killed one of your friends, that you should probably have like a, a pretty solid um, reasoning for making that video beyond like this person disagreed with one of my friends or said something wrong about one of my friends. Especially if um, two of the, of the three friends shown also initiated spreading explicitly false information about Xander Hall, which both Sophie from Mars and Thought Slime did do repeatedly, multiple times, and stood by it like that is just a matter of, 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 of history. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. It is normal for content creators to disagree with other content creators because they feel like, hey, this guy's been an asshole to my friend or whatever. But if you're gonna make like a, if you're gonna make a takedown, if you're gonna make an allegation like Xander Hall is not your ally, he's not a leftist, he's not trustworthy, then it has, I feel like it has to be more than just vibes. And so far, we've just got vibes, but we'll see how it goes. Marketplace of ideas, and he doesn't limit the people he platforms in order to- Cassandra Mel says his critiques of Bad Bunny are so fucking hypocritical. All right, well, we'll find out about that, right? I guess we're gonna, don't worry, Cassandra, we're gonna get there. I'll try, I'm gonna be as fair as I can.
It's just be it's just been vibes because you're in the intro. Yes. I'm a streamer. I react in real time. Holy fuck. Obviously. Oh my god. Protect his user base. Oh no. He loves debating fascists, especially Why is this why has this been an issue that's come up so recently? Do people like how do I need to put like a blinking light light that says live, live, live? About the human rights of the people that he claims to support. But why? Yes, I explicitly said his arguments are vibes based so far and that he pissed off his friend. If he's a leftist, surely he knows that platforming people with strict ideologies becomes more of a battle to convert the opposing person's audience, but actually you've achieved nothing because the supporters of your point of view stay the same and the supporters of your opponents stay the same, but... The new impressionable viewers that haven't been exposed to either ideology have now been exposed to a violent ideology that will influence them easier and easier depending on their material conditions and prior exposure to fascist ideology in our culture and media that permeates every single house of it. When you have to fast forward your own argument to make it to make it more convincing. Hey everyone, it's Mule here. What Mule has forgotten is that there are probably a lot of people watching this video who don't understand why the platforming of bad ideas is bad. Debate bros have been taking up space in the online There we go. Left for some time now. And a lot of their content focuses on debating fascists or conservatives on whether trans people should exist or whether there is actually a white genocide happening. Their entire modus operandi seems to be that we need to convert people who think differently to us. They're obsessed with this idea, even though it was proven wrong a hundred years ago by Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, who said this. Why should we bother to reply to Kautsky? He would... That's not how proof works. I'm fucking cringing. Reply to us and we would- This is a Bible verse. Do you guys remember when I said about the tankies that they use the, uh, they use these things like Bible verses? It was proven by Vladimir Lenin. This is just a random quote of him dunking on Kautsky. This, this, uh, uh. We'd have to reply to his reply. There's no end to that. It will be quite enough for us to announce that Kautsky is a traitor to the working class and everyone will understand everything. And Wait, that's an enormous self-own, by the way. That is an absolutely enormous self-own. Saying that all you need to do is label somebody bad to get them taken down, that's basically giving up the game. If, if DJ Mule unironically thinks that's like a that that's not a self-own i can't help but feel that this entire video is going to be extremely bad that is a phenomenally stupid thing to say when you're trying to make a case that somebody is not your ally when you use a vladimir lenin quote about labeling somebody and using that character assassination to to take them down now by the way just so you know i'm not a fan of kautsky not at all not even a little bit in fact i explicitly disagree with kautsky and I think he's a pretty bad guy, all things considered, and also pretty cringe. But, um, so I'm not ignorant about the context of this debate between Lenin and Kautsky, but it's completely irrelevant here. And to say that this quote proves that people can't be convinced by debate is so fucking stupid. Rest well. Well, I hope your studying goes well, Elak. Of course, multiple real instances. Wait, did I say Qua Wait, did I say Quotsky? Wait, did I say Trotsky instead of Lenin? My bad. ...of people that these nerds have debated who have remained steadfast in their fascist opinions. So there you have it. Now you're briefed on the debate person, the type of leftist who simply thrives on drama and doesn't give one- Wait, wait, wait a second. He paused his goofy rant. He, he did the goofy fast-forwarded rant in which he said that debate people are bad. And then he said, hold on, most people don't know why debate people are bad. And then he just said the same thing he said in the rant. He didn't actually, this pause section has been a waste of our time.
one iota of shits as to whether people are actually doing on the ground organizing, activism, or doing anything progressive at all. They love leftism as an aesthetic, as it were. Anyway, back to me. Xander Hall, like, I don't even know if Xander Hall refers to himself as a leftist. Maybe he does. I know that he refers to himself pretty openly as a sock dem. I think that's pretty honest. Mule. Thanks, Mule. So the question remains, does Xander Hall know that platforming fascists goes against everything that leftists stand for? How many fascists has he de-radicalized? Something that's important to point out is that the de-radicalization of fascists is a very real discussion that leftists are going to have to have at some point, as Nazi views and ideology have the possibility to outlast the potential revolution or global shift towards more radically left-wing politics. What I do know of this kind of action that exists so far is that it's undertaken mainly by charities like Hope Not Hate, who tend to infiltrate telegram groups of fascists like the BMP or the EDL in the UK, who create disorder and sow dissent amongst the rank and file fashion, the movements who are losing faith in them due to the fact that they're not really addressing their material conditions and seem to be focused on something that is more of a losing battle. What is certainly not effective is nerds on the internet debating them, especially when those nerds, every now and then, let their mask slip a little bit and So there's a lot of things that have been, there's a lot of different things that have been brought up here. Um, the mask slipping thing is kind of a dead giveaway. Obviously, I think this guy thinks that Xander Hall is a secret fascist which uh, is a little unfortunate. Um, but also, the okay, so about platforming. Let's have a quick little, little let's have a little pause about platforming. Platforming uh, can indeed be problematic. And sometimes the answer truly is to deplatform somebody. However, um, uh, deplatforming is, is a complicated decision to be made. And I don't think that it's a clear-cut example on who needs to be deplatformed and who doesn't. I don't think it's that easy. I really don't think it is. Um, and I'm somebody who tends to be relatively critical of certain aspects of platforming. Um, for example, obviously, I think it's pretty bad to give somebody like Nick Fuentes an uncontested platform or to play around with him, or to give time with him that isn't d directly criticizing his ideas. But I don't think that it's completely useless to contest his ideas in the first place, or even to share a platform with him as long as the ideas are being contested. I just think that it's risky. And I think that there are times in which it does weigh otherwise. And I think that's more or less always true. I've never met any uh, p any like person who's very, very, very pro deplatforming who thinks that everyone should be deplatformed at all times. There are obviously lines where someone becomes problematic to platform. Um, and also, uh, yes, there's been this, as Jessica Metal says, uh, he grossly misrepresented the point of online debate because he thinks people like Zan and Vosh are trying to convince the person they're debating. And what they're trying to do is make convincing arguments to persuade audiences that happen to be watching. I have problems with the, like, de-radicalization rhetoric. As you guys know, I've roasted it for a long time. To be fair, to my knowledge, Xander Hall and Vosh don't even use that terminology anymore. That's, like, an out-of-date thing. The de-radicalization thing was, like... That was, that was like a, that's like an old term. And yeah, it was, I think there was a lot of cringe when people would say things about like, oh, you know, I de-radicalized all these people because you don't really know. And the vast, the value that comes from stuff like debunking Jordan Peterson is not strictly in de-radicalizing people, but rather in making sure that other people don't get sucked into the pipe. Because once you're in the pipe, it's hard to get out. And I think Xander Hall knows this. I think that Xander Hall tends to make tends to target people who are undecided, not people who are super radical. Although I will agree that the de-radicalization rhetoric, regardless of who uses it, is kind of cringe. Do you feel like you're being condescended to watching this video? Yes. Yes. One thing that is extremely um one thing that is extremely true about the anti-debate bro crowd is that they are all 10 times more smug than the debate bros they get really mad at. These are people who, um, like, uh, 
I don't want to be too broad, but every anti-debate bro person that I've come into contact with who's gone like super anti-debate bro um, has always been a gigantic fucking fart sniffer. And I mean that they just literally, they think that they're like the god of, I mean, fucking saying that Vladimir Lenin proved that people can't be convinced because he made a dunk on Kautsky in one of his letters to Kautsky is like, it's the type of thing where it's like, I think I'm very, very smart. And I, and it is, it is a level of smug condescension that is extremely, extremely unflattering. Let's continue. Repeat the same fascist talking points they've been arguing against. No, as you can see here, the debate Lord Xanderhal tends to actually just focus on drama, which is annoying. One month ago, two months ago, two months ago, two months ago. So all of these videos were done like two months ago, and these are four videos. Let's find out. Let's do a quick fact check. Okay, hold on. I want to do a fact check here. How do we, uh, hold on. Social Blade? Let's look up Xander Hall on Social Blade real quick. Hold on, let me get this up. So here's Xander Hall's stats. Let's take a look. Uh, can we see how many videos he's uploaded in the last period of time? Uh, what do we got to go to the advanced stats? Detailed statistics. Here we go. Weekly subscribers, weekly video views, total subscribers, total video views. Oh, you can't see how many videos. Let's say that's monthly. Okay. So we'll just have to do it manually. Xander Hall. Let's do a quick fact check, okay? So one, two, three. Okay, he does a video every day. So Wait, let's see. One, two, three, four. Four videos in the last two days. So yes, he's doing one to two videos per day. So. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. No, wait, 49. Right here. This is the video that he was talking about right here. This is the one debunking the allegations. He's done 49 videos since this video came out. I think that this this fails the this fails the fact check. Okay? This uh this 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 image has been been fact checked and found false by true Xander Hollicks. Right? He, do, he, he does 50 fucking videos in a month. So four videos were on stuff you don't like out of 50? That's absurd. That's, that's just what? Let's continue. Because you can see from some of his other videos, he's right about some stuff, which is good. But then why does he focus on myopic things like people on Twitter not agreeing with him? Why does he use words like woke skull? That's what you're doing. Your, your video, hello, self-awareness check. Can we get a fucking, can we get a fucking self-awareness check here? You're, you're, you're making it, this is an hour and a half long video. You're not really in a position to fucking throw stones. And cry bully, what do those words even mean? Another thing to be aware of when looking at debate bros is their takes. Sometimes their takes are so bizarre that they make no sense whatsoever. For example, this video where Xanderhal clickbait you into all hell with the title, My Controversial Take on Platforming Joe Rogan. His hot take is that Joe Rogan is an irresponsible platformer, but shouldn't lose his platform because he's a good interviewer. Now, for a start, Joe Rogan is not a good interviewer. He's a stoner that sits there and goes, Hey, you ever seen a chimp? Depends on the topic. You guys know I've talked about this. I think fucking Joe Rogan is a piece of shit and that any time Joe Rogan talks about politics that he's dumb as shit. But Joe Rogan is a very good sports interviewer. Any segment that you watch of Joe Rogan about sports, he's fucking good at it. Sorry, it's just true.
I let a jet on DMT. And if he's irresponsible at platforming people, why then should he keep his platform? I think one of the funniest and most telling things about this video in particular is that Xander Hollis sat there in a Shadow the Hedgehog onesie. You know, Shadow the Hedgehog, the ambivalent, cool, and edgy character from the Sonic the Hedgehog series that doesn't really care about good or evil. He's too cool for that shit. Whilst Xander Hall is sat there being ambivalent and edgy and not really caring about good or evil because he's too cool for that shit. Nah. So anyway, nah, nah, you know, I, I can't. I'm sorry. There's there's nothing. I can't say anything to that. OK, it speaks for itself. Okay, if you guys think that that criticizing the Shadow onesie because Shadow is a bad character and Xander Hall is bad because he's dressed up as a as an edgy character is is like a like like not like a, a sign of one of the most stupid and boomer demented no fun allowed arguments you can possibly imagine like you know what more power to you go ahead. Why has he said this? What's the point? Joe Rogan had this like one like actual like scientist or like an actual physicist or something on his show. Like this is a smart guy that's being interviewed here that I wish I could talk to because I have a million questions I would ask this guy if I could just talk to him directly. But Joe Rogan literally asked every question I would have asked. And by the end of that episode of his podcast, I don't think there was there would be any questions I'd have left to ask that guy. Bro, you're a 23-year-old edge lord that got famous too quick. You're not a good interviewer either. Better than never getting famous at all. Woo! How many subs you got, bro? Sounds like fucking jelly, my man. That sounds like fucking spite. That sounds like you're gotten a little butt hurt. I'm sorry, not to, not, I, I, don't want, I don't want to be too mean off the gun, but that sounds like you're a little jelly, my man. Do you guys see what I'm talking about, though? Remember how I said there's, like, the weird, like, toxic masculine, like, he's just a little loser who got too big for his britches, and he should remember who the big dogs on the playground are. Me, with my 700 subscribers. We call that, we call that the old <laughs> butt hurt. He goes on to say that Rogan's interview with Daryl A. Davis, the black blues and R&B musician, who converted KKK members and de-radicalized them, was really good, and he was immersed in listening to the story. But that's nothing to do with Joe Rogan. You can go and listen to Daryl A. Davis's story from multiple other sources. We don't need a brain force chugging, steroid smacking moron to show us this, you know? Also, I am an ex-fan of the Joe Rogan experience, and... Oh, dude. Wait, wait a minute! So that blows you out. Then you're just a stupid moron. If you were you were a fan of Joe Rogan, Xander Hall's just pra praising him. Oh my God, man! You might have. Wait, are you trying to? Is this like is this like a charity case? Is is uh, is DJ Mule trying to be like? Please don't be as stupid as me. I was a fan for so long. I'm 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 terminally I'm I'm, I'm terminally stupid in all the episodes that I watched, and I did watch a lot of Joe Rogan, most of the time, Joe just kind of sits there and goes, huh, wow, huh, yeah, whoa. If Joe Rogan's a good interviewer, I'm literally the most best video essayist of all time on the internet. And I know I'm not. So Xander Hall- Good, that's very good. I'm glad we don't have to contend with that one. After blathering on for two minutes, not really saying anything of value, decides that if the left banned Joe Rogan from Spotify, that that would be political suicide. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, I'll tell you what he means. These debate nerds are always talking about optics. They're always saying that lefties are too much for the average voter. And that's why they focus on myopic issues that like maybe five people have spoken about on Twitter.com. You know, after they've had baby's first political take and they aren't actually big talking points in the broader left. You see, what they're trying to do is shame lefties into being more palatable to the center-left powers in electoral politics. Not I don't think that's what Xander Holt does. Like, I really don't think that's what Xander Holt does. I would love to see evidence of that. I Xander Hall is actually one of the people who doesn't 
uh, spend, or at least in my experience, does not spend a lot of time like railing about people who are more left than him. Sure, he'll debate with some people who are lefties who he doesn't like. He'll argue with them or insult them or whatever. But I don't find him taking a lot of time going like, these lefties are ruining everything. In fact, like Xander Hall is one of the few people who was willing to make like really solid, like firm arguments in favor of uh, of of things like uh, of things like like xenogenders, like uh, like non-binary people. So I don't I don't think that's accurate. Not once have these nerds considered that most lefties have abandoned electoral politics in favor of direct action and organizing. Because, you know, we're smart. But it always comes back to this optics shit. Like, we should care about what conservatives and fascists think about us. If it's the left's fault that Joe Rogan gets taken off Spotify and Nazis are frothing at the mouth, why should I care? I would simply have a celebratory wank. But no, the reason that they talk about optics all the time is because they think that you can win fascists over to our side with good optics. You starting to see how this is all a circle gang? Do not, I do not think that's what Xander Hall believes. I do agree that a lot of liberals are way too obsessed with good optics, but good optics is never really about fascists. It's about liberals. Like the conversation of good optics is usually it talking about uh, like within liberalism maybe maybe uh, i'd like to see a clip if he's got a clip of they it I'm, nazis I'm have good optics destroy all the lefties who have bad optics so let's get into that last part Yo, let's do it. Let's find out about woke scolds. In this video, Xander Hall talks about his editor, Cherry Bread TV, who did a tweet about a bunch of online slang used by queer people, specifically trans people. He then goes on to say that the cancellation that they received for this was outrageous and people lost their minds over it. Which he then uses to catapult himself into a rant about how all LGBTQIA plus people online, specifically those that criticize Vosh and other debate bros, are mentally ill and abuse victims and for some reason need online internet points to feel good about themselves. Clip. It's extremely fucked up. Clip? 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 Hello, that's a clip. You're making a video essay. Put the clip in, And just bitch. more evidence that whenever him and any of his debate bro friends use Where's the term the woke scold, what they actually mean is person that is holding me to account. Guess this is my uh, big woke scold moment, eh? Zanny boy. So huge thing to point out here, claiming that all LGBTQIA plus people are victims of abuse is a huge right wing conservative talking point. And it's actually the basis for conversion therapy. Conversion therapists tend to point out people's abuse as a re Wow. The Xander, the slanderholic, the slanderholic in, in chat, the, the only person going an, anti, super anti Xander Hall in chat right now just, just called someone an arsler in chat. Woo! Yikers. Sorry, He's let's go back. I was watching huge right-wing conservative talking point. And it's actually the basis for conversion therapy. Conversion therapists tend to point out people's abuse as a reason for them being queer. Not enough attention from daddy? Well, you became gay to get attention from other men. Not enough attention from mum? Well, you became gay to fill the feminine-shaped hole in your life. <sighs> not all queer people are victims of abuse, and not all victims of abuse are queer. It's a huge false cause fallacy. You know? Okay, there's been no clip provided, but I would be beyond shocked if Xander Hall ever made the argument that queer people are all victims of abuse. I would be shocked. Xander Hall is uh, the one topic that Xander Hall tends to be very good about is fucking familial abuse. It's something he's very sensitive about. I Again, no citation. Literally could just be made up. We have no clip. We have no actual citation of this. Maybe he's thinking about the Vosh uh, Thought Slime stream. I've, I watched the Vosh Thought Slime stream recently, and yes, there was a, uh, um, there was a uh, very, uh, that was, there was some, there was some pretty extreme things said there, though I will say that has been, like, like, apologized for and, and, and stuff. I'll make, I just want to make that clear. I know some people don't care, but I want to be, I want credit where credit is due. Like, Vosh denounced that stream and said I fucked up. Zan, I have never heard him make this argument, not even close.
And also, it was years ago. Let's go. No, correlation is not causation. There's a lot more extremely telling points in this video, so I'm just gonna list all of them off real quick. Ahem. Xanahol says at the start of this video that his editor is a quote-unquote bit of a memer, and then immediately talks about how the meme they posted is how, quote, the trans community- Play the clip. ...community online is toxic and gatekeepy, which is all in all true for most communities online. It's just interesting how painting this as exclusively a trans problem is his main aim here. It's transphobic. If you This is so slimy and dishonest. Do you guys remember that guy that I blew the fuck out of like a year ago? I don't think he's even made a video since that happened. Maybe he made one video. The guy who just completely, who just was basic, literally just doing a, like a, like a, like a sloppy hit piece on Xander Hall that was like, it was so sloppy that I was like, this is pathetic and you should feel bad. I'm getting to that point with DJ Mule. This is pathetic and you should feel bad. You're talking, you're, you're literally taking with your voice and talking over a clip of Xander Hall. You can't get more dishonest than that. If Xander Hall said what you are saying, play the clip. I recognize that literally not every single claim can be can have a receipt for it. Obviously, I'm not at, I'm not saying that this guy needs to have every single claim ever uh, you know have a receipt for it. But he's talking over a clip of Xander Hall. Let's hear the clip. Let's hear the proof. Let's fucking see it. If you're gonna put the clip up there, let the audio play. Otherwise, you're just being dishonest. You're hoping that people will trust you or act on their pre-existing bias to say, yeah, that's probably what happened. This is pathetic. Absolutely fucking pathetic. I, like, I, I don't care what type of video you're making, fucking dirty, dirty bullshit. Wondering what the problem with that is, it's that it's transphobic. His editor said to him, apparently, I might get cancelled for this, and his response is basically, who cares, Lamau? In their post regarding their apparent cancellation, his editor references Vosh's post that he used as an explanation of using the tactical N-word. And for those of you who are blessed enough to not know what this is, this is a situation where Vosh, in a debate with a fascist, just said the N-word with the hard R, literally just as a tactic to get who are blessed enough to not know what this is, this is a situation where Vosh, in a debate with a fascist, just said the N-word with the hard R, literally just as a tactic to get shock and loads of views and controversy. Yep, and this is something that's- Yeah, I, gu I guess. Xanderhal classifies as a- he, he was debating with Nazis, and the Nazis kept making jokes about the N-word without actually saying it. And so Vosh called them on it and said, are, oh, are we just being afraid of words now? I think that it was bad. I don't think that it worked well for him. And obviously he apologized for it. So I don't think he thinks it was good either, but it wasn't like he was using it directed at anybody or even in a racist context. He just said it. I'm sorry, but guys, there is a difference. Okay, there is a fucking difference. I, I can recognize that it was a, that it's a stupid play, that it doesn't look good. And that it also is very, it's like, you know, uh, you know, arrogant or whatever, but this is like, this is a very dishonest framing, framing, and honestly, you should just, why not just tell the truth? You can criticize Vosh for that without lying. Yeah, he does have, this guy has massive, massive soy-facing energy. I think every single time we've paused, he's been soy-facing. So. Good meme. He also references Vosh's rant about queer people online, which was extremely queerphobic, again, because of what I mentioned previously about attaching toxic online behaviors to one marginalized demographic. It's super annoying because, yes, some people are toxic online, but just log off. You don't have to see those people. This isn't a huge thing to worry about for most people, but you see, the people that Xander Hall's actually talking about here are just people that disagree with him. And he can't have that. Oh no, God forbid. He starts to say that the way to solve this problem is to make sure that there are less transphobic and queerphobic parents out there, kind of trying to reinforce the fact that his de-radicalization is the solution to a lot of problems. Not that, you know, he should reflect on some of the more problematic aspects of his behavior that these so-called woke scolds point out. Now, I'd be lying. substanceless all this had no substance there's nothing I can if i said that here. people didn't go too far online absolutely they do i've seen hundreds and thousands of babies first political opinion and people who really go ham and puritanical on issues that aren't
Bro, I on, with all due respect, you really shouldn't be talking about baby's first political opinion when this video, when this is your video. Like so far, this video has been all vibes and just explicit lies. Like you're not doing a good job. Your 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 propaganda is bad. It's not even good propaganda. If you were really manipulative, you would have made some serious big claims. You know, not like this fucking weird pansy shit where you're like, well, one time in a conversation with somebody, he said that the trans community online can be toxic and gatekeepy, and that's transphobic. Here's a video of him saying it where I say what he said over the video and don't actually show you the audio. It's fucking terrible. Am I just being racist? Uh, Capo says, am I just being racist against British people or is this what you come home to when mom says we have H-bomber guy at home? I think this is like what you come home to when somebody says, when your mom says we have H-bomber guy at home, but then you you get back home and you find out that like British Rasputin has moved into your home. And that's like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought we had H-bomber guy at home, but Rasputin actually ate him. So... We don't even have the imitation. You just have some guy that ate the imitation. Aren't really that much of an issue once you put them under a close analysis. But if I thought that people doing that was a problem, I'd be doing a video about them and not debate bros. It's good that people are exploring. Well, you're doing a video about Xander Hall, not debate bros, but I'm glad you've kept your topic. Or in the boundaries of our language and how the roots of certain words can be harming people and how certain attitudes and behaviors need to be changed. It shows that our culture is evolving into one that's based on love and compassion rather than hateful exclusion. And it can also show that we have a long way to go when it comes to people resorting to puritanical, protestant, colonialist rhetoric when trying to change people's minds about things. But that's all by the by. There's one thing that's extra telling in this video. He says that woke scolds need to be de-radicalized in the same way that Nazis do. So what does that tell us about Xanderhal? Nothing? Nothing? That says that that oh this is this is a sleight of hand. Claiming that claiming that if Xanderhal says that that these particular leftists are too radical that they need to be de-radicalized that um that 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 like oh that means that they're too far left but it not, doesn't actually mean it's about to being too far left. I would argue that tankies need to be de-radicalized. Tankies are, are radicalized into hyper, hyper, hyper abusive cults over and over and over again that squeeze people for their money. I would argue they need to be de-radicalized, but that doesn't make me a centrist lib. It's not because I don't think they need to be de-radicalized from being too left. I don't think they're left at all. This is silly. Not that that doesn't mean that Xander Hall isn't a centrist lib, mind you. Just saying. So if you're a Zan fan and you've made it this far in the video, I gotta say kudos because most Debate Bro fans don't really watch the video and simply react to things out of context and then claim that I'm doing the same thing despite the hours and hours and hours of content that I've watched from your special... Then why didn't you play any clips, you dishonest, slimy, fucking piece of shit? Sorry, that's a little much, but I just can only- I can only take so much. I can only take so much fucking fart sniffing. When somebody's like, I watched so many hours, I put together a research paper for this! And then it's like, but you didn't- you talked over the clips! You say you watch hours and you don't have any clips! You don't have anything! Nothing! You just say things, and you might even be right. Maybe Xander Hall did say something transphobic, but we don't get to know because in your fucking hit piece, in your your piece where you're supposedly exposing Xander Hall, you don't actually play anything. You're just fucking talking to yourself. This is this is one of the times where I am actually like when I see videos like this. When I see videos like this guy's video, it genuinely, it makes me go, wow, maybe the pe maybe the people, maybe the like streamer versus essayist like divide, maybe the streamers were right. Maybe video essayists just are like a, like a, like a fundamentally more dishonest type, you know? Maybe it is, maybe I, maybe it is a little essentialist. Maybe the like, the, 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 if you become a video essayist, there's just some necessary level of dishonesty that you have to absorb. You're not too late, honestly. This video is going very slow, though, but we're having a good time. A lot of people here. By the way, real quick, 
If you are here and you're having a great time, which you probably are, press the like button down below, press subscribe and ring the bell. I make content all the time. I do fucking top notch content and we always have a blast. My chat is always bumping and we have the best fan base on the entire internet, the imps. They're amazing and I love them and you will too. So press the subscribe button, press like and come on over to the website, demonmama.com forward slash live where you can join this chat, this chat right here. Let's continue. Oh boy. And some of you are sat there saying, well, no, Xanderholt is not a lib. He's not a centrist. What do you mean? He's progressive. He's a leftist. All right, all right, all right, all right. Calm down. We're going to get into it. Just grab a nice drink, some snackies, maybe play your favorite Vibby game while you're watching this video, and we're going to get into it. Scrolling through Xanderholt's YouTube page, you'll notice that there isn't a lot about his actual views when it comes to material conditions or class consciousness. A lot of his left-wing content is based on civil and human rights, which he kind of shits all over when he does his woke scold content. So let's go right back to his first video. Okay, I'm gonna just address this right now because I'm sure lots of people will want to hear, hear this. I fucking can't stand woke scolds either, okay? Like, and I'm pretty fuck- I'm about as- I'm about as fucking- Hardcore as you can get when it comes to social issues. I, you know, I fucking, most of my stream is talking about that shit. And I can't stand these people who spend all day, uh, fucking doing shit like this. Making dishonest, pathetic attempts to, like, cancel people. They're fucking annoying. Woke scolds are fucking annoying. And the reason they're called woke scolds, while I agree that the term is overused, the reason they're called woke scolds is because it's about the way they go about their critique. It's the same thing as the, like the fucking annoying vegans that I talk about, which also they do the same thing. They don't actually engage. They don't actually make good arguments. Most of the time they're just like, um, that person is problematic. I, excuse, I'm sorry, I am a white person. I'm a white person. I'm a white person settler and I'm living on uh, on indigenous land that has been appropriated. But uh, I just want to say that my black friends say that you're racist. And so, uh, you know, I, I just want to make sure that I'm practicing, um, you know, I'm practicing listening. And then it's like a bunch of other black people will come and say, hey, well, we don't 100% agree with that. And they would go, um, you must, I'm sorry, but I'm just reporting what the black community has told me. Again, I am white. I am living, I am a colo colonial settler. I'm living on these lands, but you, you're being racist right now. And you really should sit down, listen, shut up and listen. Yes, it is literally, it's the people trying to cancel Keffels because of the noodles. Because Keffels was like, guys, canceling the noodle lady is pretty stupid. Like, maybe there's better things to fight. And Keffels was correct. And people are like, oh, and then a bunch of, it's because woke scolds are people who put their own fucking clout before the thing that they're being so sanctimonious about. It really is the sanctimoniousness. It's the, excuse me, but you have, you have spoken out of line. It's that shit that drives people fucking crazy. It's not just, it's not, Obviously, there's room to make all kinds of critiques, and I will re I will acknowledge there are people who cannot take any critique of their politics. There are tons of people out there who are just incapable of recognizing a critique because they just call everybody a woke scold. But that doesn't mean that there isn't like some some grounds to be held on the woke scold people. And there are woke scold people, and they are fucking annoying, and they don't do anybody any good. They just make Twitter worse. Oh yeah, remember that? Uh, nuts. Oh yeah, yeah, nuts brought up. There was a time when I made a tweet where I was like, a lot of trans people simply can't help but tear down any trans person who succeeds. And I'm not saying that all trans people do it. I'm fucking trans. But there are people who, um, because they only have, and, and the argument I made was quite compassionate. I was basically saying like, I understand that it's really hard to only have like one trans person that you can like, look to and say, hey, that, that trans person made it. And my argument was that maybe we should learn to go about critique of those figures more healthily than every single person on the planet sending their critiques to the one trans person who makes it, even if that trans person isn't perfect. Because the truth of the matter is, um, if, you're, if there's only one trans person who makes it to like fame, 
and that person has to be the receptacle of every of all of the the wishes and desires and hopes of every trans person no human can do that no fucking human can do that i've talked about this and and by the way uh people straight up lost their shit about that people got fucking really angry at me about that take and when i say really angry i mean i got chain blocked by a bunch of people because of that because of that so yes the woke scold faction absolutely does fucking exist those people they they are not they're not helping they're not doing a good anti-racism critique they're just tr they're just using the the sound the, the words and the buzzwords to gain personal clout It's fucking gross. Anyway, let's continue. That got a ton of views. How I almost became alt right. He starts off by saying he never really went into politics and had a fairly progressive mom who taught him why it's wrong to be racist, misogynist, and bigoted in general. And that he was super disappointed in the USA and Americans in general when Trump got elected because even he could see that Trump was a bad guy. He then talks about his radicalization through YouTube content. It's so weird listening to this because it's almost like he's talking about himself when he talks about Chris Reagan, who he describes introduced him to alt right content. He says that Chris described himself as sent left and did a lot of content about how feminism was obsolete in the USA in 2016. Chris Reagan? The world of difference between Chris Reagan and Xander Hall? If you can't tell the difference between fucking Chris Reagan and Xander Hall in the way they talk about issues, I'm sorry, but you're, you're not qualified to be making fucking commentary on YouTube. Holy motherfucking God. Obviously, Xanderhal doesn't do content like that, but he does do content that attacks people that are too left-wing for him or annoy him personally. A lot of similarities, you know? The video is very short, so it... A lot of similarities between beefing with people that you don't like on the internet and criticizing some people who might be more left than you, but, but are also maybe annoying you or being mean to you is the same thing as, like, making a fuckload of extremely popular animation spreading explicit misinformation and doing... Apologia for actual Nazis? Yeah, okay. I encourage you to watch it yourself, but the long and short of it is that he went further down the pipeline and saw Charlottesville and the murder of Heather Heyer, and then he saw that that shit was actually really bad and wrong, so he started to lose faith in it. He then talks about how Destiny pulled him out of the alt-right pipeline. For those of you that are somehow blissfully unaware of Density, here is a quick recap. He started making content on Twitch when it was still Justin.tv. He did like StarCraft 2 matches and he started doing debate content around 2016. Destiny apparently referred to himself as a libertarian before this, but then called himself a liberal when he heard another streamer call another streamer the F word. Anyway, in Destiny's debate content, he did a lot of arguing against white supremacists and alt-right figureheads. But now, here's the key thing about this. He kind of always did this from the center ground. Destiny has also admitted to using slurs oh. in private and has defended this, in fact, in multiple debates. He's never been a communist or a socialist or an anarchist and is in fact- Oh no, he openly, he openly hates them. He openly hates lefties. It's argued against those ideologies from a capitalist viewpoint for a long, long time. In fact, Destiny is quoted as saying this about the George Floyd uprisings. The rioting needs to fucking stop. And if that means like white redneck fucking militia dudes out there mowing down dipshit protesters that think that they can torch buildings at 10 p.m., then at this point they have my fucking blessing because holy shit, this fucking shit needs to stop. It needed to stop a long time ago. So yeah, this is the guy that saved Zanderhal. Neil. There's a magical thing called time. And in the past, Destiny made content that was against right-wingers. It is very possible that you found his early videos compelling, but that you no longer d agree with him. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's literally exactly where Xander Hall is, and that Xander Hall has repeatedly criticized Destiny for his current opinions and his current behaviors. Weird how that works, isn't it? Uh... Liberal politics are inherently like this. They say, yes, you can have your rights as long as you shut the fuck up about your queerness, shut the fuck up about your blackness, and- do Yeah, dude, you used to like- you used to like Joe Rogan. So, I guess this all just doesn't matter, man. Do your job until you die in poverty like the wage slave that you are. Do not question the machine. You are part of the machine. 
What's hilarious about this, and the reason that I'm bringing this up, is because this is exactly where Xander Hall sits nowadays. Albeit slightly to the left of Destiny, he does argue in support of trans rights and Black Lives Matter in a follow-up. That's pretty majorly to the left. That's pretty majorly to the left. Destiny, as of the publishing of this video, was platforming fucking, was, was, pla was hanging out with Nick Fuentes. Fucking fu buddy buddy with Nick Fuentes. Destiny was fucking talking, as of the publishing of this video, Destiny was talking about fucking supporting, paying money to support Kiwi Farms. Th th slightly to the left, this is, this video is so fucking dishonest. Do you see why I get annoyed why these, like, this is the type of shit, this is the type of dishonesty that unironically, like, it makes the case against people worse. Because when there's all this, g videos like this garbage, just, just manufacturing misinformation on the internet it just makes it all the much harder to actually get to the bottom of things to this video and the much longer how i fell down the alt-right pipeline and escaped he immediately starts by saying i also wasn't even a leftist when i made those videos i was still identifying as what i now know to be a neoliberal and then claims to have become more progressive but only really says that he's a leftist and doesn't really go on much from there he does say that apparently he was planning to read The Conquest of Bread live on stream, but I can't find that on his channel anywhere. So it's likely that he read a bit of it, thought it was going to be too boring, and sacked the idea off. Which okay, to be fair, it's kind of boring. To, to be fair, reading a book on stream is really fucking boring, and reading that book on stream is really fucking boring. Which is actually fair enough, because I think that reading theory on a live stream is extremely boring content, oh, and I yeah. definitely oh, would hell not hell be yeah. they, I'm glad we're in agreement on this. For that. But it does yeah, kind of show that he's not really interested in that stuff, and the vast majority what? of his other content clearly shows a lack of understanding about how the working what? class struggle intersects it, with buddy? the civil rights that he supports. What's also interesting to point out is that while Xanahal a, says that Destiny- This is a roller coaster ride. I feel like I'm getting jerked all over the place. And he saved him from the alt-right pipeline. Xanahal doesn't appear to have actually ever been debated on his alt-right views. He simply saw an example of right-wing views being torn to shreds in the form of Destiny debating a white supremacist. The major difference between this and other forms of de-radicalization is that it simply made him not a Nazi. It didn't make him a communist, an anarchist, or even a socialist. The more and more that Zanhol gushes Why about destiny, matter? it becomes clearer and clearer that he has a deep love for the guy, and that so he wants stupid. to emulate him in every way. He says that the edginess of destiny made him think he was cool, and he made a lot of friends in Destiny's Discord server. Now, the next part is extremely interesting. He talks about our schoolboy Sean's video, The Fate of the Frogmen. A video in which Sean talks about the online alt-right and their slow, sad march into irrelevance. And Zan the Man says that this was the moment that he truly understood what had happened to him. Basically admitting that Sean, a video essayist, made him really understand what had happened to him versus watching the debate with Destiny, which simply made him stop being a full- What's the point being made here? I don't- I don't get it. I don't get what the point is. Is he trying to say that, like, it was actually Sean that did it and not Destiny? I don't get it. This seems like a really stupid and petty point. ...on Sieg Heiling Nazi. It's interesting that he talks about learning social structures and disavowing capitalism, but a lot of his content just really isn't about that. One of the most important things to happen over the last year for a lot of leftists is the- This is- by way the way, you... again, I'm saying this again, this is why I get so annoyed when I see videos going ham on Xander Hall. Because they're all like this. They're all super, super petty. They're all basically like condescending, like somebody like is trying to be like, they're trying to pretend like they're his big brother or something. It's so fucking creepy. It's so parasocial and weird and the videos suck. This video sucks. Unionization that's happened across the US and the world. Yeah, I have, that I have. Retcon, this video has been a slog. It's been an absolute slog. The whole was covering a lot of this. That'd mean a lot of people learning about a lot of good stuff. He's got one video that's 18 minutes of him covering the Staten Island warehouse unionization, but it's got woefully low views. Hell, I know the feels on that one. My union video and activism content performs terribly. But let's talk about his Joe Biden support. It's so interesting that in this video, quote, why I'm not Bernie or bust and you shouldn't be either, Xander Holt talks about how he loves Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden is a creepy old man who has rape allegations against him. But more recently, he just unironically tweets and retweets Joe Biden's Twitter or pro-Democrat stuff. Zan in this video also talks about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and how if she dies while Trump is in office, then women's rights, trans rights- That, okay, what's that supposed to mean? That's so tenuous. And other civil rights are all on the chopping block. Funny then how all that still kind of happened, but he still supports Joe Biden and the Democrats. He focuses in this video a lot about harm reduction, but the harm has been done. It happened under Joe Biden and the Democrats. 
And Xanderhol used this platform to tell people that Bernie or Bust is a bad thing. Okay, I Because it is. Because Bernie or Bust, guys, Bernie or Bust is pure fucking hu copium huffing. I've- I know that this- I know people like to joke because I was the one- I- I like, you know, made fun of some of the anti-Bernie or Bust stuff because it went a little bit absurd because there weren't really that many people who were actually Bernie or Bust, but Bernie or Bust is fucking stupid. It's- it's literally like, I think there's problems with electoralism, so I'm gonna participate in electoralism in the stupidest way imaginable and waste my time with something that I purportedly don't believe in. It's cup- it's copium huffing. It's literally copium huffing. I agree. Electoralism is bullshit. Bernie got fucking ripped off. And it sucks that we always end up getting stuck with a pick between a screaming fascist and a uh, fucking mild-mannered loser like Joe Biden. Of course that sucks. But Bernie or bust was never going to work. It was a stupid tactic for stupid people. Simple as. If you were a Bernie or Buster, you probably are stupid. I get Simple it. Simple as. Not voting for a Democrat in 2020 would have been a disaster. But you didn't need to go full pro-Democrat either. Nuance is a thing and critical support is a thing. The main thing to take away from Xander Holt- Okay, okay. So uh, he wasn't- he was too supportive of, of B Joe Biden. All right, that's an argument. I think he's too supportive of Joe Biden. But that doesn't mean that he's not your ally. In this video is this. Revolution isn't happening in the foreseeable future. All we can do at this current moment is work within our current electoral system. Anybody who's still burning your bus at this point, there's no changing their minds. Fuck them, okay? They don't give a No! Fucking true! If you're sitting on the night of the election and you're saying you're burning your bus, you are just stupid. You are- you have not thought. If you are invested in a losing electoral fight and you are investing energy in an electoral fight that you have 0% chance of winning, that is stupid. Yes. Shit about my no- But yes, uh, I will agree. It is Libby to say, oh, oh, revolution is not coming. Uh, but I understand why people say it. Because usually they're engaging with fucking brain dead tankies who think that tomorrow there's going to be a vanguard party that goes and scoops up all of the, uh, all of the, the, the like, uh, the, the, the Mosin Nagants in every single American uh, military surplus store and that they're going to storm the Winter Palace of America. But that's fucking ridiculous, of course. That's probably what he was bitching about. But okay, fair. You want to call him a lib for that? That's fair. I can, I can, I can say, you know anybody you uh, in this country. Um, the general strike tomorrow people. Do you know who the general strike tomorrow people were? Do you know who ran that group? Fucking EJ and Luna Oi. It was EJ and Luna Oi were the primary people running the general strike tomorrow group. Again, stupid idiot grifters. Uh, whose life is on the line in the selection. This is such a reductive take, and again has been proven wrong by the fact that said minorities have suffered under Biden, as we previously discussed. So the question here is this, if Xander Hall loves Bernie so much, why is he so willing to claim that the majority of people who support Bernie don't care about marginalized people's rights? So my theory is this, as when we said before, that? when Xander Hall said he lost- When did he say that? When did he fucking say that? ...faith in America after Trump was elected, he sees that as the catalyst for him going down the pipeline. So for him, beating Trump is paramount in that election because he sees his radicalization as Trump's fault. Which is true, as far as we can tell, Steve Bannon, who I've talked about on the channel before, was a bigwig on Trump's campaign and literally wanted to radicalize gamers to the far right. However, what seems to be more important to Zan than the nuance that Bernie or Busters have a point, or that even Bernie or Busters do care about marginalized people, is that Trump gets beat in the election. To Xander Hall, this is a cathartic thing that he needs, and to be fair, it actually was for a lot of Americans and people around the world. Especially people in a similar position to Xander Hall who got radicalized by alt-right beliefs and then realized that they'd been taken for a ride. It's kind of like revenge for them, if you will. See now, what happens with revenge is that you become a bit blinkered and you lose sight of the bigger picture. Neoliberals are actually primed for this kind of worldview. You know, it's the I'm all right, Jack mentality. Uh, also, bit of a sidetrack, but I just want to point out in this video, he says this? Nuking Japan was justified, though. It's sort of like a, a hard discussion, but yeah. Um, from what I've seen with all the arguments, it does seem like it, like the the good does outweigh the bad. And a really, it's like the train. It's like the, the trolley problem. You know, it's a really fucked up situation, but we're not going to talk about that right now. 
Yeah, I feel like he put a video out where he changed his mind on that. Matt, whatever. But again, I think this is a low blow, and it also doesn't have anything to do with the point. So let's continue. What? Xander Hall then goes on to talk about all the bad things that. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you explain why that's a bad argument? Video essayists suck at this shit. This guy sucks. Why wouldn't you explain to your viewers why that's wrong? Or is it just a virtue signal? See, this is the shit that gets me mad. Oh, huh? Huh? You never even explained why you would why you would be mad about that. Okay. It's gonna happen if Trump gets reelected. <clears throat> can you explain why it's a bad argument? Okay, I can explain. I'll do this guy's job for him. Okay, I'm gonna do this guy's job, and then I'm gonna hit the bathroom. So you guys better stick around and press the like button. Okay. First, I'm gonna do this guy's job for him. Okay. The argument that the that dropping the nukes on Japan um, was it was a good thing. It is is has largely been debunked. Um, they were dropped. Uh, they were dropped uh, after uh, the point after the point at which basically the United States military had cl had decided no, Japan is definitely they're definitely not going to last. They literally can't last any farther. And um, so the decision that was actually made by the uh, by the United States was not oh we need to end the war so that people don't die because. Tons and tons and tons of people were already dying from firebombing every single day. The United States was firebombing um, basically, uh, mo like basically every major Japanese port. Um, the the Allies were firebombing those cities, so tons of people were dying. Um, it wasn't like they needed the bomb to win the war. In fact, it, like I said, the the military had basically already decided that Japan had no way to continue the war. They were running out of troops. They were running out of supplies. Their uh, citizens were extremely, extremely uh, war weary. Um, but what they wanted to do was send a message to the world. So they decided we have this giant thing. This is our opportunity to sort of justifiably show off our our power to the world. Now. A lot of this information wasn't available in the past, so a lot of people still made the argument that Japan, that it was necessary to bomb Japan. And a lot of history classes still teach that because of American propaganda. But the truth is that historians have largely moved on from that point, and most, uh, most like respected historians uh, no longer believe that it was uh, necessary at all, not even close to justifiable to drop the nukes on Japan. So there you go. There you fucking go. Okay? Come on. Such as the US will slip further into fascism. Roe v. Wade will get overturned. The attacks on LGBTQIA plus people will increase and continue. He also focuses on COVID-19, saying that it will continue to ravage the US unchecked. Let's uh, take a look at what happened under Biden. Um, the US has slipped further into fascism. Roe v. Wade has been overturned. Attacks on LGBTQIA plus people have increased and continued. COVID-19 is still ravaging the US. I agree with the fact. These are facts. These facts are true. However, this does not address whether or not it was t strategically correct to be Bernie or Bust or not. It is still correct, even though all of this happened, it is still correct that Bernie or Bust was a losing tactic that had no chance. It is a simple mathematical analysis. And all of this is copium huffing. Unchecked. What's really interesting about Xander Hall and his ilk is that they are obsessed with electoral politics and seem to see it as the be-all and end-all despite identifying themselves as leftists and in some cases, anarchists. From a more critical point of view in which you can easily observe and analyze electoral politics to be milk toast in achieving anything good at best, we understand that the most important thing to do, especially nowadays, is to organize, create instances of direct action and mutual aid in order to remove dependence on the state, build dual- Yes, yes, P as Posadas John brings up, Roe v. Wade would have most likely been overturned if Bernie was elected as well. I highly doubt that Bernie would have been, um, even though I really, really like Bernie, obviously we all know everybody here is a big fan of Bernie Sanders. The chance that Bernie Sanders would have expanded the, um, the Supreme Court is about the same as Biden. I don't think that he would have done that, and I think we still would have lost Roe v. Wade. Power and eventually sever all ties with those who claim to governors. This is the way. 
While Zan did indeed cover the unionization of the Amazon warehouse in Staten Island, this seems to be the only bit of his content that covers any kind of dual power structures at all. And to be honest, I think this is why Xander Hall and his community have such a hard time listening to marginalized people who criticize him. Because his I can weigh in on this one. I can weigh in on this one. As one of the uh, marginalized people with the largest platforms that has directly and personally critiqued Xander Hall on video, I actually find that Xander Hall is pretty good at listening to critique from marginalized people. Just not people like DJ Mule. I've had no problem making my critiques heard by Xander Hall. In fact, um, I would say Xander Hall is one of the people who's responded best to my critiques. It's, it's fucking wild. So I don't know where he's pulling this from. I would love to see some receipts for this. But again, this is just a unsubstantiated claim. In my personal experience, I've found Zan to be very receptive. Is he young? Does he still have things to learn? Of course. So do I. So do you. Uh, yes, and also Zan's community is absolutely jam-packed with trans people. I don't know about other demographics, but I know for a fact how many trans people are in Zan's audience. It's wild. I think I would be willing to I would be willing to wager that a majority of Xander Hall's audience is neurodivergent and a solid I wouldn't say a majority but a good I would say probably a good I would be willing to guess that a 30% of Zan's audience is trans. His content is focused on working within the system, trying to change said system from within. Kind of like a guy who joins the police force to try and make it better and just like said cop you either end up getting bullied out with a force or becoming the thing that you hate that's it everybody today we learned debate bros and cops same structure a definitely well substantiated well formulated argument you know the cops a legalized gang that literally weaponizes your daily life, the fact that they know where you live, the fact that they all carry lethal weapons, the fact that there is enormous immovable bureaucracies in order to pressure people into basically making extremely racist decisions on a constant basis, and debate bros. Yeah, these things are the same. <laughs> Wait, for real? We got a sound bite? Oh my god. My source is that I made it the fuck up. My yeah, source is that I- Alright, guys, we're putting this- it's finally happening, okay? It's finally fucking happening. I'm putting it on the soundboard. We're putting it on the fucking soundboard. It has to go. It has to be there. It's going on the soundboard. We have no choice anymore. I have to. This video is the one that did it. It finally pushed me over. Where's my, uh... Where's my one? Here, we gotta replace. Let's replace. Alright, we're gonna put the spank away for now, okay? We're gonna put the spank away for now, everybody, okay? Here we go. This is the one. Here we go. My source is that I made it the fuck up. All right. All right. Here we go, everybody. It's time. Let's do this. So I want to preface this segment with this. I'm going to be talking about one of my best friends, Sophie from Mars. She is one of my favorite people. She's one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. She makes me laugh. She has helped me build my channel to what it is today. She reinvigorated my love of all things based and her eloquent commentary on the state of the world and what needs to be done today in order to improve the lives of people has inspired me to do the activism that I am involved with today. So in short, I'm biased. However, I'm well aware that bad faith actors won't care either way. So of course, I'm gonna be biased as fuck in defending my friends. But you, it's rad and cool and good actually to be biased and defend your friends. Also, I think the main thing to point out, in case you didn't figure it It's true that it's good to stand up for your friends, 
but it's not true to lie, cheat, steal, kill, murder, whatever, just to defend somebody that you're friends with. If your friend fucks up, you should be willing to at least see where they might have fucked up. As it turns out, this is not a black and white issue. But we now know, yes. And yes, the Sophie from Mars, I like Sophie from Mars videos, by and large, okay? I do. In fact, I've recommended Sophie from Mars's video, uh, video about BPD many times on this channel, for, for just so that we're all aware. However, Sophie is extremely dishonest when it comes to Xander Hall, and Sophie has on numerous occasions, in my opinion, contributed to spreading misinformation about Xander Hall. So I understand why Xander Hall and Sophie from Mars don't like each other. out already is that i'm extremely biased against debate bros anyway so if your main criticism of this video is that i'm biased, i imagine she must hate you i don't think she hates me but maybe she does maybe she'll hate me after this i don't know i hope not yes then I, again i have no bad blood with basically any of these people as of right now um except for maybe thought slime and that's because thought slime was the one who perpetrated all of the sex cult bullshit and it was complete and utter bullshit, and he knew it was bullshit. He was confronted on it being bullshit, and he continued to ignore it. Or they. I'm sorry if I'm using the wrong pronouns. I thought they were he, they, but I could be wrong. My apologies if I did. I'll, may I'll correct that. Well, duh. It's actually cool to be biased against things that are bad. Also, it's one letter away from beast. Xander Hall made a video earlier this year in May. It's called Lefty YouTuber Sophie from Mars is a Lying Joke. Now, I don't know why he didn't put any spaces in Sophie's name there. Uh, just a bit weird, but let's move on. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is how many views this video got. It's over 30,000. And his videos where he talks about unions is at a measly 4K. Okay, but you just admitted that you can't get anyone to watch your videos about unions, so maybe you should shut the fuck up, my man. And I want you to remember this before we get into this segment. Every piece of content that Xander Hall makes where he is attacking a marginalized person, be it a woman, a trans person, a black person... Noah... Is Noah Samson marginalized? Is... Is EJ... Is... Is American Johnson a marginalized person? Is Noah a marginalized person? Person gets so many. I guess we're just, I guess we're just playing very fast and loose with the term marginalized. I guess marginalized. Oh, oh, I get it. Sorry. So DJ Mule, a white guy is, is giving the N word pass to Noah Sampson and uh, and EJ. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. I'm just. Uh, I'm just. Get, just trying to make sure we're getting that correct, right? More views than any of his other content. His followers fucking love drama. Now this video sucks for many reasons, but let's just have a look at the comments before we watch the video. And there's a reason that I'm doing this, and I'll tell you in a bit. Jesus fucking Christ, the aggression in her tweet. I don't see how people cannot see through such relentless, extreme language. It's a red flag, and I think there's a word for it, but I can't think of it. Oh well. She couldn't just casually hate Bosch. It needs to be a great danger for everyone. Literally worst person ever. Which is wild, coming from someone who made video on Proud Boys. Okay, this one's funny as fuck to begin with, implying that there is aggression in a tweet. The reply is also extra funny because it's like, oh, you know, she's calling out someone who made video on Proud Boys. We don't even know the context of the video. It could be a video like saying that the Proud Boys are good. <laughs> it feels a bit disheartening to think of what little chance people give you. But please remember that you're so important and significant that they already have an opinion on you. While at the same time, they're not even known really outside their circle. Now listen, as you all know, I've, uh, I've been known to be a little petty sometimes, you know, once in a while, maybe even today, maybe even I'm being a little petty today by making fun of this loser who doesn't get any views on YouTube, maybe, but there's a special level of petty 
when you're going to someone else's comment section and reading positive comments to their video in a funky voice. I'm talking like 11 like comments on somebody else's old video and roasting the commenters for liking the video. That is a that is a diff that is a level of petty that I don't think I've ever been on. Yeah. And like I said, you know. Oh. Okay, this is super cringe. Calling Xanderhal important. Yes, you are very cringe. That is correct. This you going and sniping random comments on somebody else's video to make fun of the commenters because you need to pad the runtime of your shit ass video is pretty fucking cringe. Important and insignificant, and then to imply that Sophie's a nobody? Can you not understand numbers? Like, can you not see the difference here? I genuinely don't understand some of this stuff. I imagine Sophie's motivated reasoning is plain to see for most people who are being even slightly critical. So these angry Twitter rants aren't going to be particularly convincing for most. The audience for these tweets has to just be other people who hate Vosh, Zadahal, etc. Which is bizarre. This do we want to do we want to go find out? This guy's got 5,000 subscribers. This is his most viewed video, I think, ever, maybe? Wait, let's find out. Is this his most viewed video ever? No, the Vosh one is more more views. It is his second most viewed video ever. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Cottage industry seems organic because I think most of its contributors seem genuine, but it's functionally the same kind of astroturf entity which artificially gets created in other political online spaces all the time, so I wouldn't rule it out. There can't be much money in the anti orbited industrial complex, so I just can't see why anyone participated in it for business reasons, but they do seem determined to make an anti Vosh Zan the new meta. I don't think it has much chance of success though. Oh boy, where to start with that one? Um, but I'm not really here to debate these. This guy is. I was just about to say he's shadow boxing with YouTube commenters in his hour and a half video about Xander Hall. This is bad. This is this is this is bad, everybody. These comments. I'm just kind of here to show what kind of a picture is being painted about my friend. So let's move on. A lot of SAS just seem to viscerally hate streamers as a group at a level that strikes me as bizarre and unwarranted. What's the dealio? Okay, um, does this motherfucker know that there are more streamers than Xander Hall and Vosh? Sophie's, as I said, one of my best friends and I Do you know that? Do you know that, DJ Mule? Do you? Because you're the one who made an hour and a half video about Xander Hall. I've been a political streamer for most of my content creation career. There are also plenty of other leftist Twitch streamers who do not do career debate content like what are you talking about i think it's honestly the twitter anti-gaff culture you get a lot of engagement for um actually comments and less talented video essayists thrive off that shit meanwhile twitch is a live format and every streamer that does it long enough is gonna say some shit that either sounds weird out of context was wrong but poorly thought out usually refined later or just misspoken so they're an easy target this is another huge assumption here as i said i've been streaming for a a long time six years in fact and i was uh i didn't actually hear what he said i gotta rewind uh i i was reading my chat or just misspoken okay so he's just going on again about another this this is a youtube comment with one like by the way so they're an easy target. This is another huge assumption here. As I said, I've been streaming for a long time, six years in fact, and no one has out of contexted any of my content. And I know I'm going to have got. Got to have viewers for people to make clips of your content. Sorry. Them's the breaks. Got some stuff slightly wrong in that time. You ever wonder why it's like always the debate bros that get this kind of stuff? It's always the debate bros who are clipped out of context 
or oh they just misspoke it's a live stream format everybody's gonna get some stuff wrong eventually so from all these comments we're getting something we're getting a picture of our sophie they're building a profile of someone who their debate king does not like and so it makes it easier for them to not like her either there are also multiple comments saying i used to follow sophie now i just can't so what could it have been that sophie did that was so reprehensible in the eyes of these people what did she say and why did she say it? From these comments, it really sounds like she's a hypersensitive, overbearing, terminally online monster. So, what is it? What happened? Cherry Bread is quote tweeting Sophie in bad faith here about something that actually happened. Now, I have to bring this up because this is something that's mentioned in this tweet. So, the sex cult stuff. I was actually going to include the sex cult drama in this video, but the main victim who spoke out against this has categorically said that she does not want people making content about what happened to her anymore. Hold on. Hold on. And so in situations like this, it's incredibly important to center the victim's voice. So I will not be talking about this stuff. However, with all the you did, and you are. Also, this person recanted the claims. They're not the victim. You can't call them a victim if they recant recanted their claims. And not even under any, like, this isn't even like Xander Hall is some famous Hollywood person, so you could claim it was under duress. They recanted the claims. Yeah, Capo says, oh, I'll bring it up against her wishes, but only to claim it's 100% true and leave it in the air. That's so, this is the slimiest, this is the most pathetic, slimiest shit. And this is the point, by the way, I'm declaring it right now, everybody. I've seen enough. My source is that I made it the fuck up. DJ Mule is a dishonest, lying hack. And this video has no substance of worth We've now sat through 31 minutes of criticisms against Xander Hall, and at this point, the gloves go. I don't give a shit anymore. I don't fucking care anymore. We're making fun of this asshole. Let's go. Let's go. In mind and my actual knowledge of what happened, it is a extremely relevant thing for people to bring up about Xander Hall. So apparently just- No, it isn't. A made up sex- a made up sex cult that literally there was no physical involvement. There was not even any sexual involvement at all. It was literally made up from the get-go based off of a Discord joke that somebody misinterpreted and then repeated as fact. It is so dishonest. It is not important to bring it up. It is, in fact, I would argue slanderous to bring it up. Not criminally slanderous, I don't think, maybe, but I don't really care about that. But it is slanderous nonetheless to bring it up. For believing victims, Sophie here is being labeled as a bad faith actor who is spreading lies about the community. Really interesting here that this is about what the tr- Oh, thank you very much, Socialist Potato. DJ Mule getting mad at a shadow onesie that me and Zan and chat want, want Zan to do for so long and it became a part of his brand now because it was so funny. Yeah, he, 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 fucking- Listen, this guy is is sipping on the absolute bottom of the barrel, desperate for clicks. His content doesn't get any fucking clicks whatsoever, and so he had to punch at somebody he thought was acceptable, and he chose to make an hour and a half video about Xander Hall. But guess what? For us lovely imps, we get to laugh at an idiot. Friends, a trans community support. So it was Vosh fans who had what the trans suspended for criticizing Vosh. WTT. I, I, I would be, I would love to see, I would love to see evidence of that. But it sounds like it was deleted. It sounds like maybe this was out of pocket. Port network that does a lot of exposés on gender criticals and TERFs. The tweet in question here is when what the trans asked trans people who support Vosh why they support him when he's been so transphobic in the past. It didn't make sense. What the trans then talks about is how it was absolutely Vosh fans that Dogpile reported this tweet to get the account suspended. As I said, this is an account that helps trans people a lot. What the trans even mentions that gender criticals and TERFs normally don't bother mass reporting trans activists. I don't know, I don't know what, what the trans is. 
So, uh, is this another one? Is this another- My source is that I made it the fuck up. Don't remind me how what the trans deleted the lovely thread of people, of trans people saying they supported, uh, Vosh. Gayfesh says, this is a lie. This timeline is a lie. WTT was banned and unbanned before they ever even spoke out against Vosh. Huh. That's curious. Jessica Metal says, this is a lie. WTT asked and trans Vosh fans explained and WT argued with them and then criticized them for liking Vosh. Yeah, this is a lie. I'm getting multiple people telling me that this timeline is just completely fucking made up. They tend to focus- I don't know. I don't even know if we can verify this. Does what the trans even exist? How would we pu fucking even verify this? Che Let's do a fact check. Okay. So they exist. There I don't know how we would ever tell when they were banned. Twitter- is there a way to check Twitter ban history? I don't know. If anybody finds a tool. Anyway, let's continue. Focus on popular cis allies or popular trans people themselves. I want to draw your attention back to this comment on the video. The aggressive tone being described here is not something that you can take from words on the screen that is Sophie's tweet. However, Xander- Why is so much time devoted to a random comment? This is, this is, like I said, not even just scraping the bottom of the barrel. This is a- this is a fucking, this is like, I, I don't even have arguments to make against Xander Hall, so I'm going to grab random comments, positive comments from Xander Hall's video and then roast those. Oh, is this an archive of the thread? Oh yeah, here's the archive. Interesting. Damn. Wow. Okay, yeah. So if we go here, by the way, so this is the um this is the an archive of the thread. Vosh is rad trans fans. Responses to what the trans deleted post. If you find a tweet that I missed, tag me in the quote. On May 27th, what the trans asked, please don't make me regret this. Trans people only who like Vosh. What has he done for you? Not to uh, not asking to imply anything. I would like to know. I'm not gonna reply with anything. I honestly don't get it. Help. And then we have this is from Vosh. He says, we may not agree on everything, but thank you very much for asking this, inviting the perspectives of trans people in my community. It's taken in good faith, and I know those responding appreciate being listened to. I hope you don't get any negativity for this. Eight hours later. Wait, never mind, I take it back. Literally, all you've been doing the past 24 hours is arguing with my trans fans. You've invalidated more trans experiences in the last day than I have all year. Come on, what was the point of asking? And then you have lots and lots and lots of comments uh, from presumably trans people, some of these guys I recognize from my community, saying, hey, he's a very nice guy, and while I don't agree with his position or the ways he always engages, I think he does a lot of good for the left. He reached out to me when I was going through a rough time online, helped me, get, helped, helped me by giving me some Twitch advice that's been a big boon. He helped me learn to how to, approach, how to approach transphobic arguments. So they asked for this, and there's a lot of positive responses. So again, this guy's just mischaracterizing what actually happened. Hall seems to be trying out for an Oscar here. His fans are belligerent, obnoxious, creepy chuds who harass and shame other content creators for expressing any disagreement with him in ways no other's community, no other creator's community ever does, ever does. So when Zan first stops reading the tweets in this hilariously villain-esque way, he says that, by the way, nothing here makes sense. He's clearly trying to paint her as having a breakdown and being unintelligible. Right, this fair. is something Social that we see potato. debate bros do a lot, especially when they're attacking trans people Thank who you. criticize them, trans women specific. Social Potato says, also, to expand on the Shadow the Hedgehog, Shadow the Hedgehog wasn't an edgy character originally, he was more of a tragic character who lost his only family. But what, what Sega did turn him into ruined the framing of him. All right, that's fair. I don't wanna, I don't wanna shit on any of these important characters to you, you know, I don't wanna, I, I don't want to let DJ Mule shit on your character. And this is to paint the idea that they're pushing too far in their politics and they spend too much time online and don't really have much interaction in the outside real world. This couldn't be further from the truth and not just in most of the trans women that debate bros send for online, but Sophie in particular. She has literally two videos here of her going and speaking at trans rights protests. 
This is more activism than I've seen from literally any fucking debate, bro. So talking about bad- Okay, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, okay. It doesn't mean that she didn't lie. Just because she does activism doesn't mean she didn't lie about Xander Hall. It, is this really that hard to understand? I mean, he doesn't fucking give a shit. Faith, this is bad faith in its entirety. While Xander Hall is talking about this, his chat further adds to the narrative that These are super damning. Oh no, chat said that she sucks. None of these are, none of these are like, okay, calling somebody a psycho, all right, that's a little extreme. Psychotic, none of these are really that extreme. These aren't even, these aren't even the worst. Sophie is a- Maybe if it said like, maybe if there was like an R slur and an F slur in here, but like, these are nothing. And two of these are from the same person. So there's two from the same person. Monster calling her a and again also Zan didn't say these psycho amongst all the bad faith arguments. Who is this Sophie? It's not the Sophie I know. The one that I've spent literal days with, who loves and cares about her friends. She loves and cares about her comrades so much and is desperate to get people to change the horrific world that we live in. I certainly wouldn't call her a psycho. Just look at how easily his audience eats this shit up. And remember, this is an audience that has a huge overlap with Destiny and Borsh. And so this is the main point in the video where I want to show that Xanderhal really doesn't understand the meaning of the word ally. An ally is not someone who uses marginalized people in their community to win arguments or support their biases. It's really funny because in my video that I did on Vosh, I had so many people in my comments telling me that it's good and correct to criticize Blair White and Candace Owens. And no, for a start, if you're cis and white, it isn't your place to focus on those people. It isn't your place to Please. Please do. Your sis, have a go at Blair White. Don't be transphobic, but have a go at Blair White. Please. I would welcome every single last person in the battle against against Blair White, so long as you're not being pers like actually like you're not being unhinged. This is so this is so pathetic. This guy this guy's video essay fucking blows ass. Not only does it have no clear point. His points are all the fuck over the place. This is a demented ramble, uh, the likes of which, the with pettiness levels, the likes of which I don't think I've seen, uh, I don't know, since the last stream. I'll, I'm gonna be honest, I deal with a lot of petty people on this stream. To tell trans people and black people who best represent their community. Of course. Oh, I would love that. I really hope that he makes a video about how I'm, I'm the worst person next. That would be a lot of fun. I'm sure he'll be like, well, demon mama, Demon Mama is actually a bad trans. Those individuals mentioned are wrong about a lot of stuff. And it is an ally's duty to understand. Yeah, hey, 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 who, excuse me. You're, you're presumably a cis man. Maybe, um, maybe non-binary. Don't know a hundred percent. You can't tell, don't want to assume, but you, you know, you don't seem to be saying anything about that. Maybe it could be wrong, but why are you fucking speaking for me? It's not your place to criticize alleged transphobes like Xander Hall. Who are you? Who are you, my man? Who are you? That marginalized groups are not monoliths and that these people don't represent the communities as a whole. No, if you focus on that stuff instead of amplifying and signal boosting and supporting other creators who do that work, you are certainly not an ally. It is absolutely not for cis people to say that a certain trans woman who disagrees with you is unhinged and bad, and then use the example of impressionable people who are already predispositioned to support you in your community in order to say that they are wrong. Where's this overwhelming majority, Zan? Where are the figures? How many trans people are in your audience? And how many trans people support what Sophie has said here? Have you done the research? Have you done the polling? Of course you haven't, because you are the terminally online individual who simply uses queer people for content and- Remember, we're not- we are- we are not even a third through this video yet. Just remember, this guy right here, Soyface Johnson, fucking DJ Soyface over here, is telling you that- that Xander Hall is the one who's terminally online. Just, you know doesn't support let's us keep, in let's any keep it real, actual, okay? tangible way. And that's the fucking T. Check out what he says here at the end of him reading the tweets. 
Political boundaries are not the line by which you should judge the moral character of YouTubers and streamers in this space or any public figure. Yeah. Yes, Xanderhal. You are so right, dude. Xanderhal even says that someone's political beliefs could be a good indication of their moral values, which is pretty funny because he supports the Democrats unironically and they are constantly throwing marginalized people under the bus just like him. So later in the video, he says this. Uh, you will find... Four times out of ten, I'd say, that a content creator in your lane that you've discovered who you might want to collab with, become friends with, who you might even find enjoying their content and becoming sort of a fan of in a way, already hates you before you even know their name or before you even knew they exist. It's absolutely wild that he said that with no self-reflection on why this would be. But this guy has me blocked, even though to this date, we've not, to my knowledge, conflicted. So, maybe Zan, maybe Zan was on the bullseye here, just a little bit. Maybe the reason that people don't- Yeah, wait a minute! This guy's British! This fucker, this fucker's flying the fucking Applejack or whatever fucking bullshit you guys call your dumbass flag. He's fucking, he's trying to get his way into American politics? What the fuck is this shit? to work with you and that your reputation precedes you is because you're a fucking man child who throws his toys out of the pram every time a woman online disagrees with you why would anyone want to work with someone like that dude one of the main things to take away from this 13 minute video is that he talks about why so from this 13 minute video he says in an hour and a half long video this guy actually literally just critical failure on self-awareness I think I'm calling it now. This guy has like a piece of his brain that the part of your brain that allows you to self reflect this guy, it's gone. It's obliterated. It's crusty. It's turned into stone. It's calcified. I don't know. I'm trying to make a joke about a 13 minute video being long when you do a, a, an hour and a half video where you're making funny voices about that guy's chat. Oh my God. This is so fucking funny. Opie is bad for a grand total of two minutes and a couple of seconds, give or take. In those two minutes, it's mainly hyperbole and ad hominem attacks. He doesn't deep dive into any of Sophie's content or any of her tweets. He just rambles about how she's a terrible person. Xanderhal also uses a sanest term here in the beginning of his video. The word in itself is widely regarded as a word that should never be used in any context. It's the shortening of schizophrenic. On the point of sanism, Xanderhal seems to really focus on the fact that anyone who disagrees with him has mental issues. Now, as an ADHD, OCD, and anxiety-having boy and big advocate for mental health awareness, what I like to try and remind people as often as I can is that pretty much everybody has mental health issues. It's kind of- Wait a minute. Hasn't this guy called Xanderhal's fans insane and unhinged multiple times in this video? Am I wrong? Okay, everybody. If you catch this guy, if you catch this guy saying crazy, insane, stupid, or idiot in this video, tell me, okay? Fucking call it out. I can't confirm. I'm not going to go back and comb back through. But if that word shows up at all in the next hour, tell me, because we're going to roast him immediately. Yeah, here, I can link you the video. Here you go. Go check it out. There you go. Like, I agree that the term schizo post is a little problematic. But as you guys know about me, I talk about this shit pretty frequently. I really don't care all that much about, uh, like, language policing people, about calling people crazy or saying that's crazy or that's insane. I don't really care about that all that much. I don't think it's very impactful. What I do care about is arguments that uh, arguments and policy uh, and like policy propositions that would harm people based on discrimination. Um, but you know, people like this guy uh, really, really love to be able to trot out, uh, despite the fact that I'm very sure I've heard this guy use sanest language uh, in this video. Of course, he's going to try and add that to the cancellation pile. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Stinky. This is from this year. Uh oh. Stinky. Ukrainian flag in bio moment. Every single one of these nerds is insane. 
Oh no! Oh no! Oh my man! Oh, it sucks to suck. Looks like we got sanism on display here, my man. Part and parcel of living under capitalism. So this scapegoat is kind of one that you could use for just about anybody if you do like a minute or two of digging into their content or social media posts. Also, this big thing where he- Yeah, sorry, hold on guys. It's okay, now that we've busted him on using sanest language- Hold on, There's a, this is what's gonna- this is what we're gonna see, okay? Hold on. Hold on. Where is this fucking video? God damn it, I'm never gonna be able to find it, am I? Never mind. Ah, uh, I can't find it. Where the fuck is the video? I was looking for the video of the amazing atheist whipping himself and saying, I'm sorry for being white! I'm sorry! Whatever. He Couldn't implies find that it. people with it's mental gone. issues need validation from the internet, from fake internet points, is a huge sweeping statement that misses a lot of important things to remember. Namely, that not everybody with bad mental health issues is actually on the internet. This paints a pretty bad picture of people like me who suffer from- Yes! Here we go. Never mind. Thank you, chat. Thank you. This is- this is DJ Mule after we call him out on his sanism. Sorry, Fucking true! In disabilities are neurodivergent and or suffered from structural sanism and or ableism. The important thing to remember about this is that Sophie, a trans woman, received a relentless amount of harassment, not just from Xander Hall's community, but from debate bro communities as a whole, just for this thread. This two minutes of hyperbole and conjecture have resulted in some of the worst harassment that my friend has ever seen. And if you know about the effects my that online harassment that has I on people, the then up. you don't need me to tell you just how bad that was for Sophie. It actually makes me sick just how easy these nerds could turn their communities against marginalized people who disagree with them. And listen, it doesn't matter if you have disclaimers in your video or in your description saying, please don't harass them, please don't harass them, that's not what I want. Because the very nature of drama content and debate culture on the internet has already primed people to behave in that way anyway. So I want to go- You're making a drama video! Oh hey, look at this, how fitting. Fucking true. Go back to the comment section again here. Just to bring this up. She works with Bad Bunny. That's all you need to know. So his community here are implying that Sophie's relation to Kira Chats, old name Bad Bunny, and another of my good friends, is another reason for steering clear of her? But what ex Oh, he also jumped in on the calling Chud Logic a groomer thing? Ah, what a surprise that he jumped the gun on that one, too. That's, by the way, this is not even what happened. That was like yesterday? Oh my god. This guy's pathetic. This guy's fucking pathetic. <sighs> exactly his Kara done. Okay, so the Kira chat situation is a little bit different to this. Yeah, it's funny too because there's actual things you could be criticizing Chud Logic for right now instead of made up bullshit. Soapy situation. And while I don't want to say that one form of harassment is worse than the other with this, I do want to point out that my friend Kira has had outright misogynist harassment directed towards her from huge YouTube channels such as Penguin Zo, aka Critical, the H3H3 podcast, and pretty much every single debate bro you can think of since 2020 and a little bit earlier, I think. I've been in. Okay. 
Uh, Kira's Twitch community for a good few years now, and of course she is one of my co-hosts on Red Planet. The main issue that these huge YouTubers had with Kira is this clip that I'm sure some of you even recognize. How did my whole speech about how I need subs and to keep the stream going if you like the content, blah, 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 how that results in zero subs? There are regulars here. Five dollars a month! Now, as most people in Kira's community know, this attitude that she has is a stream persona. She's got one of the nicest, most. It's also, it's also, uh, ironically, he's doing the out of context thing. It's really funny that in a video in which he gets mad that people say it's out of context and he says it's weird that it only happens to debate bros, he's talking about a time in which Kira Chats was taken out of context. The whole problem with that is that people didn't understand that it was a bit, that it's a bit that, that Bad Bunny, aka Kira Chats, does all the time. Like, he just got done ten, less than 10 minutes ago talking about how, oh, how weird it is that, that it only ever, it, oh, people only get pulled out of context when they're debate bros. Seems a bit weird, doesn't it? And now he's talking about a time when Kira Chats was wrongfully pulled out of context. Oh, I'm not going to touch that one, but I know we're probably going to get into it. Uh, yeah, I understand, Gayfesh, and I under and I agree that there are lines there, but I'm not going to, I'm hopefully we're not going to have to do this. Understanding communities that I've ever been a part of on Twitch, and she really does a lot. No, but okay, but unironically, the five dollars a month thing is a bit. It's a thing that it's a thing that 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 Bad Bunny has done for a long time. Sorry, it's just true. The five dollars a month, the like I suit like semi-ironic fin doming. I do jokes like that. It would be really easy. Watch, I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. The fact that right now there are 400 fucking people watching and I'm keeping you entertained listening to this fun fucking yokel jabber on about the most irrelevant bullshit and I'm not getting fucking paid like uh, $5 a fucking uh, a fucking hour or, or at least for this. I don't even know what I'm making right now. Who knows? I could get to the end of this stream and have 10 fucking dollars in my bank account because you motherfuckers won't cough up five fucking dollars a month. That's what a subscription is. Five fucking dollars, you in greats i'm sitting here fucking entertaining nearly 400 of you and i can't get fucking five dollars you fucking little pigs oink you little pigs oink get down and throw subs at me you little fucking pigs let's continue a lot of amazing content and shines oh, a light on hey, it worked yo thanks reza sutra you're a good little piggy there you go Issues that are woefully underrepresented in the online leftist Twitch space. Yo, it double worked, Harper. Look, thank you. You're very yo. Look, I forgive you. Now that you've now that you've paid, uh, you're there. You go, there you go. Now you can. My community is filled with bottoms. I know. There hasn't been a mod night in a while. I do need to do a mod night in a while. You're right. It has been a while. Anyway, let's continue, huh? Let's fucking continue. For example, at the moment, we recently, she's right. been going hard on the Israeli genocide of Palestinians. But for some reason, men on Twitch.television and YouTube.com cannot stand to see a woman doing political content. Yo, and just Banjo Kabubi, thank you very much. Unironically, uh, while I was joking by calling you all pigs um, and saying oink like the piggies you are, I unironically appreciate your support. So thank you very much. This is a 100% viewer supported show after all. So your likes, comments, subscriptions, and website subscriptions for $5 a month are indeed very helpful. Absolutely need to make- Yo, thank you, Bitewise Marissa. Thank you fucking so much. Virtual girl, I blame Demon Mama for force fe feminizing me into a bottom. You're welcome. I have that effect on a lot of people as it turns out, you know? I have a very powerful presence, so some people just kind of spontaneously turn into bottoms around me. What's more scary is some of them turn into subs, which is a little more, uh, you know, extreme. Let's continue. A takedown video of her because she is just so bad. 
If Bad Bunny doesn't have a negative opinion about you, you're not doing enough for progress. Bit of a fucking telling name there, terminally online leftist. <laughs> just implying that if she doesn't like you, you're a good person. I wouldn't go- Wait, so he's just going after comments again. Go after her for being a clout chaser. All YouTubers and Twitch streamers do this to an extent. The difference is that Bad Bunny has absolutely no principles or ideology other than what her gay clout found on tonight. Hmm, I have no idea who she is, because I really don't care. Palminator, thank you very, very much for the tier one sub. Deeply appreciate that. About her, but this behavior reminds me of the quote-unquote inclusive Karens that love the sound of their own voices way too much at retail. I just met one today, and she was ranting about boots not being inclusive for thick people, which I agreed, and tried to lecture me about shoe size differences for men and women. I just phased out from there. Afterwards, she left 20 pairs of shoes lying all over the floor for me to pick up and resort after. After she dumped her spiel. That's the kind of energy I'm- Actually, it says spiel. Uh, there's been a mistake. You've made a, ser a terrible, uh, terrible, terrible mistake. Um, that is not spiel. That is spiel. This is a spiel. Okay? This is a spiel. Alright? That is what was being referred to. I'm getting right now. Thank you, Barbara Worst Woman. Are you trying to say, like, Wamans? You know, like anti-SJWs do with your name? I don't know, what's going on there? So, the comments here are positioning her as a clout-chasing woman who simply does things for money. The pettiness. This video is an hour and a half of pure pettiness. And not because she has any actual moral standpoints or ideology at all. So, it's also worth mentioning that Kira, just like Xan- Okay, honestly, it's really funny. If, besides reading these in a funny voice, he says this video is about defending his friends, but the last 20 minutes of runtime has been him reading off owns at his friends. I don't know if that's really doing a good job. Even if you add a funny voice to it, like just reading off a bunch of insulting comments, roasting the fuck out of your friends is really not like the move. Kandahal had a bit of a chud phase. One that she's actually really open about and references regularly even on her stream today. Which is good to see because when people are unlearning a lot of the stuff they learn in formative years regarding politics and people's civil rights, they can often forget that it was incredibly easy to fall down the rabbit hole of alt-right opinions. Something that Xanderhol should be incredibly familiar with, no? Considering- We got a tanky bingo card? Alright, let's look at the tanky bingo card. Hold on, here, I'm gonna bring this one up. We'll- we'll do tanky bingo. Let's find out- let's find out if DJ Mule meets tanky bingo. Okay, hold on a second. I'll do it. We'll do it live, okay? We're gonna do it. We're gonna open this. Hold on. We gotta we gotta be able to draw on it. Here we go. Open it up in GIMP. Alright. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do this thing. All right? Ah, okay, here we go. So we need a little we need a little blue marker. Alright, here's tanky bingo, everybody. So we got Marxism Leninism. Oh, quotes Lenin. We got that one. Bam. We got the Z. And the reason why we got the Z is because, uh, is because, as you all know, uh, earlier we looked at a tweet in which, uh, he was like, all, all Ukrainian flag people are mentally ill. So we're gonna call that, a, we're gonna call that there. We got a hates debate bros. Okay. We got Bernie or bust. We got vouch bad for sure. Let's see. We did get lib. We got multiple libs. We got platforming. We did get the revolution. We did get vine boom sound. We did get material conditions. Oh! We haven't gotten Marxism Leninism yet. We haven't gotten nation. We haven't gotten read theory. We haven't gotten most of these. So we gotta wait and see. We're close, but we're not quite there. I don't think we got comrade, I don't think. Did we get colonizer? We didn't get mutual aid. Wait, did we get mutual aid? Which one did we get mutual aid? We did get mutual aid. He did say comrade. Okay, hold on. Oh, we got read theory. Okay, we did get read theory. 
Okay, you all right, I'll trust you that he said comrade, all right? Okay, he did say mutual aid. Oh shit, we're getting close here. If we get if we got colonizer, we got a double kill. We didn't get forced to vote. They said comrade at 3402. All right. What about colonizer? Did we get colonizer? His podcast is called Red Planet. Wait, is that actually true? Hold on, let's find out. No. I can't, I can't confirm that. Can't confirm this one. It is. I think we did get colonizer. He said imperialist and colonizer. Oh my god. All right, colonizer. Oh my fucking god, we got a double kill. Because this is the free space. We got a fucking double kill. We might even get a triple kill by the end. Jesus, that's sad. All right, let's continue. Let's fucking continue, everybody. We'll come back mm. to it if we catch another one. This. Remember, everyone, listen for the sanism. If we catch him on sanism, that's important. He also said in his last video, we on Soviet, oh yeah, we gotta put Hunter the red on Adelone, there. Who is a former right-wing Nazi white supremacist conservative, is an example of someone whose politics were bad, but is a good person. But apparently, that grace is not extended to Kira Chats. Wonder why. He goes on to say that he found out that he was banned in Kira Chat's stream and then says, Now, would you guys like to guess what exactly got me banned and blocked by uh, Bad Bunny here? Now, it's not because uh, of any, um, I'm, I'm not like trans or gay or anything like that or bi, so it's not because of her bigotry. So I, I will let you guys know it is not because I am part of any marginalized groups that uh, Bad Bunny has um, a bigotry towards. <laughs> well, I see what you've done there, Xander Hall. You have made a loaded <laughs> statement. You presented our friend Kira as a bigot without actually providing any evidence that she is a bigot now and that that is a reason that she would ban you from her community okay. now or that but but to be fair dude that's all you've done this entire video that's literally all you've done this entire video you haven't provided any almost any evidence of any of the statements even when you provided clips you dubbed over the audio you don't really get to point fingers on this even when she was a big again the guy this guy is fucking somewhere in here somewhere the self-awareness center of the brain has been severely damaged any way that she would like ban you for being bisexual or trans he then talks about how she had a bit of banter with him when he went into a stream one day and she asked him what he was up to today and when he said he would be streaming later she popped off at him now it kind of sounds to me like she was having a bit of banter with him considering that a lot of streamers think that that is self-promo it literally sounds to me like the kind of joke that me and Kira would share if I went into her chat nowadays. But apparently this was just like lost on Xander Hall. He just like doesn't understand what like having a bit of a laugh is. So just to explain like why Kira might have made a joke about this. There is a certain sect of Twitter where streamers absolutely pop off about the fact that even saying that you are a streamer or mentioning that you might stream at all in another streamer's chat is the worst thing that you could possibly do and you oh by the way uh this this the people who buy into this thing are just stupid losers it is it is like absolutely it is like absolutely normal to mention your stream Obviously, there's lines. Obviously, you can go too far. But, um, but like, saying, like, hey, I'm a streamer, this is what I do, is literally normal. And if you freak out about that kind of thing, you're a maladjusted, you have some sort of social maladjustment. You deserve to be banned from the community for doing that. It's absolutely ridiculous. I have so much to say about streamers who just don't like self promo. 
but that's for another fucking time. In all honesty, I think that this was a bit of banter in an attempt to make friends with Xanderhol, who she clearly had heard about previously and knew was a streamer. Well, that's then nice our man Zan says that she them, started you know. ignoring his messages. Now, listen, Kira's chat goes at a million miles an hour, compared to me anyway, uh, and I find it hard to read all the messages in my chat, and I've only got like a half. Okay, but again, what does any of this matter? I'm just confused. I'm really confused. What are we talking about here? We're talking about why Xander Hall and Kira Chats don't get along, and because they don't get along, that's somehow problematic? Or even a third of what Kira's chat and viewership has been at some points. So that's that explained. He then says that when he realizes that he was blocked by her on Twitter, he went to her stream to ask her while she was live about why he was blocked. Okay, that is, that is, a, that is a bad move on Zan's part. If somebody blocks you, just fucking live with it. Don't fucking go. Don't fucking go after them. It's yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a cringe move on Zan's part. I'll give I'll give you this one, DJ Mule. It is cringe to go do that. It's on Twitter, but I don't understand what this has to do with anything. The Twitch chat too. After which, someone told him that she tweeted that she knew that Xander Hall was a creepy debate bro weirdo. And of course, personally, I think that's an absolutely fine reason to ban anybody from your community. Now, what's really fucking frustrating here is that Xander Hall again does no self reflection here and turns to the attack on Kira. Well, he'd already begun the attack at the start of the video, but he then goes hard and brings up her past alt right opinions and even brings up some screenshots that are fairly popular amongst people who like to harass her where she's said slurs in Discord channels. And all he really by the way, um, okay, just so you all know, now that this is going to be addressed, some of Bad Bunny's logs are pretty fucking bad, okay? Some of them, there are fake ones and there are real ones, so be very careful because some of them are fake and some of them are real, but some of them are pretty fucking bad. And also, uh... Uh, Kira Chats, aka Bad Bunny, is also what also does have a clip out there that's pretty fucking racist and very biphobic. That said, all of that said, I'm pretty consistent on this. Bad Bunny is acknowledges these things and regularly uh, states those were things that I didn't that I don't I no longer agree with they were mistakes I'm sorry for them and I've moved on and grown a lot which I think people should be allowed to do uh you know uh you know people's uh like the the things that people have to do to rebuild trust should match the crime if you said something bad in a discord chat you know maybe you should have to reflect on your discord stuff and you know apologize for it and take the hit on the chin but I don't know. Some people act like some people bring these things up in bad faith, and I get the feeling that Zan probably did bring these up in bad faith. But yes, also he is he did condemn Vosh for the N-word thing, even though Vosh did not say it directed to anyone, and Bad Bunny did. So let's just be let's just be clear about this. And both of them did apologize, but DJ Mule just doesn't care that Vosh apologized because Vosh isn't his pr isn't his friend. This is very, it's very inconsistent. It's a, a huge double, a, a huge double standard. Popular amongst people who like to harass her, where she's said slurs in Discord channels. And all he really does here is just say that she's like a clout chaser and a bigot. And he also talks about how he's got like so much evidence that she's like a grifter and a bigot. But this is all stuff that she's done in the past, dude. And it's all stuff that she's apologized for and has done so much work to unlearn and try and make amends for the bad that she did to people that nothing really stands up regarding that. Like, you don't really have that much evidence that she is a bad person now. You're just pissed off that your reputation in how you're a harmful bastard preceded you once again, and it prevented you from networking with someone who is actually a really cool content creator. And if you want to talk about how people have got evidence that someone- Damn. Talk about lacking in self-awareness, my man. Talk about fucking lacking in self-awareness. You're going all the way out here for Bad Bunny, for Kira Chats, and your fundamental critiques of Xander Hall are things that he did years ago. Your main, the main bulk of this video before you started roasting his comments or whatever, 
uh, was you talking about a video he did when he first started his streaming career. This guy is so bad at this. This video is so trash. And by the way, like I said, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care. Both Vosh, or all three, Vosh, Xanderhal, and Bad Bunny have apologized for some of the shit that they've done that was wrong in the past. So, to me, they all seem like they're trying to do their best. I don't think any, any of these three people are, like, actively bigots. One ...is a grifter and a clout-chasing piece of shit. Well, I mean, you're watching this video, right? This video in which I wrote 15,000 words about you doing exactly that. But nah, he spends like 10 minutes talking about how she had harmful opinions in the past and does nothing to talk about. Yeah, Xander Hall and Vosh do completely different streams at this point. Like, that, that's been the case for a long time. But again, these people don't give a shit. This guy is just like, just steeped in toxic masculinity. He thinks he can beat up the little, you know, the younger guy on the internet because, you know, his... His weird friends have an extremely fucked up fixation on Xander Hall, a extremely unhealthy parasocial fixation on Xander Hall for no reason, mind you. Even, guys, remember, I recognize that interpersonal disagreements happen. Sometimes people don't vibe well. Sometimes people really don't vibe well and don't like each other. But these guys fucking constantly talk about Xander Hall. And I, and I mean quite frequently. I mean, we're watching a, a fucking hour and a half video about Xander Hall because Xander Hall said something two months ago in one of his 50 videos about someone lying about him. It's just, it's just, I get it. Like, you, you have beefs with people, but this guy's just mad that anyone else has beefs with his friends. And he's not doing a good job defending his friends. In fact, he's making his friends look worse. The fact that she's left all that behind and realized how bad it was. He just skips a bunch of so-called evidence because there's too much of it. Bro. Bro. Look at the length of this video. You clearly don't care about this as much as you're saying you do. Again, the point he tries to... My source is that I made it the fuck up. Again, talking over the clips, not letting us hear what Zan actually said, just talking over video clips. To make here is that when people have had bad opinions in the past you need to hold them to account forever despite his love of hunter avalone and other right wingers who have denounced their alt-right past even though the time period in which these people turned around was more recent than kira host lumi I don't want my viewers going to streams that are supporting Vosh and 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 Destiny and the like. Yeah, that wasn't a creep husker. That was someone that was trying to be harassing. You just ban them next time. Or I can just do it. Chat, it's really uncomfortable for me for you to ask me to rate people that uh, that are actively engaging in the debate bro life, the debate bro scene, especially when my title is my title. Like this lack of awareness that some of you have, it's actually really care about this. I'm gonna be completely honest. That sounds really petty, and I don't give a shit. Herself. Like, whatever. Like, fucking whatever. He then plays an old clip in which Kira says she would not have sex with or date a bisexual guy, which is so- I think it's incredibly petty to not fucking raid somebody because they like somebody that you don't like. I think that's petty, but whatever. It's Bad Bunny stream. Bad Bunny can raid whoever the fuck she wants. I, I don't know. I don't care. One thing I, as a bisexual man, am very- uh, Yeah, it is cringe to say I don't support the debate bro lifestyle. That makes me- that makes me cringe, but I just don't give a shit. I have I have no energy. Be familiar shit. with as an opinion. If a guy is like having sex with other guys, and then he's like, "Oh, maybe I'll try having sex with you," I'm like, "Uh." <laughs>
Now, of course, the way that Kira says it here is problematic for many reasons, but again, we're missing the point that this is something she said in the past and wouldn't dream of saying this nowadays because she You open this video with 20 minutes from a video that Xander Hall made like fucking four years ago or something understands the harm it would cause and as a bi guy i just want to say for anyone listening here if this is something that you think fine i don't want to fuck or date someone who has an opinion like this anyway and i'm not going to lose sleep about people having opinions like this when i know that there are plenty of people who want to fuck me or date me but if you change your mind about that and realize why you said those things were bad then of course i'm ready and willing to forgive you this is a very popular opinion that people have about m-spec men it's a common thing and people are going to have this opinion because they've been conditioned to by the hierarchies of homophobia and the nuclear family that are imposed on us it's not right and it needs to change and there's a lot of work that needs to be done to do that but in the grand scheme of things in terms of evidence you could use against kira to point out that she's a hateful person this is a reach i also want to point out that someone in xander hall's chat here uses the command clip chimp and Zan's chatbot responds with an emote and a cheeky little photographer, Zan, with the word clippers. Now, in Twitch lingo, these are phrases that imply someone needs to clip this content out of context and post it to r slash livestream fails on Reddit, thus instigating harassment to- Uh-oh. Hold on a second, everybody. One minute. Give me a second. We are right back to where we were, all right? Shh. No power surge, no nothing. Okay? We're back. We're back. Yeah. I mean, we were always here. Someone point out that somebody hey! That's not right. Hold on a second. Sorry. I gotta stop yelling now. I gotta take a breather. Hold on. All right, we're good. All right, we're good now. DJ Mule called it a favor with the CIA. Yeah, right. It was more like uh, my battery or my my shitty wiring in this old house had a surge. No one's that powerful. And I, by that, I mean nothing happened. Let's continue. Paul's chat here uses the command clip chimp. And Zan's chatbot responds with an emote and a cheeky little photographer, Zan, with the word clippers. Now, in Twitch lingo, these are phrases that imply someone needs to clip this content out of context and post it to r slash livestream fails on Reddit, thus instigating harassment towards that person, either on Twitter or on their Twitch channel themselves. No, no, it does not, dude. This is, you're doing the Pepe the Frog thing. You're doing the thing. Oh, I hate, this is so cringe. No, clip, clip just means, yes, it does mean you're gonna get clipped. It does mean this is a clip. It does not mean, it does not mean anything to do with live stream fails. That is like, that is like the most boomer understanding of what, what clipping and clip chipping is. It has nothing to do with live stream fails anymore. That is so fucking ancient. That is like so out of date. It's, 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 I, I'm sure it meant that at one point. But holy fuck. Yeah, also, yes, thank you, Mixed Dizzy. He also said it was the fault of the vape bros that they get clipped, and now he's making the opposite argument. God, this is so stupid. And you better believe this is something that Kira got harassed for. Albeit, it was a drop in the ocean of the regular harassment that she receives, but that is no excuse. Zan also, for some reason here, says that he doesn't want to come across as defending Bad Bunny, despite the fact that at the start of the video, he said this. So Bad Bunny, uh, I learned about her mostly because of the Destiny drama, and I wasn't entirely convinced by the reasons that Destiny gave for why we ought to dislike Bad Bunny. Like, it just didn't come off to me as entirely, um, like, that like valid for everybody just all of a sudden decide bad bunny's a piece of shit and just disregard her and refuse to engage with her or anything like that or be friends with her just because destiny said hey wait this is a clip wait a minute the he can do it we've proven that dj mule can actually include a clip we know he can now what's the excuse before my friend frog whisperer thank you so much Gifts for the faithful. Thank you so much, Frog Whisperer. Genuinely. Thank you so much. You are poggers. As she's mean or whatever, like, it just didn't sit well with me. If you value logic and reason, and that's a thing that debate bros love to talk about, then why wouldn't you take someone's good points along with the bad? Such as what I'm trying to do in this video. But check this out. Now, a lot of people 
over the years yes, it is. had criticism of Bad Bunny have said more or less the exact exact same thing. And I'll admit that I made a counter argument to this, along with people who would defend Bad Bunny, that uh, people who have this opinion are probably just being biased by the fact that she's a woman, and that when a woman engages in this type of humor, it comes off as being bitchy or rude or as narcissistic or whatever. But when men do it, it comes off as 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 uh, suave or like, oh, what a he's kind of a douchebag, but he's funny about it, so it's okay because he's a guy. He's literally correct here. So why does he go back on it? I'll tell you why he goes back on it and calls her mean, because that is what his entire channel is all about. Drama, clout, revenge, and grift content. And I can say with 10,000% certainty that Kira is not this evil, mean monster that Zan is making her out to be. I've been in hours and hours of Discord calls with her, personal calls, meetings, DM. Okay. I don't care. M's, and she is one of the sweetest, most lovely people that you could ever meet. This is a character assassination video, and it is inexcusable. Exactly the same as the one he made about Sophie. Exactly the same you're making right now, dude. But your yours is an hour long and full of blatant lies. It's also absolutely ridiculous that he rambles on about Kira just being close to people for clout as well, because he is absolutely close to Vorsh and Destiny for clout too. Like, come on, man. This is all projection and we can see it a mile off. I also want to make a big point here that Kira's harassment has been so intense that she has lost a lot of her viewers on Twitch and YouTube. Despite the constant barrage of harassment that she gets doing her job on a daily no, hourly basis. She has been steadfast in her left-wing opinions, and she is always doing her best to unlearn the harmful yeah, behaviors that she has. Yeah, I know. Uh, Sam Deman, as Sam Deman accurately brings up, Xander Hall was friends with Vosh before Vosh even got big. Like, they, Zan and Vosh go, ba go way back. ...in the past, and she does all this despite the drop-in clout that she is supposedly farming from having pretend opinions on the internet. I mean, come on, people. You can clearly see that this is absurd and has no basis in reality. It is simply the systematic destruction of a woman on the internet simply because she chose to be outspoken and make political content. Seriously. Dude, okay. You're pushing it here. I will agree that a lot a lot of the shit. In fact, I would even go so far as saying the majority of shit that goes Bad Bunny's way um, is is just out of just fucking derangement. It's just it's just out of people being uh, having woman woman derangement syndrome. I will agree with you that a lot of it is. But you're talking about very specific things that made people mad, things that you would that you have in this video not excused other co uh, content creators for doing. Things that are worse than what other content creators you're cr critiquing in this video have done. I just think this is a bullshit point. It's fitting that his background is a landfill. You know, I was going to make that joke a while ago, but it felt like low-hanging fruit. But, you know, yeah. Seriously, if you're watching this and you have any empathy or sympathy for Kira's position at all, please go and show us some love. You won't regret it. She is more than worthy of your time. So there's a little rule of three that I'm trying to bring into my content here, and I'm going to try and stick to that going forward. So I'm going to finish this video with a third and final, and perhaps one of the worst character assassinations that Xander Hall has done on his channel. And that is of his ex, Lani. All right, everybody, this is about to get really fucking sus. Strap in, folks. I might get I might get a little mean here, okay? Here we go. Oh boy, this is a lot. Strap in, everybody.
Lani, aka Pastel Leftist, was Xanderhal's partner for two and a half years, according to the twit longer she posted about him in July of this year. She describes how one day, a few weeks before the time of the twit longer, he dumped her via text for apparently lying, stealing, and cheating on him, which is already extremely shitty behavior. Lani says all of this is completely untrue and has no idea where he. Yeah, this guy, this guy is about to simp for Lani. By the way, just so you guys know, I can say this. This is I. I will put. Okay. I, I can put my own reputation on this, okay? I have seen, I have seen with my own eyes the transactions of, of Lonnie stealing from Xander Hall, okay? I have seen those transactions with my own eyes. So, in order for those to be false, Xander Hall would have to have literally fabricated them completely, and I do not believe he did that. I do not believe that he took the time to fabricate thousands of transactions that were hidden from him because a lot of money was stolen from Xander Hall. I want you to understand that Xander Hall has had literally tens of thousands of dollars stolen from him by his ex. Lonnie fucking stole a crazy amount of money from Xander Hall, okay? Like a crazy amount of money. I'm talking life ruining amounts of money, okay? So what you're about to see here is a guy who is not extremely stupid, extremely manipulative, and very bad at making arguments now go on to defend an abuser just because he thinks it's an own on Xander Hall. Lonnie made both of them homeless. Xander Hall has had to- Xander Hall also lost his place, just so that you're aware, before any of this shit happens. Z Lonnie stole so much money that they both were out on rent. As in, yeah, so this is- this is gonna be a load of fucking bullshit right now. Yes, it would require- it would- in order for him to have faked the evidence of Lonnie stealing shit from him, um, it would- it would take- it would- it would require him to be willing to pull an unbelievable con, and I don't believe it. I don't buy it. Simple- simple as, I don't buy it. Zan was fucking stolen from, Zan was abused, and Zan was mistreated. <laughs> Severely so. One of the worst cases I've seen. And now we're gonna see this fucking pathetic, uh, wrinkled-dicked, fucking uh, toxically toxically male woke scold piece of shit go and defend Xander Hall's fucking abuser got all this stuff from but thinks it might be because a car was broken into one time and all that the people who stole stuff left was his debit card which she already had permission to use to buy groceries and stuff like that Lani also wouldn't wouldn't faking that evidence require multiple federal felonies to be committed yes it would require multiple federal fel felonies to be committed and it would require him to either painstakingly fake thousands of transactions uh that he could show from his paypal or code a new website that looks identical to paypal also has a, uh, a an encrypted login just like paypal yeah it's fucking bullshit Xander Hall got taken advantage by an older woman who stole a lot of money from him. Okay? That's the if that is the ups and downs of it. Also goes on to say that Xander Hall has refused to talk to him about any of this and claims that she was a master manipulator. Also implying that she sold all the stuff that was stolen from her car for drugs. He demanded that she come home from work and pack all of her stuff, including her 13 year old cat, into her Ford Focus and leave immediately. Which is of course an absurd thing to ask someone on such short notice. Actually, it's not absurd to ask somebody who you find out has been stealing from you for years and has been using you and has been lying to you to leave your place. That is not, no, that is not an absurd thing to ask someone. Actually, it's an incredibly rational thing to ask somebody to stop living, to, to no longer share space with you after you find out that they stole a, a year's worth of income from you. That you, especially when you're a, a fucking young guy in a precarious position. This guy is a, DJ Mule is a fucking piece of shit. 100% fucking piece of shit. And remember, all of this is in a video where he's trying to make fun of Xander Hall for being terminally online, but this stupid fucking ugly bearded motherfucking cue ball asshole 
has been sitting here for an hour and a half making up bullshit about Xander Hall just so that he can get to the end and do fucking abuse apologia. Fuck this guy. I hope this guy fucking chokes on his beard. She had to move out and couch surf and sleep in her car for a few weeks before she could finally go home. When she realized her room had been trashed and Xander Hall had left with her cat to go and live back at his mom's house. Does that happen? I don't know. I, I get the feeling this guy like huffs his own farts. So I get the feeling that like while he's bent over and shoving his nose up his own asshole, that his beard might get in the way sometimes. So I'm just hoping one time he breathes in and it gives him a nice little, you know, maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll brown nose himself a little bit. So she moved back into their old apartment and was obviously trying to deal with this sudden shakeup in her life, her happiness, her security. After she stole hundred, after she stole tens of thousands of dollars from this guy. And you're playing, you're acting like it's poor little her. Fuck you, dude. Straight up, fuck you, man. Purity, when Zan the man shows up without her cat and told her he was ending the tenancy on the apartment and she needed to move out and be gone the next day. Lani unfortunately was arrested while she was trying to find somewhere to live as unfortunately she couldn't afford to pay the upkeep on the tags, which is vehicle registration for non-US viewers, on her car. And one of her friends had drugs on him when the cops pulled them up and she had to spend five days in a cell. When she made a phone call, she found out Damn. that Xander Hall and his mom had completely- Damn, sucks to, sucks to be a, sucks to be a, a abuser and thief who, uh, who fleeces a, a, a young guy for his hard-earned YouTube money uh, and then gets busted driving around be with meth paraphernalia in the car. Damn, sucks to be you. Really fucking sucks for you. It really fucking sucks to steal a bunch of money and live the high life off your boyfriend's hard work while you fucking sit around and do nothing and lie to everybody completely blocked her or were ignoring her calls. And when she got out of prison and someone managed to take her home, she found out that the locks had been changed and she had no- Also, yes, as Mr. Slass brings up, it wasn't just a friend she was with, she was cheating on Zan with that guy. No way to get into the apartment. This meant that she was homeless and had none of her belongings. So let's recap real quick. A two and a half year relationship, the guy ends it out of nowhere via text, I didn't even know that detail. Before that, Lonnie had hid the overdue rent bill flyers that were put on their door for months before they got evicted. Oh, by the way, Striped Kidder says, I feel like what's happening is that people are mad at Zan for outing her addiction, but as far as I can recall, he did that to explain where the money was going, not to villainize her. I will, I will say, I criticized Zan. I said this to Zan. I said this to Zan himself. I said that I think that he went a little far with some of his comments about addiction. But is that really what we're gonna, are we really gonna fucking get mad at him about making some off, off color, poor taste addiction jokes after his um, ex just fucking fleeced him for tens of thousands of dollars by abusing their trust? By abusing his trust in his partner? No, I'm not gonna. I don't, I'm sorry. I do think it's, I do think that it was in poor taste some of the jokes that he made, but I do not give a fucking shit. You're not going to fucking, you're not going to sit here and tell me that him making a couple of uh, of jokes in poor taste after he finds out his partner has been fucking stealing money from him, embezzling money and hiding it from him, hiding their eviction notices, fucking him financially, fucking him socially, fucking his credit score when he's a young guy. And you're going to tell me that I'm supposed to be mad at him for making a couple of off color jokes. Now, nah, fuck you. Go, just fucking, just fucking shove your head up your ass. Claiming that she's doing drugs and stealing from him literally makes her homeless. And what does he have to say for himself? He posted the receipts. He posted the receipts. The dude posted everything. He fucking proved it. You're a piece of shit. DJ Mule, I, I'm just, I'm going to go there. Total piece of shit. I have, n I, I see, given this entire video, I see zero reason why anybody should treat this guy with any sort of fucking good faith. Just a total fraud. First things first, gang. I just- And yes, by the way, hold on. I can say something here, all right? I can say this, okay? Hold on. I can say this, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this uh, because I have the ability to do this. Uh, Frog Whisperer says that he didn't want it to be public. Lonnie forced his hand. I can confirm this because guess what, guys? I knew about this. I knew about this happening before any of you did.
Yeah, that's right. Remember how at the beginning of the video I said that me and Zan work, are working on a show together that's been on hold because of all this shit that went down? So we haven't been able to make the podcast because he's been trying to figure out a housing situation? Remember that? I found out about this because he told me. Way before anybody else did. And he did. He really, really, really tried to keep it private and get the money back in private. But Lonnie was the one who took it public because after after he refused to let her continue to steal from him, she took it public hoping that he would get canceled. And people like DJ Mule, little stupid fucking Goomba thumb assholes, sit here fucking being the minions of the, of the woke scolds on Twitter fucking asshole dickwads like this who go in with their fucking dick fucking prematurely ejaculating over everything they see because it's like oh oh i get to own i get to own xander hall oh shut the fuck up what a stupid cunt i told you i was gonna get fucking pissed at this i didn't even know i i only assumed I made a gamble when I watched this video that he was gonna bring up and lie about this shit. I, I, I vow to you, I did not pre-watch this. I had no fucking clue for sure that he was gonna do this. I just took a gamble based on what types of videos this guy's made in the past. I just wanna say that making content about your breakup is an extremely ghoulish thing to do. Okay, like making a tweet, going off on a Facebook post or even an Instagram story is kind of a normal human thing to do. But a 50 minute YouTube video, not just a 50, a 50 minute YouTube video detailing the evidence of how his ex abused, manipulated, lied and stole from him. You stupid, unthinking, Rock-brained cunt. 50 minute YouTube video, a 50 minute YouTube video where he is trying to say that he made her homeless for a good reason and that she had tried to frame him and that he was trying to debunk some kind this of- This guy, oh man, this guy's gonna get so many fucking- Oh dude, this guy's gonna get so many fucking points. He's gonna get so many fucking woke points. Oh my god, do you think that like do you think that his little wokies will like let will let him like kiss their feet and stuff at the next uh like at the next like privilege acknowledgement ceremony? Of conspiracy against him. This man is insufferable. One thing I've learned from my time as a leftist and doing actual activism out in the real world is it does not matter how much Yeah. Uh, dude, I'm sorry. Showing up and sexually harassing people at DSA meetings is not actual activism. Much of a piece of shit someone can- That- that was a joke. I don't know if he's sexually harassed people at DSA meetings. He just kind of looks like the type, you know? B. They deserve, at the very least, the basic human rights that every human being deserves. Food, clothing, housing, healthcare, Xanderhal reaching so far into the depths of his cruelty to render his partner homeless is just Reaching into the depths of his of his of his cruelty to make his partner who made him homeless also homeless instead of paying for her to continue living in the apartment that they were both getting evicted from because of her actions because she stole this is like unironically what this guy is doing here is not just abuse apologia he's doing gaslighting on behalf of someone he doesn't know he doesn't know lonnie just something that is so sickening to me from so many different angles it was genuine. yeah this is actually this might be the most pathetic video essay i've ever listened to like, I actually, I actually think this guy might be the most sloppiest, not to mention, like, in every way, by the way. Sloppy stylistically, sloppy in appearance, sloppy in his shitty fucking, uh, crap-ass British accent that sounds like you fucking stumbled out of a fucking pub in Soho or so, or whatever. This is fucking sad. Slopbeard. Yeah, let's call him Slopbeard from now on. DJ Slop.
really hard for me to go through this video. Just yeah, I thought I thought Noah Sampson's video was was like I I critiqued Noah Sampson's video in pretty good faith, but this this is like dude, this makes lo this makes Noah Sampson look like a god. I will say this guy has managed to not has managed to like make his own friends look bad, but by comparison, he's managed to make Noah Sampson go good. So look good. So if this guy's friends with Noah Sampson, well, he did succeed in making one of his friends look good. You know how smug and comfortable he is, all the while safe in the knowledge that he is going to be fine, and his ex-partner is going through one of the worst times of her life. He starts off in this video. Fucking true. Dude's little shitty, little shitty chain that's all tangled up in his pube beard. ...is going through one of the worst times of her life. He starts off in this- She's going off on one of the worst times of her life that's self-induced. She stole the money. She cheated on Xan. She decided to go fucking blow all the money on drugs. She fucking stole it, you asshole. She did that. She got Xan fucked over. It, it wasn't like he just randomly evicted her because he's like some Hollywood hotshot. He's younger than her. She took advantage of his trust. He trusted her with their bank information because they'd been together for a long time. She stole from him. She hid eviction notices and they got in trouble. And he chose to not help her, which ended up with her becoming homeless while he had to go stay with a family member, a family member who abused him in the past, just so you know. This video by saying that early in the relationship when he moved in with her, they had a trap. Dude, this, this shit makes me so mad. Just so you guys know, if you ever wonder why I, uh, why I'm a bit of an asshole sometimes, cause I am, it's no doubt about it. I am definitely a bit of an asshole sometimes. If you guys ever wonder why I'm a bit of an asshole, it's because people like this run all over the internet ma making stupid shit up and causing harm to people that they think are justified and they do it with the it, with the language of like being woke and it's always, it's always, every fucking time, it's always some fucking slimy looking, bearded white dude who's like, I'm here to speak on behalf of black people and POC and marginalized people and schizophrenic people. I'm here to, to be a bully on their behalf. And I fucking hate people like that. I hate it. I want nothing more than people like this to be fucking mocked into the ground. I hope, I hope, I, well, I mean, the good news is, is that I can rest easy tonight knowing that DJ, this will be the biggest video that DJ Mule ever makes in his entire life. He will never have a video that gets more views than this besides the Vosh one, which I'm going to guess, I'm going to just say, I'm going to hazard a guess and say that one is probably trashier than this one. Actually, no, I don't think it can be trashier than this one because this is an hour and a half ragging on a guy who just got fucking horrifically abused uh, by by his partner. So yeah, this is probably going to be the video that gets the like, most views in his entire life, and that's it. He's fucking peaked, guys. Fucking peaked. Con relationship. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, this means that this is where the man does all the money making and the woman does all the chores around the house, the cooking, the cleaning, something that's known as reproductive labor because it's normally women in society that have done this thanks to the patriarchy. This is just like a kind of gross dynamic where he has all the power to begin with, but I. That's blatant, again, blatantly false. Just because one partner does the chores and the other partner streams does not mean that he has all the power. That is a, this is again, just brain dead. Recognizes, he do, just this just reveals that this guy doesn't know anything about the things that he's talking about. I, I just, I just don't know how you can be so stupid. Z Lonnie got away with stealing all the money because Zan shared all of his money with her. She had access to all the accounts. He didn't control her access to his accounts at all. That's how she got away with it. She got away with it for so long because she had more power or at least as much power as Zan did.
This argument would only make sense if Zan had never given her any access to his finances and she was completely living off of Zan, but that wasn't the case. And this is, by the way, this is before we even get into the age difference stuff. Because if I remember correctly, Xander Hall wasn't even 21 when Lonnie, who is 30, who is over 30 now, when Lonnie was over 30, Zan had just turned 20, he w couldn't even drink alcohol yet, when she started setting him up and started stealing shit from him. Yes, Lonnie is and was a predator. I gotta say, if a couple consents to this and it's something that they're both happy with, then that's absolutely fine. Like, if you have a trad co- I don't like age gaps. Okay, don't make me do fucking- Okay, I'm gonna have to do it. I know I have to do it because otherwise I- Otherwise, you people will be stupid about it. Guys, age gaps in and of themselves are not necessarily problematic. Okay, depending on the age gap, obviously. Obviously, anybody being with a minor is a fucking huge issue. That's fucking bad. No go. You're a fucking pedophile. But just in general, an age gap is not a fucking big deal. Necessarily. Just in and of itself. It can be sometimes. Like, if you, if somebody is like 60 and they're going for an 18-year-old, it's pretty obvious, okay? And in some cases, the experiential difference can be exploited. But in and of itself, it is not necessarily a bad thing. Are you telling me that, are you trying to tell me that there's not a bunch of you out there who would really love to be with a MILF in a relationship? Or a DILF? Or hell, I bet some of you, how many, wait a minute, here we go real quick. How many of you people, let's say that, let's say like, uh, let's go, let's say like Bob Odenkirk, okay? I've been watching Be Better Call Saul lately, okay? Let's say Bob Odenkirk is not a famous celebrity. Let's just say he's a guy. And he's like his character from Better Call Saul, you know, super suave, super charming, funny, whatever. How many of you would be okay with being in a relationship with somebody like that, even if you're younger? Huh? How many? Probably a bunch of you, okay? Same thing goes for Mills. That's okay. It is absolutely okay to have age difference. Humans are different ages, and that's okay. Okay? Kevin Costner. Okay. <laughs> But there's other issues at play there, okay? Aren't you in an older generation than some of your partners? Because I vaguely remember Fawn saying it was a Zoomer and you were a millennial. Yes, I am older than all of... No, most of my current partners. But not, like, drastically so. Um, age differences, age gaps are not in and of themselves problematic. There are things to consider. For example, for example, in this particular case, Lonnie had a lot of ex life experience that Xander Hall did not have. And Lonnie used that life experience to hurt Xander Hall. That is what's problematic. It's not the age, it's not the number that matters there, okay? It's the fact that Lonnie used her experience to hurt Xander Hall. That's the things you have to pay attention to. The reason why lots of age gaps are problematic is because generally in our society, if you're older, you have money. You probably have a house. You have financial stability in most cases. And that puts you in a position of power over others. If you're an 18-year-old kid and you've never worked a job in your life, and all of a sudden some, you know, 50-year-old person is saying, hey, I'll be your sugar daddy or whatever, that can be really problematic really fast because it can put you in a weakened position. Yes, exactly, Taco Cat. If she had used her life experience to help him instead of harm, there wouldn't be any problem here. That's why I said age gaps in and of itself are not problematic. It's other aspects that can be problematic in there. It is the power imbalances and it is exploiting power imbalances. It is being ignorant of power imbalances that's the problem. Killjoy says, uh, a real quick reminder that mar most married people don't have the same access to their spouse's accounts that Lonnie did with Zan. Lonnie had full access to all of Xander Hall's money. She took advantage of that and she stole it. She stole it and she has severely harmed Z Xander Hall's ability to continue working his job. She severely harmed him emotionally.
And keep in mind, Lonnie herself, if this fucking, if this fucking discount British Rasputin piece of shit had actually taken one second to even listen, to even read the things that he's talking about, he would have acknowledged that Lonnie confirms multiple aspects of Xander Hall's story all throughout her twit longer. Lonnie's campaign of fucking trying to get Xander Hall canceled was a fail. It was a complete failure. She fucked up. She admitted unintentionally to things that Xander Hall confirmed. Has he gone to the police about it? Yes, of course. But we're not 100% sure. I, I don't know how he's going to be able to fix his credit score because there's no real way for him there's no real way for him to um to deal with the fact that they that they uh that their uh apartment unit was fucking him over was 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 demand was basically hurting his credit because they weren't paying but he didn't know that they weren't paying. The only reason you would ever believe Lonnie is if you already hate Zan. If you already, not not just that, let me just say that again. As Sheepish says, the only reason you would believe Lonnie is if you already hate Zan. No, if you already hate Zan and you're stupid and malicious. That's the only way that you would believe Lonnie in this situation. Because Lonnie publicly fucking lied. Her story was full of holes. Xander Hall had the receipts to prove it. No, no, I'm, I'm, I know, I know that there are many ways to rebuild credit that are pretty easy, mixed dizzy. I do know about that, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that uh, having, having a bunch of late months of rent is really hard to deal with when you're fucking 21, 22 years old. Okay. That's really cool. I didn't know that, Danny Fallen. Bisexual kaiju? I just don't understand this. These people can say, I just don't like Zan because of his edgy, uh, his edgy jokes, his language, his personality. None of those reasons are slander. Why go through this trouble? Okay, I'm going to tell you right now. You want to know the real reason why they go through the trouble? One because they want to feel special in their little in-group. This guy wants to win wokey points with his little woke brigade. He wants to sound, he wants to be the guy who, yeah, look, look guys, look, I'm such a good little gremlin. I hit the debate bros, Can't respect me, give me woke points. That's number one. Number two, parasocial as fuck. Number three, just genuinely socially maladapted. Somebody who makes it their fucking mission to go and lie about somebody that they dislike on the internet to this degree to do abuse apologia socially maladapted on relationship like this and you're both safe in the knowledge that you are fine with it and you do not feel oppressed by this cool go for it go for your life who am i to say what's right and wrong in a person's relationship if that works for you cool but it does not sound like Xander Hall had a very good knowledge of boundaries and consent when it came to this kind of relationship. Stan didn't have knowledge of boundaries and consent? This is, this is un unironically disgusting. Just actually disgusting. He says one of the first things that he noticed when he moved out is that he wasn't seeing as much money coming in as he thought he should be, which is like a very normal thing to happen when you first move out of your parents' gaff and go to live on your own somewhere, or even with a couple. This is called the material conditions of the working class under capitalism, Xander Hall. Yeah, I fucking can't. I'm...
fucking cringing so fucking I'm fucking cringing so hard. It feels like I'm gonna fucking sneeze. Holy shit! That is the that can we can we please can we just please for one moment recognize that this guy just did fucking commie tanky bullshit to explain to to fucking downplay direct interpersonal relationship abuse when you first move out of your parents gaff and go to live on your own somewhere or even with a couple this is called the material conditions of the working class under capitalism. <laughs> it's the material conditions of the working class, comrade. When your girlfriend fucks you over, lies to you, takes advantage of you, steals your money, spends it on drugs, then gets you both evicted and then gets arrested. Ha <laughs> ha, comrade. Lol, comrade. Long live the revolution. Long live. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, dun 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 Xander Hall and I advise you to do I hate stupid fucking cunts like this straight up this is a person who viscerally disgusts me on every level just everything from the smug condescending tone to the pedophilic visage to the I don't know lumpy skull do some research on it of course it's an incredibly upsetting reality check that Someone like Lani understood a lot more than Xanderhal because she has more life experience than him, being an older person than him. So of course, when she explains that to him, that makes a lot of sense as to why she'd say- My source is that I made it the fuck up. My source is that I made it the fuck up. My source is that I made it the fuck up. I could literally, I could, I could literally, I could literally, Oh, oh, hold on. Let me be really clear. Gayfesh says, okay, stop with the sexual stuff. First, you called him a sex pest, now a pedo. He's a piece of shit, but let's not lob those ap accusations around without evidence. Hold on, let me be 100% clear. I said he looks like a sex pest, and he looks like a pedophile. I stand by both of those. I don't have any evidence nor reason to believe that he is a pedophile or a sex pest. All I'm saying is he has the visceral appearance and affect of somebody who's like that. Just to be clear, I want to be clear, you know, I don't want to, I, I don't want to accuse him of something that he didn't do, but I, to be fair, I didn't say that. It's his vibes that are fucked, okay? Just let's be clear. What did you just come in on? Oh, I was just saying that this guy looks, he has like... This DJ Mule guy, he has the appearance of a pedophile. He looks like a creepy pedophile, and he acts kind of like a creepy pedophile. I don't know if he is. I have no real reason to believe that he is. That's, that's what. Now, somebody just wanted to... Gayfesh was correctly asking me to clarify so that it was clear that I'm not accusing him of being a pedophile because I don't think he... I don't have any evidence to believe that he is a pedophile. I just think that he looks like one acts like one, talks like one, and gives me bad vibes. So there you go. Oh yeah, and for context, this guy just spent the last 20 minutes doing literal straight up Darvo, 100% straight up Darvo, on saying that actually Xander Hall was the abuser, even though he has no evidence, didn't do his research, didn't take time to do it. He's sitting here in his fucking video uh, uh, making a case without any evidence, just accusing Xander Hall of being the abuser, even though Xander Hall proved that he was the one who was mistreated. Xander Hall proved that he was stolen from. So yeah, like I said, I don't have a whole much, I don't have a whole lot of patience left for this stupid asshole. The person than him. So of course, when she explains that to him, that makes a lot of sense as to why she'd say that. But no, of course, Xander Hall is implying here that she is covering up for something, that this is all part of the conspiracy against him. Xander Hall then says that Lani was not giving him the emotional support that he needed, but from the account that Lani gives about their relationship, it really doesn't seem like he was opening his communication about this stuff. It's actually really sad to read this, but... 
Oh, oh, look at this. The the creepy fucking, this, this creepy fucking loser thinks that Xander Hall wasn't communicating enough when his girlfriend was stealing money and hiding it from him for years. Oh, wow. Here it is. I'll admit that since I started working outside the house, I haven't been as good of a girlfriend to Alex as I've been in the two years prior. During the two years of COVID, I was home all the time, constantly available and on call to help with anything you needed. I was mostly happy, but I told him many times about how I felt lonely a lot of the time. Alex is a lot better at talking about himself than he is at listening, and most days he would hardly come out of his room. When I started working again and I made some friends, I stopped being home as often, which made me happier but him miserable. I should have tried harder to find a healthy balance we could both feel good about, but I don't feel like I deserve to have my cat and everything I own taken from me. So it kind of sounds- Now that's interesting because none of her, the stuff wasn't taken from her. They got evicted because of her actions. So the stuff was remaining in the house she still had access to the house, and the only thing that Zan kept from her was the cat. And that's because Zan didn't want to put the cat in a car. Because she was living in a car at the time. Just remember, this guy's about to make the argument that because, Zan because Lonnie claims that she was lonely, that everything that Lonnie did to Xander Hall was okay. Straight, just 100% abuse apologia from stinky fucking creepo Rasputin over here. Sounds like they came across a very normal problem that happens in relationships. That's basically down to toxic masculinity prevent- Isn't this just RGR logic? No, because I'm extremely clear and also RGR accused Doe of making arguments for pedophilia. I'm not accusing this guy of making arguments for pedophilia. Are you people stupid? Are you actually being stupid right now? Are you sitting here while this guy is doing fucking Darvo abuse apology and you're getting mad because I said his stupid beard makes him look like a creepy pedophile? You guys would never do this to anybody else. If somebody said, wow, creepy pedo stash, which is the equivalent thing of what I just did. Are you fucking serious? Are you, are you actually, are you actually being serious right now? men from asking for their needs directly what is a little bit more sickening in this situation though is that he says the only reason that he moved in with lani was to escape a living situation with his parents my living situation with my parents eventually just got too toxic for me to continue being happy and making content and i decided that my best course of action was to move away and so i did I moved all the way across the country to palm springs california with lani which is and i will I'm sorry, but it's really not cool to say somebody, someone's appearance is that of a pedophile. Like, yeah, I have to stand by that. It's fucking weird and not cool. Okay. I'm glad that pissed you off. I mean, I'm sorry that pissed you off. There you go. We'll die on this hill. A fucking terrible reason to move in with someone. It's a great reason to move out on your own. Absolutely, but you should not be moving in with someone else just because of that. When you move in with someone that you love, that you're in a romantic or sexual relationship with, you do it because you love them and you care for them and you decide to face this life together, not to escape another shitty living situation. Which, in all honesty, doesn't actually sound like that bad of a situation because his parents took him in straight away. His mother, who physically abused him, took him back in. His mother, who physically abused he was forced to, like, this is just, this guy's so stupid. This guy fucking disgusts me. Just 100% abu abuse apologia. Just endless fucking abuse apologia. Okay, well, if you think it's uncool, all right, Capo says, I'm not pissed off, I just think it's uncool. I'm sorry for being uncool, okay? I thought it was funny. I thought it was very funny because I think this guy's a piece of shit. And I, I, and at this point, this guy spent an hour and a half lying, literally doing just blatant propaganda and has now spent uh, the last, what? Uh, what I'm gonna guess this whole last bit is mostly on this. He spent at least 20 minutes doing explicit abuse apologia. Yeah.
the things went wrong with Lani. He also goes on then to say that Lani needed attention, which is like, dude, do you know what relationships are? In fact, even five minutes ago, you said Thank that you, you needed Thank attention you very much. from Lani and that she wasn't giving it to you. And apparently that's a valid thing for you to complain about, but not for her. He also does this bizarre mental backflip here saying that Lani would want attention, despite the fact that both of us were at home all day and we spent tons of time together just by virtue of that. Like, no dude. NASDAQ, that's not appropriate. What the fuck is going on here? Ma mods, can you fix this problem? Mods, can you can you can you fix the problem in chat? What the fuck is going on in chat? Dude, just because you're in the same house as someone or even in the same room doesn't mean that you're doing bonding activities or paying attention to your partner. That is like the laziest relationship I've ever heard of in my entire life. And from what Lani said in a twit longer that we just read out, it kind of sounds like you were just in your room a lot of the time, just doing your own fucking thing. This next part is just absolutely batshit. Like I really got to hand it to Xander Hall of all the things that he does wrong I've talked about in this video. This really takes the cake. While my suspicions became ever increasing, Lonnie was offered a job cleaning Airbnbs by a friend of hers. She took it claiming she wanted to be able to get out of the house and make some friends and help make ends meet financially. Lonnie was now spending most of her time out of the house. In some cases, she would go more than a day without responding to me, and eventually started not coming home. When I'd question- Oh shit, wait a minute, he called this bat shit! We got fucking sanism, everybody! We got him! Remember how he- remember how one of his things he brought up against Xander Hall was sanism? Well, he just called this bat shit. That- that is a literal- that is literally sanist and ableist. So now we got sanism, we got fucking, we got fucking ableism from him. What's next? Racism? ...to her about it and she'd actually respond. Oh, we got ageism and we've got abuse apology to top it all off. Her reasoning was that she was spending the night on her friend Sarah's couch because they worked together and they were carpooling to save money on gas. I didn't buy it. And the first night that she didn't come home, I started to consider the relationship over. Like, to consider the relationship over the second that your partner does something that you don't like is so, so... God, look at this pristine soy face again. Fucking pristine fucking soy face. Also, it's really fucking funny here. Let's get a nice picture of this. Let's get a nice, let's, let's immortalize this one, can we? Here, I'll get it nice and big here. There we go. We'll, we'll be able to do something with that, something funny. Um, it's really fucking funny to me. Um, it's really fucking funny to me that, um, so, so this guy is talking about how, uh, oh, he's making a big deal. He's being super dramatic about how Xander Hall said that, hey, m one night, my partner just didn't come home. Didn't tell me why she didn't come home. She just didn't come home. And that really bothered me and made me feel like my relationship was over. And his best thing he can say is quit being a pussy about it. Do you see why I said this guy gives off massive fucking creepy toxic masculinity energy? This is the shit I'm talking about. Being like, being like you're a pussy because your partner that you've lived with for the last two and a half years one night just didn't come home and didn't tell you where they were. And then shortly after you found out that she was stealing money from you. Fucking victim blaming like fucking nothing else. Oh my fucking god. True! True, gay fesh! Fucking poggers. Go retweet that shit. Victim blaming Grug over here. Weak, dude. Like, you utter, utter waste, man. I couldn't think of a situation that is more childish, ridiculous, and self-serving than a man not even attempting to fix his relationship when his partner is trying to make herself happy on her own. Dude, what are you fucking talking about? 
Just literally my sources again. that I made it the fuck up. Just all this entire video is my sources. He made it the I made it the fuck up. Just dumping out bullshit. Everything he talks about next where he says that she wasn't answering his frankly ridiculous text demanding to know where she is. He mentions that Lani shuts him down, saying that he's being controlling and like, yeah, dude. No, Demon Speaker, Demon Speaker says, to be entirely fair, I think this guy might be a cuck and think that it's normal for partners to be going off all by themselves at night and, and not telling you. Listen, I don't want, I, I've, I'm sorry. I've, I've gotten better. I'm not going to speculate on this guy's existent or non-existent sexuality anymore. I, I see you. I hear you. Maybe, maybe you could be right, but I, I'm sorry. I went, I went too far, okay? So I'm not going to do it anymore. That's because you were. But you can. You can. Do your own research, folks being controlling demanding to know where your partner is all the time that's extremely controlling behavior again why are you not doing any self-reflection here dude being completely overbearing in how you smother a partner <laughs> silence says just got back from my date who's this cuck <laughs> uh this is this guy's just doing like like uh, silent you've missed a wild ride this guy for the last 20 minutes has been doing like like zero to 60 abuse apology it's actually disgusting the guy is just speculating endlessly about xander hall's relationship and then darvoing everything that xander hall says that happened to him which xander hall has the receipts for he's just claiming xander hall was lying about it and that xander was actually abusing lonnie he has no evidence for this no evidence he's just just vibes it's absolutely absurd, and you really need to consider that other people need space. Throwing all your toys out with the pram and making her homeless because you simply So he's a Lani simp? No. That's the sad part. The most the, the most sad part about all this is this guy isn't even simping for Lani. He doesn't know Lani. He doesn't know Lani. I doubt he ever offered to help Lani. This guy's just using Lani as a bludgeon to try and get at Xan. Extra disgusting. Extra fucking disgusting. Cannot be bothered to try and make the relationship work is, well, the whole man belongs in the bin. He also complains that Lani took the keys with her every time that she went out and that meant that he couldn't go out and do stuff. And it just makes me think, dude, are you an actual amoeba? Just get- Wait, yeah. Now he's just making fun of him for getting abused. At this point, he's literally just making fun of him for being abused. Oh, my, 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 my abuser would take the keys and I wouldn't be able to leave the house because we didn't have any other keys. She would take them functionally leaving me locked in the house and isolated so that she could continue stealing money from me. And this guy's idea is let me make fun of that guy. Also calling him a, a fucking bacteria. This guy, that's is this guy a fucking, called. that's some fucking Nazi goose stepping shit right there. I told you this guy, I told you one of the reasons why I fucking hate all these weird creepazoids who crawl out of the woodwork to yell at Xan is because they're always doing fucking toxic masculinity, masculinity nonsense. So fucking gross. Speak to the property manager. Like what, what, what do you fucking want, dude? I Speak to the property manager that's currently trying to evict you and you don't know because your partner has been stealing and hiding the paperwork? Yeah, that sounds like it would work. This guy, again, stupid and malicious. I think that in listening to all this and understanding what's happened here, I've come to the conclusion that Xanderhal made a huge mistake that a lot of people do when they look for a relationship, and that is that he wasn't looking for a partner, he was looking for a mother. This kind of makes silence says there were a couple of times where I had to wait on the porch for several hours in my bad prior situation because I wasn't allowed keys for more than a year. That's so fucked up. This guy and this guy is just sitting there fucking poking fun at this shit. Fuck this guy. I've come to the conclusion that Xanderhal made a huge mistake that a lot of people do when they look for a relationship. And that is that he wasn't looking for a partner. He was looking for a mother. This kind of makes sense when Xanderhal talks about the stresses that he had living Dude, with his mom. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, I, okay, look, look, I'm just gonna say, this guy's given off big fucking, 
Here we go. Here we go. You know what I'm getting from this guy? I'm getting fucking big energy from this guy. Ready? I'm getting fucking... Here we go. Here you go. This is what- this is what- this is what he's coming off as right now. Fucking massive Homelander drinking the breast milk energy. Just- just straight the same energy emanating off of this soy face as the Homelander drinking the breast milk. Talk about projection, my man. Talk about fucking projection. I can actually relate to it a lot, and I did used to exhibit a lot of the same harmful behaviors that he did in, like, overbearing... Oh, he was looking for a mommy. She was looking for a fucking victim. She th she stole from him for a year, for over a year. What the fuck is wrong with you? Needing to know where your partner is all the time, thinking that they're like lying and cheating on you and stuff like that. But my dude, that is a trauma response. And to be fair to myself, I never fucking made anyone homeless. I never made a fucking 50 minute rant video on why doing that was a good thing. Dude, you made an hour and 20, an hour and 29 minute video in which all you do is do abuse apologia for somebody who you know nothing about based purely on your parasocial vibes. You are so much worse than Xander Hall. You are so far below Xander Hall, it's not even funny. You don't, you're not even fit to fucking lick that boy's boots. I'm not kidding you, dude. Did a soy 85 d 2 d Derek, thank you very much. Says first Noah Samson, now this guy. Where do these guys keep coming from? Did a soy pipeline explode and contaminate the water supply? Yeah, fucking soy elementals. This guy is this guy might be the most fucking soy energy we've encountered so far. To do, and this next bit just ew. She would constantly use my card to order Grubhub and Uber Eats to places she was cleaning for lunch instead of packing some of the fresh food that she'd bought that was in our fridge and going bad. She would also constantly leave half-eaten food just sitting on the counter to go bad. She wouldn't even bother just throwing it in the fridge to let it be good for later. I can't stand people who call themselves leftists and do not understand that people do not want to do reproductive labor. Like, cooking is a whole art. Bitch, what? What are you fucking talking about? What is this fucking dude talking about? Putting your gr putting your fucking food in the fridge so that it doesn't go bad overnight and smell up the house and waste food is not fucking reproductive labor. This is this is oh my god. Okay, what you are witnessing at? What you are witnessing right now? This face right here? This is what it looks like when you replace your brain with vaguely lefty uh, uh, buzzwords, but you never actually have thought through any of the ideas. I, this is one of the stupidest videos I think I've ever watched on the, in the entire history of my channel. Just so many misapplied terms, so much horrific bad faith, and a gigantic load of abuse apologia to, to smear it all off. Last thing, dude. Lots of people get Uber Eats. I'm gonna be getting an Uber Eat after I've recorded this video because I've got no energy to cook. And bear in mind, Lani, again, as he admits- Lilith 600 says, I'm getting a minor in gender studies and so much of the shit this guy is saying is infuriating and legitimately harmful to any actual productive change. It's really funny. This guy started this video by saying that like woke scolds doesn't, don't exist. And this guy is straight up doing every single thing that I would categorize as a woke scold. Uh, just uh, not actually knowing any of the terms that you use, throwing around a bunch of random woke terms to try and shame people into doing what you want, being incredibly, incredibly, incredibly uh, sensitive and dishonest and propagandistic, all under the veneer of fighting for marginalized people. It's just, he's checked off every single box. Yeah, it is. Jessica Metal says, this is again using leftist language to abuse and bully other people. Fucking nailed it. A fucking bullseye. Is washing your ass reproductive labor? Don't ask this guy. I think we know, I think we know how many, I, I have a feeling we should just start calling this guy fucking DJ Skidmark. Because I got the feeling if he thinks putting your food away in the fridge is fucking reproductive labor, I do not want to know what he thinks about fucking anal hygiene, okay?
Soft on left says, pedantic note, I think technically eating food is reproductive labor, labor that reproduces your own labor, like eating. But where they're wrong is that Marxists don't think reproductive labor is bad, they just want to be compensated free, easy, or fast. Like Lenin supporting cafeterias to make home cooking less ne necessary. Yes, I'm familiar uh, with the idea of, of like reproductive labor, and the, but also he's misapplying it. He's applying it as if reproductive labor is like literally anything that has to do with reproduction, but reproductive labor um, refers to reproducing the conditions for further labor, AKA the task that you have to do to continue working the next day. Um, but yes, you're, you are correct about that, I believe. As far as I know, I'm gonna, gr I'll grant you that point. I'll grant you that pedantic point. Also, uh, thank you very much to Mother Mirset who says, Howdy DM and chat, about to work on some artwork that's queer as fuck. What are your thoughts on a lesbian redheaded mail courier, trans rights, by the way, and trans thriving? She sounds pog. Let's continue. It was the entire trad wife ideal. So she was doing all the reproductive labor, she was going out doing a job, and she was trying to socialize. He complains that all the food in the fridge would go bad, and I'm not being funny, man, but like, Sanderhall, have you never been in control of a fridge in your entire life? It happens all the time. Man, this guy's such a big man. Don't you get the don't you get the energy that this guy's the big dog on top? Do you, do you, does he feel like a big man making fun of uh, making fun of Xander Hall for getting abused? Time, because unfortunately capitalism doesn't allow us a lot of time to actually address things like that. Plus, if you've got ADHD like me, planning and cooking is such a drama. When I'm hearing this, I can't help but go back to this clip that I played you earlier. And going along. And Lani says. <laughs> Like, this is a thing that happens regularly, and this poor- Again. Okay, guys, this is, like, the most creepy behavior. Again, parasocial as fuck. This guy doesn't know either of them. Just incredibly creepy, incredibly invasive. Unironically, this is, like, Kiwi Farms behavior. Unironically. Just like weirdly parsing through somebody else's life for the purpose of trying to hurt that person, to cancel that person, and to self-enrich for no reason uh, when you literally have no connection to them. A woman has to deal with this literal baby man popping whiteys on stream because he smoked too much weed and he just can't make it to the bathroom. So Xander Hall is then talking about how he blocked off all of his PayPal accounts, all the access he knew that Lani had to his money, and then goes on to show a bunch of- Yes, of course. Uh, also, of course, Bonks Daily says he only uses clips with audio when it's- when it's- when it makes the Xan look bad, when it's bad faith. Yep. Cash app transactions made to her account, but hang on a minute. If he just like on a whim decided to like stop her from getting money, which was her only access to money, by the way, especially considering that he thinks that she was lying. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. You just read the part where both Zan and Lonnie admitted that she had a job. She had her own money. Zan trusted her. She lied to Zan. Zan trusted her, she stole from Zan. ...about the job that she had. And of course, remember chat, her having access to his money was an agreement that they previously had in the relationship, whether it was unspoken or not. What did Xander Hall expect Lani to do when he stopped her from having any access to money whatsoever? No, there was no chance for Lani to plead her case. No chance for her to talk it out with him. No. Xander Hall exacted the same state violence that any sheriff or landlord would do. In insane! This is insane! G genuinely, unironically, fucking making me spittingly fucking mad. Not only is he he's so fucking wrong, he's fractally wrong. Even Lonnie admitted that they had been fighting, that there had been issues with this, and that there had already been trust issues. Even Lonnie admits that. He's just My fucking making it up. My sources that I made it, it the fuck up. Making it up just to do a pu abuse apology. Man, fuck this guy. Man, fuck this guy. There's no chance for Lonnie to plead her case. No chance for her to talk it out with him. No, Xander Hall exactly- Oh, and also, again, I can personally attest on my fucking honor I knew about this before it went public. Zan tried to work it out with Lonnie so much. 
but there was nothing to be worked out because Lonnie was gaslighting him because Lonnie would not admit wrongdoing even when the evidence was in her face. Did the same state violence that any sheriff or landlord would do on someone who has not been paying their bills on time. It appears that the same day he did all this and stopped her from having access to money was also the same day that he kicked her out of the apartment. He didn't confront her with the information that he now had, nor did he give her any kind of grace period to find somewhere else to live. He just acted wrong said like the most disgusting entitled wannabe land baron that you could possibly conceive also this part in the video where he scrolls through the transactions of varying amounts that absolutely can be explained away are are is this guy fucking real right now cash out payments out to her cash out payments out to her in even amounts one two three per day this is 180 wait this is uh sorry sorry 150 180 100, this is 200 dollars 190 dollars in round amounts being sent directly to her cash app and then and this is every day on the 8th another 40 dollars on the 9th a fucking t almost 200 dollars on the 10th 300 dollars this is fucking stealing archived payments hidden from him yes these are all her i checked mostly by the fact that as he admits earlier in the video he was the sole breadwinner and gave her free reign of his debit card with this absurd epic music like he's just solved the mystery of the century as well it's gross there's no other way to put it it's sick he's a sick misogynist that treats women like shit on and offline now i Guys, do you understand? Do you understand why I say people like like why I said like an hour ago almost that this that this video no it was it was 40 minutes ago. 40 minutes of video time ago. Of course I've made lots of commentary since then. You want to know? Remember why I said that once I started smelling the abuse apology and lying bullshit that I had a feeling that this guy was total piece of shit? I hope you guys recognize how vindicated I feel right now. I hope you all realize how vindicated I feel going as hard as I fucking do on this guy because I don't believe, I can't fucking imagine going harder on a guy like this. Fucking lying, lying, lying through his teeth. Just endless goddamn mother fucking lying. Lying in the face of evidence, lying in the face, just literally lying off of making things up. And then not only that, the, to top it all off, fucking victim blaming on an unbelievable level. And remember, he is doing all of this for his friends. He's doing all of this for marginalized people and for communism. Unironically, people like this are the, are one of the biggest problems with the left in general. People like this, people who use the, the they're literally wo like wolves in sheep's clothing. They use the terminology of fucking leftism. They use the terminology of social justice and all they do is help abuse. All they do is help abusers get away with it for their own gain, for his own fucking gain. He said at the very beginning of the video, the only reason he's doing a drama video is because it get clicks. Now, let me tell you something. I wanna, I wanna just take a second, okay? I'm gonna take a little minute for me, okay? Cause I know some of you got mad that I was going so hard on this guy and I'll admit, I went pretty fucking hard on him, okay? But I just want you to realize, this guy could have done, if he wanted to make a drama video for clicks, he could have done anything. Do you wanna know who does drama videos that, that, that don't, that don't like fucking call somebody an abuser? Me. I've done drama videos. I've done fucking, do you guys just watch my maximalism stream where, yeah, one of the guys was a, was a total joke and screamed and laughed, but what we did is we just laughed at it. If he wanted to make a drama video, why doesn't he go and react to a beef between uh, Xander Hall and Hunter Avalone? He could even insult Xander Hall. No. Instead, this motherfucker, because he has to keep up the veneer of being a moral warrior, he chooses to go all in. The longest part of the video by far is going all in on abuse apologia. Fuck this guy. I get you. I get you, gay fashion. That's fair. That's fair. I can, I can, I can eat that I went a little hard on him. It was probably a little across the line. Okay, all right, everybody, let's get back to this shit. 
I gotta get angry again. We gotta make it through this shit. I just want to stress that while this is a really difficult part of the video to go through, I did want to add a little bit of comic relief in here for people because what kind of a content creator would I be without anything like that? So, um, here you go. I didn't hear from him at all except when he would text me to complain about how awful his mum's house is. Comic relief for the abuse apology. Damn, what a good look. And how she won't let him go anywhere and how he's miserable because she won't get him any vapes or weed cartridges. He would only text her about that shit. He is an actual win it. And to be honest, that is on brand considering a lot of the stuff that we've already gone through. Anyway, let's dive back into this cesspit. When Zan talks about Emily, the friend that Lani had who fell out with her and apparently exposed her gambling and meth problem, I'm skeptical at best. This is a man who's shown his ass regarding how he makes things up about women who he doesn't like so often that you'd have to forgive me that I'm doubtful, even in the existence of this person. But let's do a debate bro classic and play devil's advocate. I'm sure all of them are here. Um, One hour and seven minutes. Into the video. Yep, they're all gonna love this shit. Let's say that this Emily person does exist and that Zan Hall's right about how Lani stole money off him and that she's got a gambling problem and she's addicted to meth. So, you see what these leftists in Xander Hall's community who have, for example, demanded Lani do drug tests, harassed her, accused her of grooming him, even though the power balance is in Xander Hall's favor in every- No, it isn't! What are you talking about? Explain to me how the power balance is in Xander Hall's favor. I explain to me, you stupid asshole. And secondly, the reason why people asked her to do a drug test is because she took it public. She took all of this public and she said that Xander Hall was lying about everything, including, mind you, the stealing. The reason why people said, well, then if, if he's lying, you should be willing to do a drug test. That's why people did that. Not because they were harassing her. It's because she took it public to try to cancel Xander Hall. Literally gaslighting him and people pushed back on her gaslighting single instance of the relationship and made her online life a living hell after this video's publishing don't understand he chose to go public he begged to not go public stand and again this is the fault of xander hall and other debate nerds is the punitive justice just demented this guy's this guy's just arranged like this is this this is this is a uh, uh, ZDS or XDS, Xander Hall derangement syndrome, 100%. L literal explicit victim blaming. This especially financial violence, AKA making someone homeless, is not justice. You don't just become a cop when someone has issues like that. You know better than any fucking cop in the police forces of America or the justice system. Holy fucking shit, touch grass, the lot of you. I swear to God. Apparently yeah, this Emily- it, 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 Yeah, this guy, this fucking guy. Yeah, exactly. I gotta, I gotta say, Killjoy, if debate perverts exist, this guy is the video essay version of it. Yep, essay pervert. Fucking shit, touch grass, the lot of you, I swear to god. Apparently this Emily also accuses Lani of getting her ex-boyfriend evicted by not paying the rent on time. This man calls himself a leftist. A leftist. As someone in a tenants union, I cannot stress- What? Wait, you were spamming that in chat? Oh, oh, at the time, I see. I see, I see, at the time, at the time. Please do a segment on woke scolds in the future. This need there needs to be a good sized streamer that uses this video as a training manual on how to spot woke scolds and the tactics they use. Yeah, honestly, I really should. I really should like like do a little manual on how to fucking spot uh, lefty scammers, people who are like just one hundred percent grifters. Enough. The only people who evict anybody in this world are either landlords and slash or the cops. The idea that this man thinks that it's a tenant's fault when they get- They both got evicted. When- when this guy- it's really funny, by the way. When this guy is talking about her getting kicked out of the house, what- what he means, what actually happened, 
is that Xander Hall had to go hand in the keys because the landlord agreed to not forcibly evict them as long as he handed in the keys. So they both couldn't go back into the place. Just an actual moron. This guy is just a disgusting, dishonest moron. Evicted fucking boils my blood. How the hell that can you call yourself mixed, any kind of leftist when you've got an opinion like that? I'd love to hear what Bernie, who apparently Zan, really hoped would win in the DNC nominations, would have to say about that. Also, Zan then going on to- Yeah, just why don't you write a letter to Bernie then? Just write a fucking letter to Bernie from, from the fucking UK. To say that when Lani said she got evicted because her ex was hitting her and abusing her and they were being so loud when they had fights that they got too many noise complaints, he of course says, well, uh, Emily said she made it up, so obviously she did. You fucking piece of shit. He goes on a lengthy diatribe now about credit scores and his hopes and dreams of being able to move to Seattle. And honestly, I just kind of fucking tuned out at this point. It was like 3 a.m. when I was doing this bit in the script. And after everything that he has done to his ex, I honestly do not care, dude. Like this guy. Capo, gay fesh. You hear that? Fair game. It's fair game. He says gloves are off. He doesn't give a shit what happens to them. So guess what? I don't give a shit what happens to him. This guy, fucking pedo energy. I won't make fun of his looks, but he's got pedo energy. He really strikes me as the, he's got, he, he, he gives me the creeps. He makes me feel like, like I'm being predated on. He is so focused on like not getting an eviction because it would harm his credit score. I'm just like, bro, you made someone homeless. You made someone homeless and removed access to their money so that they got arrested because they couldn't afford the upkeep on their registration and now they have a criminal record. What the fuck do you think that does to someone's credit score? Someone homeless and removed access to their money so that they got Sorry, I gotta hear this again real quick. Because it would harm his credit score. I'm just like, bro, you made someone homeless. You made someone homeless and removed access no. to- No! No, you fucking dumb cunt! You stupid asshole! You stupid fucking clown! He made it better for both of them! By settling out with the landlord, neither of them got permanent evictions! Are you fucking kidding me? She already fucked his credit! She wasn't on the lease! By her hiding the eviction notices, she- screwed him over he made it better for them because it didn't become criminal because he settled out with the landlord you stupid asshole their money so that they got arrested because they couldn't afford the upkeep on their registration and now they have a criminal record what the fuck do you think that does to someone's credit score what do you think that that does to someone's life anyway she next has a criminal record because her and the dude that she was fucking got arrested unrelated Unrelated, Zan didn't call the cops. She got arrested on her own fucking time. On her own fucking time. Xander Hall just like admits that Lani told him that she has nowhere to go. And he's just like, I don't care. And then he says this. She needed to move her stuff out. I don't wish homelessness on anyone, but it just had to happen. Had to happen. Had to happen. Vermin, oh my goodness. Vermin, it's so good to see you. Oh, I, this is such a funny moment for me to say something so nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the, the bad video away. Vermin, it's wonderful to see you. It, I hope you're having a wonderful time. I've missed you a whole bunch. I got your messages this morning. I still gotta read the big long story that you sent me. Um, and we will talk. And when you're back, we're gonna hang out. Uh, also Merrick, also yes, I fucking hate this guy. Vermin, you came in at the fucking wildest time. No, no, Vermin, Vermin, it's so much worse than you think. This guy is has spent the last hour doing completely unresearched abuse apologia for free. Dude's doing it for fucking free. Just no no reason, just because he doesn't like Xan. It is a level of Xander Hall derangement syndrome I have never witnessed in my entire life. Holy motherfucking god. I'm losing my goddamn mind. This guy has pushed me to my fucking limit. I said, I told everybody it was gonna be a fucking spicy stream tonight because I expected, I expected this. I gambled on this and I was fucking right. I knew this guy was gonna do the same fucking shit. I knew he was gonna do the weird toxic masculinity shit. I knew he was gonna lie a bunch. Unfortunately, I didn't know he was gonna go this fucking hard. Holy fucking shit. All right. Back to the video.
happen. Had to happen. Had to happen. What? All for your fucking credit scores, Anne? All because you didn't have the guts to sort out your relationship? Weak. Dude. Fucking toxic masculinity insecure wrinkle dick bullshit. Like I said from the very goddamn beginning, literal bully toxic masculinity crap. And remember, he's doing it for the minorities, though, guys. This guy, he deserves all of the... He deserves to, uh, you know, he deserves to skip out on the uh, apologies for being white session because he's been such a woke ally. Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Fucking weak. One of the weirdest things to me that doesn't really add up is that Xanderhal claims that there were eviction notices served to the property that apparently Lani had hid. Like, what would that have achieved? And also, why would she not have mentioned in a twit longer that she would have been worried about getting evicted from the apartment by land? Because if she admits that, it looks really fucking bad and she was gaslighting him and everyone else about everything. She denied everything. Of course she did, you stupid asshole. Lords. When it came down to it, she was evicted eventually anyway. Oh, no now, worries. in a twit longer, she claims that Alex and his mom changed the- No worries, si uh, Silence. I think- Silence, I think Silent- Silent was goofing on you because you- you have the same name. Or a similar name. Let's continue. Locks to the apartment so that she couldn't get in when she got out of jail. But honestly, knowing landlords as well as I know them now, with the work I've done for the tenants' union, it's possible that a landlord would have just done that. Possibly because Xander Holt ended the tenancy and kind of like forced all oh. of her stuff. With all the hard work I've done for the tenants' union, oh, I did, I have done all this work with the tenants' union. Bullshit. I don't buy it. Let's fucking see what you've done. You showed up to one meeting, you may, you maybe filled out one form, you stupid cunt. We know you didn't do shit. ...to get locked up. But anyway, it's by the by. And to be honest, I guess it's possible, but I don't know why she'd lie about this. And she doesn't exactly try and vilify Xander Hall in this twit longer. In fact, at the end of it, she actually pleads with him to get in contact with her to sort all this mess out. She even says at one point, To be clear, I'm not saying all or even most of this is Alex's fault. He isn't required to help me but it feels like he is trying to make the hole I'm in impossible to dig my way out of. Also, what's he playing at when he shows this Instagram exchange? Does he think this makes him look like a good person? Of course, his fans don't care. They're going to support him anyway, but damn, anyone on the outside looking in is going to see this and be like, yikes. Xander Hall shares some more DMs with people you, who are like Parsons. legit concerned about that. Lonnie's whereabouts. He underlines this one where a third party, who would be unbiased, says that she was smoking DMT in the car with someone. Zan underlines this and writes doubt here, implying that he thinks that she was smoking meth. Again, let me point this out to everybody. If somebody is addicted to meth, especially if it's someone that you love, that still doesn't make everything that he's doing to her okay. He, he lied about everything. Him pointing out that she was lying about drugs. I do agree that at certain points he took, he made some jokes that I wouldn't have made. But again, I don't fucking care about a couple of little jokes in the face of all of this. When she was lying to not just him, but to all of his fans, to all of her followers, to people who supported her, she was lying. She was gaslighting him. Oh, uh, thank you, Ivy Evans. Uh, thank you very much, Kit, much, Kit Parsons. I really appreciate that. We will get through this video together. We're almost there. Directly points out in the video that meth and DMT need a pipe to be smoked in, a crack pipe in particular. And yeah, that's correct. But if you've ever actually been outside in your actual life, you would know that someone on crystal meth behaves extremely differently to someone who is on DMT. So I actually entirely believe that she was smoking DMT and not meth, to be honest. Not that it matters, right? Also- Why? Why do you believe that? My source is that I made it the fuck up. Is the am dollar amount she put him in debt for the apartment public? I don't know. I don't know if the full dollar amount is. I've been vague. Uh, I've just said, I don't know if it's fully public, but but it, 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 was, it was tens of thousands of dollars is what we're talking. Clearly in reference to Alex telling her he's spoken to friends who've been worried about her whereabouts. She says in this screenshot, I spoke to blank and they said you never spoke to them. I'm confused. Which is clearly, at the very least, an indicator that Xander Hall is not telling the full truth with these screenshots. Xander Hall then admits that he was considering going back to the apartment with the police. 
a leftist who's done content covering police brutality. He was going to bring the cops to his ex-girlfriend's place, probably telling them that she'd stolen from him, is addicted. Yo, thank you very, very much, Lucy and Edwards. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Um, real quick, guys, I want to be, I want to clarify on this. Do you guys want to know the reason why Xander Hall br was considering bringing the police with him? It was because he had reason to believe that there could have been someone waiting at the house to hurt him. Yes, that's right. He had, he had very good reason to believe that when he went back to the place that there was somebody there waiting to hurt him that's why he considered it and to my knowledge he didn't end up going with the police i believe he talks about this in his video if i'm not mistaken thank you ivy evans just called that one out thank you it's a crystal meth and might be fucking crazy and unhinged this motherfucker could have got her killed. Also in this next bit, Xanderhal just straight up accuses Lani. She stole from him. She stole endlessly from him. Then didn't show, nearly got him evicted. And you're saying that he could have gotten her killed? Are you fucking, are you fucking wild? If setting up a credit card Demented. in his name, which is extremely just... fucking hard to do when you don't have a fixed address, yes. like yes, this is the same Darvo shit. It is le it's a level of Darvo that makes you feel like you're crazy just for watching it. Where is she... yes, and he didn't even bring the police. To my knowledge, he never involved the police to that degree. That was just something he considered doing. I understand. I'm sorry about that critical parole. I know this shit can be a little bit wild. I didn't know that it was, to be fair, I didn't know that he was going to spend over an, like a, a nearly an hour doing this. Jessica Metal says, I thought it was because he found evidence of paraphernalia um, of check forging equipment that he wanted to call the cops, which you should do because not doing so makes you complicit of it. I don't know about that particular detail. Um, I don't know about the timeline on that one, so I can't speak to that one. I remember him mentioning in uh, in one of his streams that he was worried because he had seen uh, he had he had seen when he went back to his house one time uh, he had seen uh, evidence that there were people living there and that they may have had firearms and they may have had uh, uh, and there was a bat that was visibly uh, visibly there so he left and he was worried to go back because he thought that somebody might hurt him. she picking up this credit card from dude is she picking this up from like the car park where she's sleeping in her car one of the first things that he says in this video is that he noticed that money was getting drained out of his paypal account to an unknown source and that he didn't believe lani when she said that he might have got hacked but i've had my paypal hacked before a literal russian child hacked my fucking paypal in 24 you already showed the evidence of her taking money multiple times per day, hiding the transactions, large amounts, multiple times per day, hiding the transactions. You showed that in your video. You can't now also try to retcon that it was a hacker. Are you fucking crazy? Team because I didn't know what I was doing. The little shit used it to pay for gaming subscriptions. Yeah, exactly, it was Merrick. extremely funny. And in fact, when I contacted PayPal, they sorted it all out immediately. It was pretty fucking good, to be honest. But what I'm trying to point out with this yes, anecdote- Yes, I'm sorry I am being a little bit sanest right now because I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. It actually is not fair for me to be harsh to mentally ill people because mentally ill people don't have the same fucking don't have the the j just being mentally ill isn't a moral failing but this guy has so many goddamn moral failings on display you're right i am actually being a little bit sanest by claiming that he's crazy because what this is is this right here is malice every single thing we've seen is malice silent says this guy's a tanky can't even criticize the Russian child that stole his money. He's not actually, he, he claims he's not a tanky. He claims he's an anarcho-communist who pals around with, uh, uh, with EJ and Luna Oi. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not buying it. Okay? He quoted fucking Lenin 
as a, as as a as scripture unironically ah uh, it doesn't even matter at this point let's go actually it's entirely possible that someone could have stolen Xander Hall's identity and taken out a credit card in his name not just Lani next is more unfounded accusations that she was done by the cops for meth and I gotta say, sharing someone's police report, even though it is public information, as he rightly points out in the video, it's just a weird fucking thing to do. It's like- No, it isn't. It isn't weird to do. It isn't weird to try to prove somebody wrong who is publicly lying about you and gaslighting you in front of everybody that you know. That is not a weird thing to do. That is the correct path of action. What are you- this guy is so disgusting. Unironically, By being like, just here, here is trash. the official thing that says that my ex is a bad person. Anyway, he says that in the police report that she was definitely done for methamphetamine. Now, look at these police reports. It doesn't say anywhere here that she was done for meth. It says that she was done for being in possession of a controlled substance. You do know what a controlled substance is, don't you, Xander Hall? Many, 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 many things. But no, Xander the man- Don't you think at this point- don't you think at this point that this argument is just just a little bit fucking pedantic? And needs you to think that it is meth. You know, the bad drug that all the crazy unhinged druggies do. All the crazy unhinged druggies that steal things and hurt. Oh, look at this. Just found one of the most insane accounts on here. This is a picture of Gayfesh. I don't know, man. Maybe people are pedo jacketing lol someone because they make arguments for pedophilia. <sighs> Every single time. Of course he's like it. Of course this guy's a fucking... Of course this guy's one of the ones. Of fucking course he is. Fuck this asshole. Fuck this guy. Again, massive, massive energy, okay? Fuck people this and rob people and rape people. Just so they could get their fix. And make it out. This just this what this just proves is that Gayfesh is a better person than this guy by a long shot. Because Gayfesh actually has fucking principles, and this guy is just a disgusting slime ball. The Lani is a person like that would fit his narrative. Pretty conveniently, wouldn't you say? Xanderhal then tells us that he went back to the apartment while she was in jail, and is delighted to tell us that it looked like the aftermath of a frat house party. I'm pretty fucking sure that Xanderhal didn't go to college, so I don't <laughs> know it, how Silent. he knows what an actual frat house party is, but anyway, that's by the by. And to be honest, if I'd have gone through the shit that Lani had gone through, I would not have an incentive to clean up that house. I would be fucking devastated. I'd probably spend a lot of time just like in bed. Hell, I find it hard enough to clean my house in general spend your time in bed wow that doesn't shock me even a little bit man with fucking adhd and trust me having adhd and ocd is a fucking trip so next have you noticed how frequently this guy's dropping his fucking identity cards like every single time he says that he found like some beakers and jars that were in shrink wrap kind of implying that he thinks that she was going to be synthesizing drugs in the apartment but probably what was more likely is that she was going to use it for like etsy store stuff that i think she was doing on the side because it kind of looks like she was doing that stuff anyway my source is that i made it the fuck up got into this twitter post but honestly at this point it really does sound like he's trying to larp his own breaking bad made up fantasy he even references the show when he's talking about this and what i want to point out by the way is that xander hall and his community seem like obsessed with evidence even if it is like questionable at best so why do we not have a picture xander hall where are the pictures of this supposed meth lab that Lonnie? i know for a fact that lonnie had an etsy store i don't know about the other job part but what i can say is that lonnie at one point sent me stuff from her etsy store as a gift Back when, when I was on good terms with Lonnie, before it was revealed that Lonnie was literally stealing from Xander Hall. So, yeah, she ran an Etsy store. So the idea that the idea that she had no money on her own is fucking bullshit. It's all fucking made up. This guy has literally made up everything. Yeah, people here in chat have bought things from Lonnie. 
he seemed like obsessed with evidence even if it is like questionable at best so why do we not have a picture xander hall where are the pictures of this supposed meth lab that lani was making in your fucking ex apartment like if this happened to me and i went to an old apartment and found some stuff that i didn't recognize in there and i was worried that it was like I'm weird sorry, i would probably take a picture of it so i could ask people and be like yo uh what the fuck is this he then next talks about how he starts removing all of his possessions, clearly trying to make a statement here that even though they had the agreement- Yeah, you know what? After this, in honor of this guy's pettiness, we're gonna go make fun of the fans of this guy's video. Because you know what? Fuck it, why not? That'll be fun. Agreement ...that Lani was able to spend his money on the things that she needed, but now all of these things are his, actually. Oh no, oh, you thought that actually I was being nice and these things belong to you. No, they're mine. They're fucking mine. And the way he then talks about how he just went back to his normal life, pretending that none of this stuff happened, is just so disgusting. Where is his empathy? My god, no debrief, no makeup sex, just sweep- Vorbuddy, Vorbuddy says, I ordered stuff off of Lonnie's Depop after the stream where you showed off your stuff, Demon Mama. She didn't send my order for over two months with no explanation, wouldn't refund me, and then sent out the order only after I pinged, it about, pinged her about it for weeks. Lamau! Holy fuck! Can you imagine being in a relationship with this guy? No, I, I don't think anybody can because I don't get the feeling he's ever been in a relationship at all. Bit all under the carpet. It's just so disgusting. Where is his empathy? My God, no debrief, no make. Wait, wait. Where is his empathy for the woman who fucking stole like a year's worth of income from him and lied about it? What are you fucking? This guy. Oh my God. This guy. Oh, this guy might. This guy might actually just be like a professional cuck. But maybe he doesn't realize it. Maybe he doesn't realize that he's a cuck. He's like, yeah, it's normal. It's normal for your girlfriend to horrifically abuse you and then make you be the mattress that the bull fucks her on. You know? It's normal. I lay down. I lay down every single night and then my wife and her bull climb on top of me and have raucous loud sex and I cry into the, into the dirty blankets below. Up sex, just sweep it all under the carpet. Don't even think about your poor homeless ex girlfriend who has no fucking money, has gone to jail, and whose life is falling apart. Just go and fucking make your YouTube videos. Complete refusal to take responsibility of his actions. He tries to cover his tracks here by saying that if she really wanted to, Lani could get in touch with my mum, but even if that's the case, it is so irresponsible to cut off all communication with someone that you had been seeing for two years, to not even allow her to make- You wanna know what else is fucking irresponsible? Stealing from somebody who you've been with for two years. Stealing from somebody who you know doesn't have family that they can safely go back to without being potentially abused again. You know, that's pretty fucking bad too, my man. Cutting off abusers is perfectly okay as it turns out. Make her case. Honestly, gang, I can't get over this. Like, I've had toxic relationships that were six months long where someone had been confirmed by multiple people to have been cheating on me, and I still didn't act like this. I still. try to sort things out with this person. I gave them way more grace than this fucking man could even conceive. This next bit, I'm just gonna let him speak for himself, really. I have no- FINALLY! FUCKING FINALLY! ...intent to keep on paying to keep her items in storage. It's burning a hole in my pocket for me to even hold on to these things. I only saved them out of the kindness of my heart to try and be a good person, and it's only gotten me tangled up in more drama. I literally have less bullshit to deal with had I let her sentimental, irreplaceable items get trashed in the unit along with the rest of her stuff. No comment. Lots of notes, by the way, but... No comment. I don't really think I need to cover any more of this video than what I've already- What? He just said that him doing her a favor ended up making it possible for her to cause more harm to him. This is why people cut off their abusers. 
specifically for this reason, because abusers will use any in they can to continue abusing. Like, this guy's just actually, like, I mean, again, I've said this a hundred times that he's actually stupid and deeply dishonest, but I don't know. How else, how much, how much more, how much more can I fucking say? He's just, he, he's just twisting every single thing that Xander Hall says, which are totally rational things to say when you've been abused into like proof that Xander Hall was the abuser. But that's not, it doesn't work. He mentioned, so I'll just leave you with this part. Xan references the twit longer that Lani made and says that he's proud of his fans for already being skeptical before he'd had the chance to make this video. With that in mind, it's time to wrap this up. Oh boy, thank God. Spooky Star says, is this performance art? Because it's so absurd, I can't believe someone could create such a narrative without any irony at all. No, unfortunately, I wish this was performance art, but the truth is that one of the weirdest things that can happen on the internet is that that creepy uh, 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 parasocial weirdos like this guy can just latch onto you and 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 they're so they're so in their own hatred of you that there's no actual way that you're grappling you can't grapple with the truth anymore and they literally will make things up i mean again earlier in this video he claimed that xander hall said something then showed a video with no audio and then he voice over he put his voice over xander hall and claimed xander hall said something without showing proof of it the guy is like this guy has completely He's just gaslighting everyone. This is one of the few examples of like, of internet based gaslighting. You know, normally I've said this pretty, a lot of times that like gaslighting generally requires like a, uh, like a long term relationship. But this video is long enough that I can only, I can only say that the video serves to gaslight anybody who has doubts about the narrative he's presenting over and over and over again, denying obvious facts, when he, literally within minutes, he showed, within minutes of him showing the actual transactions that Lonnie stole from Xander Hall, he then said it was probably a Russian hacker that stole his shit. Just, oh my God. He's simultaneously abusing and teaching people how to abuse and teaching people how to be abused. Everything he says is conductive to creating more abuse all around. Exactly. Wolf in sheep's clothing, literal definition of a, of a woke scold fake leftist bully. The long and short of this stuff is that Xander Hall has fostered a community of liberal toxic masculinity. No one here is listening to the victim. No, no one at all actually even understands that Lani is a victim. Nor do they understand that Sophie or Kara or the woke scolds that he talked about are also victims. They actually believe that Xander Hall is the victim in all of these situations, despite him having all the power in the situation with Lani and his fans being predispositioned to support him in the I don't need to repeat myself. I've already said this once. Guys, just again. My sources that I made it the fuck up. The case of Sophie, Kara, and the quote unquote woke scolds. In the situation with Lani, he is your traditionally toxically masculine, head of the household manly man. His community clearly have a sheer lack of understanding of material conditions, human rights, drug use, state violence, and financial violence. Not to mention homelessness, which is a clear indication that he doesn't educate his community on those things. And the fact that he called his video on his breakup, debunking the allegations against me, sort of implies that there's a- Yes! Yes, debunking the allegations because she took it public after stealing from him. She continued to try to abuse him. She continued to try to bludgeon him back into isolation because she knew that he was very private about his relationship up to that point. I don't know if you guys know this, but Xander Hall has been pretty fucking private about his relationship with Lonnie. And part of that has been used by Lonnie to keep him isolated. She was the one who went public to try and get out ahead so that he wouldn't have anybody on his side. This is fucking bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. And I'm fucking outraged. I am. I'm fucking pissed off about this shit. Conspiracy against him. This is a narrative that he falls back on a lot in his attack hit pieces on people like Sophie and Kira. 
I imagine he thinks this conspiracy exists because of all the other people on the online left who dislike him for fairly credible oh. reasons. All the things I've mentioned in this video, plus a lot of other stuff that I simply can't mention because otherwise this video would be hours long. There are so many other people that I've not mentioned that Xander Hollis hurt with his ridiculous character assassinations and the harass- Bullshit. 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 Fucking bullshit. I am calling bullshit on that. Xander Hall doesn't fucking hurt anybody, okay? Xander Hall is a fucking chill-ass dude. Sometimes he gets a little debatey. He doesn't fucking direct people to go harass people. He doesn't fucking do any of that. Even the people in this goddamn chat who've had beef with Xander Hall can acknowledge that he doesn't fucking do that shit. This is fucking bullshit. Just through and through. Fuck this guy of his fans. I think we've covered a lot of facts in this video that point to our man Zan not having really recovered from his alt-right days. His misogyny is still there and he needs to do a lot of work to unlearn his harmful behaviors. Plus his aggression towards trans people who disagree- Dude, shut the fuck up. You need to fucking- you, you have a lot of work to do to unlearn your shitty behaviors and step number one is deleting your fucking YouTube channel. Never make a video again. You are the absolute scum of the earth. DJ Mule, you are an embarrassment. You are an embarrassment, not just to fucking video makers, not just to leftists, but you're an embarrassment to fucking humans. Shut the fuck up. Go, go completely rethink your life. Agree with him and his debate bro pals while simultaneously sticking up for those who do what he says is clearly an example abuse, of his queer A fucking phobia. abuse apologia. An, an, an hour and a half video. And an hour of the video that's supposed to be talking about how Xander Hall is not your ally is this stupid cunt doing just balls to the wall abuse apologia. Fuck this guy. SA pervert fucking piece of shit. Yeah, not being properly dealt with either. His lack of good grace and faith in attacking Kira shows that he actually doesn't believe his own mantra that you can debate Nazis in the marketplace by- He did a 10 minute, a fucking 10 minute video on her because they beefed. You've sat here and just done apologia for his abuser for an hour. You're the piece of shit, DJ Mule ideas and convert them because apparently yeah unironically this is one of the worst this is the worst leftist video essay i've ever seen in my entire life i have never seen a worse quality less like like more filthily dishonest leftist video essay in my entire in my entire history of the stream i'm willing to say it essay fucking pervert someone having said bad stuff in the past is absolutely inexcusable if it's a woman that he doesn't like when Zan attacks people he doesn't like, there's a whole lot of projection going on. He calls Kira a terrible person who doesn't deserve redemption from her days as an alt-writer. He says that Sophie might have some good political opinions, but she's a terrible person. He calls Lani a master manipulator and implies that she was a terrible partner. He says, You know what? I would love- here, I'll issue it right now. DJ Mule, I would love to have your dumb ass on stream. I would love to have your dumb ass, dumb ass on stream so we can talk about this. It would be fucking sick. In fact, you watch this, I know you're gonna see this, you little whiny bitch cunt. I hope you come onto my stream so I can tell you to your face how disgusting I think you are. Fucking putrid waste of space. Genuinely just an absolute waste of space. I'll show you fucking material conditions, you little cunt. Says that woke scolds are mentally ill people who need validation from the internet because they never go outside. These are all things that could be applied to Xander Hall himself. All this coupled with a refusal to self-reflect simply means that he's a narrow-minded man who's stuck in his own bizarre world of failed Minecraft YouTuber dreams and mummy issues. My man. Hold on, hold on a second. We gotta take a second here. Hold on a second. We gotta take a minute. Let's listen to that back again. Everybody, shh, 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 shh. Listen real quick, okay? Ready? Remember this guy's face, okay? Remember this guy's soy face. Ready? Watch. Under Hall himself. All this coupled with a refusal to self-reflect simply means that he's a narrow-minded man who's stuck in his own bizarre world of failed Minecraft YouTuber dreams and mummy issues. Failed <sighs> Minecraft YouTuber dreams. Okay, hold on a second, real quick. Let me just get a second here. All right, we're gonna be... We're gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna have a little fun time, real quick.
Okay, you guys ready? You guys ready for this? DJ Mule, 5,500 subscribers. Xander Hall, 71.7K subscribers. DJ Mule has statistically never pulled a single dollar out of his YouTube account. Xander Hall pulls so much money out of his account that his abusive ex could literally steal and fund a drug habit off of it. DJ Mule gets a maximum of, let's see, uh, 8K views, no, 8, 17,000 views ever. Xander Hall's, let's see, most popular video is almost a million views. And his second most popular video is 203,000 views. So let's, 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 let's be, let's be honest here. Who lives in a fantasy world of their own making and who lives the reality of being a successful Minecraft YouTuber? Which one? I know who I'm voting for and it's fucking Xander Hall, not your greasy, smelly, pathetic, dishonest, ugly ass. And it's sad. Lots of people like Xander Hall because, like his debate bro friends, they offer a window into politics where you don't actually have to do anything. Except what do you think he smells like? I think he smells like his background. Unironically. What the system says you, you can already- Thank you, Bonks. Deeply appreciate that a lot. Thank you a lot, Bonks, for both of them. Thank you. Do And this makes them feel like they're making a difference in a world that they- correctly know is bad. He reinforces the belief that you can change the system from within the system. And people love that. Because people- Also, yeah. Uh, as Painoka says, the mummy issues, knowing that Xander Hall is very open about the fact that Xan was physically abused by his mom, makes this video extra disgusting. And what I mean is that there's a hundred ways that this guy could have canceled Xander Hall, and none of them would have been as disgusting as the one that he chose to do. He literally chose the worst, most disgusting, most repugnant way to try and cancel Xander Hall. And guess what? He's still not even going to make money from it. He's still not going to have anything. This guy, nobody will remember this guy by next week. By next week, DJ Mule will be a name that all of you have forgotten, except for once in a while when you're in my chat and his name comes up. Remember that time that Demon Mama fucking called that guy? He that said that that guy had pedo energy. That's going to be what is remembered forever. That is what the most people in the world are going to remember that DJ Mule is the, uh, is the Rasputin clone with pedophile energy. Just so you all know, isn't that fucking great? That's the greatest flex of all, everybody. And he'll deserve it. And he'll deserve it too. People with privilege and comfort don't want to do anything other than what they already do. They don't want to change the mind too much. They enjoy the cruelty and puritanical cult-like behavior that's encouraged in white Western colonial society. He reinforces their prejudice and basically makes them feel like they're That's doing an activism. Loser. Whereas really they just have posting disease, thinking that you can change the world with minimal online activity. It's arguable that Xander Hall does nothing for progress. That's despite rich his coming from you! That's rich coming from you, dude! Of opinions about race, gender, and sexuality. The oh, wait, do we get imperialism? Oh my, oh no, we lost it. Oh, we lost it because the, uh, because when the computer powered down. Oh damn it, I think we hit Tanky Bingo for the third time. Thank you, Kit Parsons. 8.5 thousand subs in an hour and a half video. He obviously needs the ad revenue. Yeah, he's gonna get like fucking pennies off of it. But let's just remember, this guy will probably delete his channel in shame in like a week so that he can apologize for like, I don't know, because he wasn't woke enough. He wasn't woke enough when he did abuse apologia. Dogpiling he encourages on marginalized people pretty much cancels out the perceived good work that he does. But there's a reason for all this being the focus of the content. We already know he was struggling for money living out with Lani, and of course he knows that having centrist drama-based content is a lot more lucrative because, well, simply put, people are ghouls and they love that shit. The debate scene is something that reinforces this observation because people like Destiny and Vosh rake in sizable incomes for having paper-thin positions and wildly fluctuating moral compasses, which reinforce the biases of their mostly centrist neoliberal viewers. And people love the drama, the blood sport of the debate community. And ultimately, it doesn't get us anywhere. As All right, hold on. Let's take a quick pause while this guy's blabbing away. Let's go through and let's confirm, okay? So, 
We got hates debate bros, quotes Lenin. We got the Z. We got colonizer. We got lib. We got mutual aid. We got material conditions. We got vine boom sound. We got the red from his podcast. We got a reference to the revolution. We got US imperialism. We got platforming. We got comrade. We got read theory. We got vouch bad. We got Bernie or bust. We got, I don't know if we got Russia was communism, but we got this one. So we got one, two. Is there any that I'm missing? We have two bingos. He's quoted both Marx and Lenin. I guess that, does that count as Marxism-Leninism? Do we have three? Down column two. Yeah, this one here. Then we have this one. Then what? Am I missing one? One vertical, two horizontal. Oh, we do. Oops, oops, oops. Right there. I, I'm really dumb. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not looking. We have three bingos. We haven't seen DPRK. We haven't seen Stalin was good, actually. We haven't seen Force the Vote, I don't think. Fucking this guy. I, I want to say that it would be fair for us to give him Marxism-Leninism, but, oh, but I don't know. I don't really think he did. He didn't directly mention Marxism-Leninism. He does mention his friends who are Marxist-Leninists. Yeah, that's the problem. That's why I think I think it, I think to be fair, we have to just say it was a triple bingo. Bernie or bust isn't the same as force the vote. Still, guys, three fucking bingos. Three fucking bingos. Mentioned earlier, there is no actual evidence that says that debate stops people from having bigoted opinions, nor does it stop them from hiding them. No, lots of people let those opinions out when somebody upsets them, as we've seen with our Zanny Man. Yo, My friend Sophie so and Kara much, have Rapti. spoke to me in private so about much. the harassment it's that they've gotten from Xanderverse community, and it is fucking heartbreaking. These are not people that need any more shit in their lives, Xanderhal. These are phenomenal people and allies who would have supported you and fought for you if you'd only just done a little bit of work to unlearn those harmful behaviours. Take some criticism on the chin and apologise. It's that shitty debate bro mentality you've got of never conceding and never showing weakness. It doesn't help anybody including you. I actually started making content criticizing the debate circuit because of the tweet that Sophie made that you unceremoniously- Damn, what a fucking mistake, man. Please go back. If, if, if this tweet, I actually think maybe, maybe I actually believe that this tweet should be deleted if this, if this type of tweet creates people like you. You're literally making your friend work sound worse. The fact that you're you're crediting Sophie's tweet is doing a disservice to Sophie. Blasted and sent your community after her for. I already knew that debate bros were a farce in terms of their progression for the left, but that harassment and hate that you sent my friend's way radicalized me against the debate bro circuit in its end. <laughs> Dude, you are so pathetic. Fucking, oh my God, man. Literally, I cannot imagine a more like adult diaper thing to say than I've been radicalized against the against the debate bro community. Holy fucking shit. Oh, Xander Hall filled my diaper entirety. I don't want to be doing hour plus long videos about nerds who just need to fucking log off for a month and read some theory. Don't. Please do everyone in the world a favor and never make a video of any length ever again. I'm serious. Find another line of work. No joke. I, I say this with 100% sincerity. DJ Mule, find a new line of work. You are bad at video making. Your editing sucks. Your fucking jokes suck. You're not funny. You're dishonest. You're bad at being dishonest. You literally contradict yourself multiple times in this video. Just never do it again. Stop. Give it up. Quit being a YouTuber, unironically. I mean that unironically. 
It's very rare that I will tell someone to give up on their dream, but you should. I doubt this is a dream for you. If it is, I feel very bad for you, but you should honest, unironically give up. You are not good at this. You're not good at this. You're not doing any good. Just, I don't know, go post on Twitter angrily or something. I want to be doing content about how we can... Oh, I sure hope he does. I hope he does a Demon Mama is the worst one ever. I didn't know that, actually. Yeah, who knows? Maybe it'll be le ne le uh, Maybe he'll do mine. It'll be extremely fucking funny. It would be fucking incredible. I would love to see what this guy comes up with. I would love- I can't wait to have- I can't wait- listen, I can't wait to have a, a, a stinky white guy uh, fucking tell me how I'm being trans wrong. literally change the world and all the awesome activism that people are doing right now. I want to restore people's faith in humanity, but you and your mates are clogging up the online political space and hurting people. And it's- No, dude. They're not clogging up anything. Everyone is doing just fine. You're the one who can't make interesting content. You. You are the one who can't get your content off the ground because you're boring and incompetent and you should give up. Unironically, stop trying to make videos, go do something else. Become a gardener. I don't know, become a garbage man. You seem to be very good at shoveling shit out of nowhere. So maybe you should become a garbage man. Or a septic worker. Gotta fucking stop. You even said yourself how disappointed you are that the majority of people end up disliking you before you've even got a chance to get to know them. Ugh, who am I kidding? He's not even fucking watching the video, is he? He won't even watch this shit the entire way through. All in all, when Zach you're right, he won't watch it. He's gonna watch my commentary. And you should- and, and you should really think about that. Because this is the fate that you deserve. People like you, people like fucking DJ Mule, little slimy pieces of shit like this guy, this is what they deserve. They deserve to be made fun of, to be ripped up, and to be driven out of spaces like this. They need- they deserve to be pointed out and laughed at. 100%. A guy who's willing to go and do ab abuse apologia, just flat lying, making shit up for over an hour just to try and hurt someone who he doesn't even know. Someone who doesn't have any effect on him at all. Talk about people who don't belong on the left. And yeah, that's right, it's the gatekeeper arc. I'm gatekeeping fucking disgusting grifters like this out. Fucking abuse apologists like this have no fucking space in any place I call a space. Fucking loser. Banner Hall talks about why he started streaming, his political journey, and what happened to him during that journey, plus his hopes and dreams. I find myself relating to him a lot. Like, we started streaming for the same reasons. He wanted to be a gaming streamer, so did I. He got into politics because he realized there was something up with the world. So oh, can you imagine how boring this guy's gaming streams are? So did I. He enjoys what he does in the politics scene. So do I. So how did Zan get so close but so far from being super based? I'm literally 10 years older than Zanderhal, but I've got a lot of faith in Zoomers. What did I say? I knew it. I don't- I didn't know this guy's age before the video started. I just ballparked. A 30-year-old guy who's spending his time punching uh, up, punching sideways at a guy who he perceives as a fair target and filling his fucking arguments with abuse apologia and toxic masculinity. Trash. TRASH! They seem to be really well politically aligned. Far more so than millennials. But with Xander Hall, I just feel this huge disappointment. This video isn't an attempt at cancellation. Picture of Demon Mama right now. Oh, true! I am the gate guardian, and I ch I say DJ Mule is a fucking loser who no one should trust. Nobody should associate this with this slimy, lying, abuse apologist piece of shit. That's me right now. I am the gate guardian. Because hell. As we all know, that doesn't work. This is just to point out to everyone, including Xanderhal, that the debate bro circuit and debate culture as a whole has got some extremely harmful behaviors that need to stop. If you've been on- Again, calcified, a calcified section of his brain that would allow him to self-reflect.
Imagine, imagine getting to the end of your hour-long abuse apologia video and trying to say that debate bros are the guys who have the problem, not fucking weird essay perverts. On the fence about Xanderhal, or even if you've been watching this whole thing, foaming at the mouth, raging that I dare criticize him. Or Dude, I am raging. You're right. I'm fucking raging. I am, I am so fucking pissed. I've been fucking foaming at the mouth because you're a piece of shit. Because, not because you dared critique him. I fucking critique Xanderhal all the goddamn time. It's because you're a lying, dishonest, cruel piece of shit who does abuse apologia, victim blames, and dumps out toxic masculinity in the name of protecting minorities. You are disgusting. A genuine maggot. All I want is for you to consider what I've said. It doesn't matter in the long run if you change your minds, because I know that people are eventually going to move away from debate bro content. The world is changing in vast- Not as fast as they are going to move on from your content. All fucking 8,000 of them that have ever seen it. Phenomenal ways. And we're on the precipice of something amazing. And most people will forget all this drama content. They'll forget all the debate bros, all the drama channels, and communities will thrive and support each other under the worsening material conditions of global capitalism. There's so much more that you can use your online influence for. People are doing amazing things all across the world, and you could be covering that and giving hope to people. All I've seen in Xanderhal's comments over the last month of researching for this video is people complaining that the left is fracturing and nothing will get done while the left is always fighting like this. Yo, know, nothing gets done because of disgusting losers like you, because people like you waste everyone's time, because people like you spread misinformation. You guys are the ones who cause all of this shit, unironically. Everyone else is able to work out differences. Everyone else is able to come to understandings, but disgusting Machiavellian pathetic liars like you fucking ruin everything. And well, that's just not true. Despite all this terminally online bullshit, people are making headway. People are waking up to the fact that their governments don't care about them. People are taking matters into their own hands and looking after each other. Xander Hall's audience and the entire debate bro audience are caught in a spiral of doomerism, but it could all change overnight. Just think about it. Seriously. Thank you so much for watching this, everyone. Holy shit, this is like the longest video I've ever made. Look at the fucking word count for the script. Jesus Christ. Not a, not, not a fucking brag, my man. Now, listen, I'm not being funny, but I deserve a few new patrons for this. <laughs> no, you don't. You deserve, to de you deserve to delete your patron. You deserve to be made fun of. You deserve to never be taken seriously again in any of these spaces. You do- you deserve less followers, you deserve unsubscribers. It's such a relief to hear you touch on sanism even briefly. It's a critically under-discussed topic, and I hadn't actually heard any other lefty YouTubers mention it by name before. I did. I brought it up substantially. I br I didn't use the term sanism, but I directly addressed this all the time. I've done entire videos on it. And this guy weaponized it to get a couple of points in against Xanderhal. Pathetic. Hey DJ, I'm a 19 year old, wait, hold on, let's see. I'm a 19 year old activist wannabe from the UK who's been a viewer of Xan and Vosh for a while and after many major life changes and realizations about the world led me away from my former conservative beliefs. I feel as though many people who are in the SJW owned crowd around 2016 Gravit gravitated naturally towards debate, debate bro type commentators as the style and approach naturally resonated blah 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 now that I find my feet thank you for helping me broaden my viewpoint bitch you were lied to you were fucking lied to oh my god wait listen to this wait 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 wait, wait. listen to this listen to this fucking shit I've been struggling to know where to start. In my area, there aren't really any major groups or events going on that I can involve myself in. And he responds, hey, I'm trying to find real life ways to do this. You talked about IRL stuff. And he says, activism can be a tough thing to start. You'll meet so many cool people. Definitely try to catch 
his podcast, Red Planet. Literally, all that this guy does, this person asks, hey, I want to know how to get involved IRL. You talked about IRL involvement, and all he does is plug his fucking podcast. Just, just let this be right here. The thing that you always remember about these people. They have nothing but grift. Nothing. Nothing but fucking grift. Hey! I don't like Xander Hall, but this is the worst takedown of him I've ever seen. Glossing over biphobia and behavior. Bad Bunny disregarding Xander, Xander Hall's points on his girlfriend. Saying being biased is bad when it's actually mega cringe. Or being biased is based when it's actually mega cringe. And never actually using clips of him talking or stating his positions to support your claims. This whole video is needlessly dishonest. Fucking true! This video is so refreshing and compassionate. Sarah Kay... You need to get, you need to, you need to have a serious sit down and reanalyze. You're telling me the person who gleefully dead names trans people and mocked a critic's experience as domestic abuse victim might not be a good person? When has Xander Hall ever gleefully dead named anyone? It's genuinely my pleasure. What's this one? Oh, he didn't respond to this one. He dead named Blair White. Oh, is that is that what happened? Hey, here we go. If your partner steals money from you to fund their gambling and meth addiction, hides eviction notice, it's perfectly acceptable to cut them off. I love when the good when a good bearded daddy goes in on political grifters. I have really, really, really bad news for you. All right, let me do a quick, let me do a, let me do a quick, uh, let me do a quick, uh, su uh, summary of this. Uh, uh, DJ Mule, DJ Mule's video on Xander Hall, DJ Mule's video titled Xander Hall is not your ally is one of the most embarrassing and pathetic excuses for a video essay that I've ever seen in my entire life. Not only does it, does it have absolutely zero receipts except for receipts that actually prove DJ Mule wrong, but also almost an almost an hour of the one and a half hour video is devoted to, and I'm not kidding you, balls to the walls abuse apologia. One of the most disgusting and pathetic examples of toxic masculinity masquerading as leftism uh, of of a guy of a of a disgusting essay pervert who who does nothing but abuse apology in this video and certainly doesn't substantiate any of his art of his unironically slanderous claims towards Xander Hall. Uh, this fucking video per video essay fucking pervert essay pervert piece of shit. Uh, his video does absolutely nothing good. It is nothing but cruelty. It is nothing but fucking misleading. Endless lying, endless gaslighting, unironically one of the worst essays I've ever seen in my entire life. Incredibly petty, and I'll be completely honest, I genuinely think DJ Mule should delete his channel. This was so pathetic, so cruel, so uninformed, I don't think anything, I, I think, I can, I, I don't think I could think lower of a person. Yeah, toxic masculinity masquerade, masquerading as feminism, toxic masculinity masquerading as for the minorities, Pathetic. Absolutely, unequivocally fucking pathetic. Holy shit. What a goddamn mess.